you bastard! Oh, no, we're, oh, we're not live. Oh, that's a disaster. No, we're live, what the fuck? Now we're live. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Are we live? Are we live, YouTube? Channel members! Assemble! Do, do, Channel do, members, do. can you hear us? YouTube. Do, oh, do, no. So do. it has to, f if you minimize it, I it doesn't start the stream. It doesn't start Dang. it. That's horrible. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, YouTube? Now you are. Yeah, YouTube. you're live. Yeah, we've been talking. We've been, talking. We've been live started. for So, YouTube, eight first minutes. of all, I want to say thank you. Second of all, we're teaching me how to make miniature Warhammer miniatures. Third of all, thank you, channel members. <laughs> you make it happen. Become a channel member today. Wow. And get a cool little badge and use emotes. I even hit go live, but I guess if you hit go live and then and minimize, minimize it, it you have like loading. You or have whatever. to let the wheel go before so the button turns <laughs> red, apparently. Uh, we're, I guess we're, probably if you minimize it, it goes into some kind of super low resource. Yeah, yeah just probably. Like, you know, we can't get over the hump. Yeah, so for those that missed oh. the beginning, the last eight minutes that we've been live on Twitch, because we thought we were live on both, um, Andy unfortunately tested positive for COVID. Uh, the rest of us are fine. We're all negative. So we decided, fuck it. We'll do minis again. Mace has never done it. Um, we'll which light it. will return next week. Dun, dun, and bum, I was bum, just going to Ba, 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 ba. That now that we're now that we're middle aged, uh, we're contractually obligated to get into many <laughs> the old gaming. World. <laughs> Just to show how Not old the we new are. World at I, all. Hit, I hit thirty five and I need to start painting small green men. <laughs> yes, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it'll happen to you. <laughs> so we're dabbling in Warhammer: The Old World, um, just for fun, and yeah. you know we'll see if there's anything more to that. But stay tuned for yeah. that. Um, so, so let's start popping these suckers out, or so, what? No, so, Richie, why don't you teach Mace how it works? I will first teach Mace. First, we need to decide what you're building first. Oh. So, we need to it's flip the this Seraphon. So, the Seraphon oh. is the Age of Sigma. I'm not going to get into all the differences, but basically, this is a <laughs> faction that is composed of lizard men and frog men. And there are a few and dinosaurs. models that we can look into. So, there's a giant toad wizard. Who rules them all? That's a slan mage priest. So that I is. Like giant toad so wizards. basically, if you have played the Covenant, or rather, if you played Halo and you know the Covenant, it's quite similar to the Lizard Men, except they're basically lizards and dinosaurs with Aztec. Uh, style temples and basically the, the Saurians from. Uh, what have they been watching Stardust Rhapsody? Uh, <laughs> we, we, we were watching Warhammer. <laughs> uh, there are skink riders of some kind. Mm. Yes, so there uh, there's light cavalry and so the, uh, with little lizard guys uh, riding these little raptor style. Uh, oh, cool. fellas. Okay. Um, but I think we're gonna start simple. We're gonna start simple. With just with the toad wizard? little guy. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, intense. that's intense. That's intense. We're oh, gonna start shit. with simple. Infantry. The baseline infantry. Every faction has baseline infantry. The lifeblood of every every army. Warhammer army. Is the infantry. infantry. And our standard infantry is our Saurus warrior. So there's two options that you can build them with. You can build them with a spear, oh, or you can build guy. them with a with a club a sword. Thing. I think we just do the swords then. I think that's yeah. fun. What do you think? Yeah. And we can always just do counts as swords. This is classic. It's sort of like a like a spiked club. Oh, um, is this new? What? Wait, what do you mean? Why is this classic? What, is this, like, new? No, this isn't new, but basically, spears are probably mechanically a little better for the game. Yeah. But, base, you know, so... I like the spear, too. I mean, the spear's cool. We, we can do half and half. Why don't we do half and half? And we can just mix it up. Half and half. Yeah. We'll do half and half. So... Oh, look at that guy. Yeah, so I think finding the ones where they're gonna... Anyway, I, I think we're... What I'm gonna do is I'm going to let you... Well, I, I'll, I'll teach you, right? But basically, how this works is if you look at a sprue, we're gonna find the Saurus Warrior uh, sprues. Obviously, I think this oh, is this one. Says all models in the unit must be armed with the same weapon option. Lame. Mechanically, uh, yes. Mechanically, yes. Uh, but I think for now, gonna, we're just gonna we're mix gonna it do, up. We're gonna, we're gonna do a That's a Saurus Warrior one. This is we're definitely, definitely Toad does. Wizard. Let me see. Oh, Unless you have the Motley Crew rule, where you can have several with spears and several with swords. I don't, I don't think they, they have, have Motley Crew. No, they don't have Motley Crew. Almost That's certainly. for like orcs. Okay, so it's just these two sprues. Nice. So let's just put these back. What's this thing? Why don't just, we, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, is there anything under it? Oh. oh. What's under here? <laughs> I feel like whoa, I should be. Whoa. Whoa. I feel like I should be showing off what you're doing, but I'm showing off what I'm doing. No, no, that's fine. Let's go through announcements. Oh, yeah. While we get. We let get me, let me finish here. gluing these guys together. So, then, man, I'll, I'll start announcements. I'm going to party once I set up. Uh, the bases you can leave in there because we're doing square bases. Friday. 
But let's open it. We will not be playing Icebound because of Andy being sick. Yes, we're gonna give him some time to recover. Do we need these? However, uh, no, next Friday, them. we have tentatively rescheduled to Icebound to next Friday. This Friday, we yes, will still be streaming something. Derek may want to run a one-shot, or he may just be painting minis, depending on how people are feeling. But we will be playing something next Friday. Yes, we can get off the table for now. Mm -hmm. um, that's the, uh, that big announcement. Next week, Witch Light returns. Holy fuck, please, God. No more COVID. Fuck this shit. Please. We have... This Saturday, uh, the four of us, not Mace, the, uh, the three of us and Andy instead of Mace, uh, will be pl doing the Road to GaryCon because the four of us are going to be honored guests at GaryCon. We're going to be going. To be spent for, honored? That's what, how it is. Honored Holy guests. Holy shit. We are honored guests at GaryCon this year um, in March. And uh, for both weekends of Founders and Legends and Gary Con, we will be in Wisconsin for like two fucking weeks. It's gonna be great. Oh, I'm and uh, we're gonna be honored guests there. And so on the road to Gary Con, we're gonna be doing a little bit of extra streaming on the Gary Con channel. Um, and uh, Richie, Andy, Derek, and I are going to be playing in a super deadly one shot <laughs> called the Last. Oh, Lost Tomo... The Tomo Lost Tomo 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 Classically, famously, a, de a deadly uh, thing. Ooh, you got some cards. That's I nice. did get some cards, and they, these guys are all about the stars. Um, I keep, yeah, I keep reading are. it and thinking it's it reads They're great Tom Tomoa Chan. Star Master Master Disciplines. Yeah, don't Let's mind see. if I do. What else we got? Um, so they're all about uh, and yes, and lizard men. Yeah, we'll talk more about them. They're very fun and cool. Uh, merch. Uh, in the future, we are going to be doing a special limited time run sometime in the next few months at some point. So, Stay yeah. tuned. What I will say is that we have a merch store. We have the Crooked Moon merch. We have our new logo merch. Check it out. But yeah, I can put we that can't box. say more. I'm but sure I want to let everybody know that we are going to be doing a massive, exclusive, limited run merch drop in the next few months. Of what? Of merch. Of merch. Oh, okay. we can't say what it we is. Have, oh, we haven't, we haven't announced what it. type of merch yet. But I is, tried, guys. I tried. Going yeah, to it's it's going to be office supplies. <laughs> it's going to be a massive drop. It is going to be a bundle, is what I will say. It'll be a bundle. Oh, cool. Uh, a Torbeck stapler. It's going to be a fundal bundle. Fundal bundle. And so what I will say is get if you <laughs> need to get ready for that, wow, get ready. Because Jeez. once, one, and it's going to be a limited edition, and then it's gone. So get ready for that shit. It's gonna be very cool. Dang. And very, um, very, very. We already cool. mentioned the Patreon it. for those of you just joining us. You can go to our Patreon and find today's date and leave comments, and that is where we will source questions as we uh, assemble our miniatures. Yes, and you get so many perks for being a patron, especially a if lot you are these at, days too. especially are you, if you are at the Pearl Dolphin tier and higher. We play weekly Shroud over Assault Marsh. It is a, a nautical, a haunting voyage of a mm -hmm. campaign. It's been pretty banger. It's I don't been wanna, very I don't wanna, banger. I don't want to toot my it's own It's been horn, very banger. But it has been fucking banger. And so that is for Pearl Dolphins and higher. It's been banger. We also, uh, last night... Banger this. Uh, was that last night? Yeah, yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon. Oh, yesterday, yesterday afternoon. <laughs> we had our Golden Monkey and Higher weekly talk show, The Reincarnation of Neon Knights. Uh, it was a Tuesday, so we couldn't call it Monday Monkeys, but we'll come up with a name with that. Uh, it's monthly, not weekly. It's monthly, not weekly, but we have a, uh, a monthly uh, talk show for, for monkeys and higher. And then we have our, we just did our studio hangout and our movie night, monthly studio and monthly movie night with the uh, Diamond Scarabs and higher. Mm. And holy shit, it was a great time. We watched Muppet oh, Treasure yeah, Island. It was a great time for all. It was so funny. Uh, I was howling. And we do not have dates. Everything is tibida, tibida, tibida yeah, so all for we'll, our movie night, studio hangout, and talk show in February. February. But we will Andy's get dates ASAP. He's Andy will on. be posting. He is sick, but he will be posting a schedule of the Patreon events, so you can get all ready, get your month ready for the month of February. And once the month is over, today's the last day of January. Fantastic Mr. Fox has already won for next month, but we will get our poll up in the first week of February for the March movie night. 
So, and you can only vote if you're a Diamond Scare or higher. That's true. Finally for Patreon. I gotta got talk about Patreon because it's a lot of cool shit. We have amazing uh, bespoke badges being made for Discord oh. to represent the treasures and the tiers that you're each uh, uh, supporting us at and made by the wonderful Babin who has done all of our lovely emotes. So you will have, you'll be able to, to wear your badge proud. And we have a list of people, and we finally have a new dino who has joined us, so thank you. <gasps> thank and you. we just got another updated work in progress of the dino with color, mm. and an updated background. Oh, does it look cool? It is so fucking cool. So. Should I read our people? These are your And we'll read our, Derek, why don't you read our people? I'll, I'll read our all people. The, all the pieces are in the Hey, people. And you get shout outs, oh, like so. Side. Are they not? I'm a scrape patrol yeah. for <clears throat> Are we starting with Sapphire Eagles? I think oh, we start with Sapphire Eagles. Here. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, start with Eagles the, lines. No, 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 no. Next time. Okay. Thank you. So you just go Alex. Alex. Really Thank you. Anamides. Yeah. So Thank you. Anthony S. Thank you. Big Old Possum. Bookner. Cedar. Clap Cloud. Corey M. Cosmo Gyral. Daughter of Eve. David H. Gail B. Ghost Girl Weeb. Homebrew Hound. Intergalactic Gypsy. James T. Caitlin. Catherine C. Carrie Pay. Christina A. Lady Alexandrana. Lily R. Logan C. Mini Cat, Nick Del Tufo, so Rasp Bet, Raz, um, Sarah B, Seder, Cilia A, Skittles, uh, Snuggy, Solar, Solaris, so Stardust, Stacy P, cool Teacups and Honey, Stacey Tegan and Tibbets, yeah. Tony the Tigger, so, Wishy Washy, Wishy Wassy, my apologies, and Oberon and Xander, 1776. Thank you! And thank you to our Emerald Lion, AJB, Creeper of Mines, Carly T, McLovin, 1215, Ruby's Horde. Thank you. And thank Thank you to our ruby dinosaurs, Milo is tired, yeah. Sloth with ADHD, yeah. Varus Knox, yeah. and introducing Ellipsa. Ellipsa! Oh, welcome oh. to the elite club of the ruby dinosaurs. Once again. Welcome. Enjoy your amazing, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll all get amazing badges. They all look fucking great. That's but right. Ruby Dino is epic and eldritch That's is right. what I will say. Uh, join our Discord. If you're not a member of our Discord yet, it is the best community on the internet by a wide, 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 wholesome, 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 wholesome margin. Wholesome, 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 uh, for all of our other socials, or YouTube, or TikTok, or podcast, you can visit Strodcast.com. That's Strodcast.com. Chugles, chugles. It's chugles, chugles, chugles. Once Upon a Witch Light will return this coming Wednesday. Icebound is tentatively for the 9th. Uh, we're going to do something this Friday, but we don't know what. We have our St. Jude stream, which are, we've already mentioned, on Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard yep. Oh, it's for charity. It's for St. Jude. For yeah, St. Jude. It's for charity. I forgot mm -hmm. to mention that. Well, um, that's the Lost Tomb of Tomoe Chan. <laughs> Tomoe Chan is Watashi's favorite. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Silver Salt Mars for patrons Tashi's only favorite. on Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep, 2 p.m. Uh, campaign and February 17th is when we're doing the Rhapsody of the Stardust, oh, apparently. Man. And I'm sure it's going to be full of joy, mirth, amiability, oh, and laughter. And laughter. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chuckles is not going to spiral into deep alcoholism, and it's not going to be a self-reflection of my uh, the past five years. And I do uh, have so weird that you very that. exciting announcement. I have a, a, a very exciting announcement tonight. Is the last night that you can get Kickstarter prices? Oh, that's right. Oh, wow! Tomorrow, to remember to do that. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we're gonna hit a button, and everything's gonna cost gold bars. <laughs> I don't know how much it's gonna. It's gonna be. cost it's, more. It's, it's gonna like cost two online. We have yeah. to start ratcheting it up because we're getting closer to production. Yes, certain items are going to go up considerably. Yes. Other items, not as much. And other items, other might items not. may not change at all. Yep. Yep. But basically, in order. To make sure that manufacturing this does not bankrupt us, <laughs> uh, we are going to be uh, increasing some prices, uh, and so make sure you get your Kickstarter rates. The last time you can ever get your Kickstarter rates is tonight. Yep. yep. Tonight. So you got. I'm gonna do it at midnight. Oh, maybe I'll do it at three a.m. Three a.m. Three a.m. Three a.m. The California witch an hour. Time. Yeah. California. Yeah, we'll do time. California time. Um. Guess good, what? Good. Expect the return. Bum 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 bum. Of who? Of Beneath Dark Wings oh. on April 20th. Let's go! Blaze it. 420 so Blaze It. I gotta get caught No up. scope 360, 100% awesome power. If you think I'm um, watching all that, you're out of your freaking There is going mind. to be you're about four crazy. episodes left, and then it is over forever. forever. And then we'll, you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be real sad.
It's gonna be you real. Will sad. not want to miss it. It's gonna be so sad, and I'm you... gonna play Caprice never again. I'll just never wither, again? wither on the no, vine. Come on, that's not true. I'll just insert him into another campaign. <laughs> Caprice is gonna die. <laughs> I am Robo Caprice. <laughs> no, in the final boss with Pazuzu, you're just gonna get crit every single time I roll against you. I know. Be, you're gonna be turned <laughs> into bird soup. I know. I don't want to be bird soup. Speaking of which, <laughs> we should talk about miniatures for what, the finale. Oh yeah! Oh right! Oh yeah. very cool! Oh, I actually know the many I want. Yeah, me too. I, I think I do. I it's just yeah. Birdo from Super pretty, Mario pretty Brothers pretty, Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cute. Um, very nozzle nozzlingly. Guess what, everybody? What? What? We'll be at GaryCon this year. Yeah, I already oh, said that. Right. I did the whole GaryCon. It's thing. in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. What are the dates? Say the dates, though. Uh, it's a, it's, a, the, it's two weekends. The first weekend oh. is Friday, March fifteenth, until Monday, March eighteenth, for the Founders and Legends weekend. <gasps> An actual GaryCon starts Thursday, March twenty-first, until Sunday, March twenty-fourth, which is my birthday. We're gonna be in Wisconsin for like twelve fucking days. Yep. Dang. It's yeah. gonna be a good time. And then if you are not doing that, but you love miniature war game and you're gonna be at Adepticon, um, we are going to be trying to get down there at least one day. For a day. For a day. Uh, a an day evening. Trip. The road to GaryCon starts with a St. Jude charity stream on yeah. February third, this Saturday at ten AM Eastern Standard Time. And We're gonna be playing repeating. The Lost Tomb of Tomoa Chan. <laughs> 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 we have to thank everyone. Wait, what is it actually? That's the only way I've heard. It I think it's Tama. It's like yeah, it's an Aztec. Probably it's Tama. an Aztec inspired <laughs> yeah. tomb. So I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, is the answer to that question because I'm, ig I'm ignorant. Is... <laughs> Damn it, Derek. Uh, oh, Are we allowed man. to announce that other thing? Oh, what is it? That date. I, I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, the other convention. Oh, I don't want to announce that. Any no, 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 I, no, I don't know what he, the contract he, he, says. Yeah, so. he's been talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. I don't want to break any ah. rules. Yeah. Welcome back to another same episode same of same Miniature Page. And if you're watching, we'd absolutely know. love it if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. You don't need to do this. Be sure to leave a comment this below, is Live. and maybe yours will be picked for next time. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to channel members. You get a green name in chat, you get a little badge, and you get to use emotes. We and, can probably upload more of those. And you get priority for responding to comments. That is not a guarantee that we, I will respond <laughs> to your comment, but at least you get priority. Do you want Chukles Chukles to respond Do to your comment? Do you want literal Chukles Chukles to respond to your comment? He could. Then you have the power. Then become a channel member, and there is a small chance of that happening. We've if you don't become a channel member, I'll never There's a 0% chance of happening, but you can buy a ticket. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. A lottery ticket to the honk. The Honk Legion. Drew Smith just became a channel member five minutes ago. Gotta give it up to Drew Smith. I would clap, but I'm gluing. Uh, Billy, Billy Kaplan. Yeah, you got it. Gifted a son. Wow. Holy shit. And that's it. That's it. How did we get to level four hype train? Which is, am I missing stuff here? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, do you might not have bits in here? No, I do. You just, don't we haven't gotten any bits. We haven't gotten any bits? We haven't gotten any no bits. Events. No, nothing. Um, so. Instead of doing twists in the game sense, for every 500 bits, we will take a move in the game Twister. <laughs> I have the game Twister. I have that cellophane map with that no, stench folded up under the table. <laughs> Everyone knows I am going stench. to unfold so, it. The Twister. Can I teach Mace how to do this twister. so he gets started? Just so I can get started. Sorry. Yeah. So, this is a sprue. Oh, it smells oh, like okay. Twister in sprue. here. I'm going to take this. And you have your own little cutters, right? Yep. So, this is the champion. Of the unit. Okay. You definitely want to build him. So we're going to build him. So you have C... The first step is gluing C55 to C54. Okay. So first we're going to... Well, look what about this? What's C9? D3? So these are heads. You can... You want to pick his badass head. I think it don't oh, tell you... Oh, his badass head? It'll... Oh, you have two options. Oh, oh. I thought C... I thought a 54 wow. was a fail. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, you can build him as good. a champion. That was, that was pretty good. good. That was all right. That was as a regular good. warrior, you want a champion. Yeah, I want a champion. You want 100% champion. Guy. So you, got, yeah, you want a champion. You gotta find his mask head. It's not one of these, so we need to figure out what head that is. I just put a um, chain and two here. skulls. So this is the champion. On my bro. Oh, C103? Yeah, so this guy. Okay. So basically, first you wanna do this, into okay. the body, then you jump here. Cause, oh, which, what do you wanna build? Oh, you want blue guy? That's blue, right? <clears throat> so you should be able to follow this. Don't mix them up. So, but okay. first, I wanna show you just sort of the, the, the basics. So C54, we're gonna look for his body. You don't mix them up. 
There it is. See, there's 54. The A parts okay. and the B parts make an epoxy so, that explode and ignite into flames. What you do Stop. is, so hold on, let me, let me show you the best way to do Your it. Your fingers will be gone. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty explosive. You'll never be able to. You were about to do it. But basically you can You'll get never pretty be able close. To make minis again. Make minis <laughs> ever again. You won't be able to make those minis. Make those minis ever right. again. Oh shit. And then you snip. <clears throat> so you're witnessing so use. try to pay attention. Richie's not really talking to the camera. He's talking to Mace. He's teaching Mace. So I have to teach Mace here. So watch. So you. So what they're doing? I'm gonna be like the uh, nature documentary. <laughs> so That's a backwards. sprue is how they make injection so, mold. He's now cut out. Stores. Then you. Where's you the knife? Cut out the sprue. Did well, someone? This one. Yes. That's so it. we all have our own hobby. Don't knives. cut yourself. I have cut myself. 500 times since I started mini miniature painting. My wounds are filled with resin. I'm going to die within a month. So, so you can see right here, <laughs> that once you cut a, a little piece of a you miniature from the you, sprue, uh -huh. there's a little, like, little gross flashy biz here, right? It's, see how, gross flashy biz? So see that? See how like that's where, you, that's where it connected to the sprue? Also there, to, like here. Wait, is this that? monster called a sprue? No, no, no. The, this this gray thing is the a gray thing. thing. This is a sprue. Yeah, so I have dwarves over here. The gray is real. The gray is real. Okay, so this whole the whole sheet thing is a sprue. Is a sprue. Yeah. Does that stand for something? I don't, I don't know, know actually. I don't Probably. Know it's, I'll look it up. it's from manufacturing. manufacturing I think. I'll look yeah. it up. I'll look so, it up. so for instance, when we have the crooked moon miniatures produced, is going to be what we can fit on each sprue. Uh, in each mold. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's, yeah. So that's, that'll be you will sprue. find where it attached to the it's sprue. It's not going to come on a sprue. No. We'll, little, our I don't know if manufacturers will but like it all right out, there, get it all assembled. There's a little yeah. bit of Before chunk you. that's not actually part of the model. Maybe we could get them to send us a. Mm. And I so like, I'm going to do it. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Just for just one minute. Can, can Mikey Gilder stop talking? Can we test this? We've been laughing about exploding. He hasn't been able to yet. He hasn't been able to yet. <laughs> so, I'm going to uh, use, a good time, folks. We do have a good very time. gently, and uh. at an angle, I'm going to sort of scrape down, very, very lightly. Just scrape it. Scrape, like, down. Yeah, you down. You don't slice. No, you don't want to slice into it. You sort of scrape you it until it's flush. Scrape. Okay. And if it's a little guy, I also have sanding sticks for you. Wow. And if you just want to sort of sand it down, you can do that, too. If you're a little nervous about scraping. If it's in, like, a hard-to-reach thing. Also, I realize that the different colors are different grains. See, I, I asked you about that. Yeah, no, said, no. I, I didn't realize the the one that Derek's uses like is very. So smooth. that's one. This is a big one here. The so blue one is here. like really rough. See that? See that huge <laughs> chunk right there? Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So that's a big chunk. So this, like, I almost kind of like start to just kind of cut it off, almost like just kind of knock it off. There we go. And I got most so of it off. Nice. I'm sorry, everyone. Who's out of focus? I am. And then. I'll cradle your. <laughs> Please. I'll cradle, I'll cradle I'll my cradle head. I'll cradle your chaos. I'll cradle my head. Because he looks heroically into it. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll just still sand that as that's well. You feel good about the scraping? I, yeah. Usually, that's with the exalted, scraping, it's fine. Uh, exalted champion. If, if I can uh, get. Chaos. I bet my dwarves are so small. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to get. But like, if this guy's big enough, you can just kind of knock it. That's sort of finish it off. Uh, was there one more? Like this one on the bottom doesn't really matter because it's like it's gonna go on the base. So I just this guy can't look up. Perfect. I'll just, yeah, just realize his helmet hits the back of his armor. So he's just laying on that. He has chaos magic. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> uh, I don't the last one's the knee. Shit. So I just make sure that they're all sort of done. And uh... I <clears throat> am going to be assembling Trug's great Trog herd. Oh, good old Trug. So I'm going to be using these models. These are technically uh, Age of Sigmar, uh, Gloom Spike Gits, and Trolls. Technically, he's Trug Jr. But I'm going to be using all of these That's trolls cool. as Chaos Trolls in my Beastman army, and I'm going to be using this big Giga Fuck You troll as uh, my Chaos Giant. Just sort of get this, the flash um, off of there. So, so I can see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. My Chaos Giant, my Chaos Trolls. Um, and then, I mean, these new models don't really have mold lines, so I don't even know if you need to worry about the mold lines. Um, Christopher, I believe, is the full name with a $5 but super chat. Anyway, that was it. You I get hope the idea. you're all doing well. Yeah. Love and adore Cut it all out. the fun yeah, stuff y'all Clean do. it up. Thank you so much, And then, so once you have this piece cut out, then we'll you get on the, the gluing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. That was it. That was the whole model. Thank you right. to Cobalt so Blue Waters. Fifty five thousand bits. Holy shit! Holy yeah. shit! Whoa! We got nearly tuner gifting a sub to Rad Ajuma. Uh, Ajuma? Is it Ajuma? Ajuma. 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 
So I feel like this is pretty, but this one's 55. Thank right? you so much. So there's only three connections. The 55 kind of extends. Uh, He's done. Into the space. Yes, yeah, that's 55. Yep. And, now and you, you can kind of like show off your big fuck you box. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Darkness <laughs> this is nuts. This is insane. Holy shit, real quick. Mike Major, bum, 1996. Bum, bum, 10 thousand bits. 10,000 bits from Mike Major, 1996? Holy, Holy cow. shit, Mike Major, 1996. I can't believe there were 1995 other Mike Majors before 1, you. 1,995 so other Mike Majors. Get, get the twister out. Get the twister out. My leg is going up. Can I show my bare feet on screen? No, 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 ah! no. You really can't? No. 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 You're not it's allowed to? It's against TOS. So have really? you seen... Bare feet? Yeah. Bare feet? But what so if I'm allergic to shoes fine? and socks? Yeah. So have you seen um, the teacher who does all the musics with the little like uh, sticks? Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. So she did a thing where she shows how she uh, changes out her feet. And if she can't get her foot behind her back, she censors it on TikTok because the internet's fucking sick. Yeah, yeah, it's not, um, it's not good. So anyway, Jazz just became a channel member and joined the Honk Legion. Holy Jazz, cow. all, all right, I can say to you is chukles, chukles. Thank you so much. This piece? Thank you so yeah. much. Comes off. Yeah. This piece comes um, off. And Boom whackers is what they're called. The Very yeah. fun. And so, thank you. Look at what what we got picked up for Derek last night. It's my Christmas. To problem. add, uh, to fill out, um, it is a massive box of uh, Chaos Warriors. Um, this is the, the Age of Sigmar. These are like darkness. Minotaurs, but they're not hairy. They're basically those are so those are uh, Chaos Ogres. Oh, Chaos Ogres. Yeah, that's a uh, a unit type. Oh yeah, in yeah. Your army. Ogroid Therid Theridans Theridans. Yeah. So yeah. the problem Chaos they Minotaurs kind of remind me of. Oh yeah. Beneath Dark Wings. I mean, the entirety of Beneath Dark Wings was basically inspired by the Beastman army that I currently. And then we've got Damn, Chaos Warriors. Cool. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, nine ten. ten of them. We've got five. Five more chosen. Chaos Chosen. We've got Chaos Knights. Yep. Which are riding horses. They yep. are on horses. And then a Chaos Lord on some sort of Draconic. Eternus, Blade of the First Prince! That could be a Chaos Lord for you. On Mount. On Demonic Mount. It can be. It could also be on Dragon because that's the greatest oh. unit in the game. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the chaos, so, so the Chaos, technically, like the super meta, is you basically get a giga fuck you huge Chaos Lord on a two headed Chaos Dragon, and you beef it up, and it's effectively impossible to kill. So I've been in the Beastmen Discord, and they're all trying to figure out how the fuck do you kill a Chaos Lord on Chaos Dragon. That's very funny. It has a two-up armor save, yeah. a four-up ward, or five-up ward save, and a five-up re regen save. And that means nothing to almost all of you. Yeah, but that's have you guys very, been like playing or just? Building? I've been watching a lot of videos. Getting ready I've been to getting play. ready to play. The first I time I playing. played with uh, Abaddon, the oh, Destroyer. Nice. Well done. I thought that he was oh. unkillable. I, I literally thought it was mathematically impossible to injure him, and it turns out I just didn't understand the rules because I was 11. That'll do it. Um, I think I have enough armor pen on in my army that I should be able to at least get past the armor, but then I have to get through a ward save and a regen save, which I don't think yeah. I can do anything about. Yeah, that's pretty tough. <clears throat> now, pretty I tough. have uh, sprues with bits and bobs unminied. What do we do with this? Should I chop them, them out? Put and... them back in the original box that they came on. Oh, yeah? Is, is how I've been doing it. Really? I was thinking I'd chop... I just I'd... chuck all my shit in the bag, but... I, th I figured a, I'd at least unsprue them. Should I unsprue them? So... And then I can put them in a little tray? Have a little tray full of sprue? That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah that's fine. I, I'm gonna do that before I get into the big box, so that we can talk. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. It's it's, in the it's kind of free. annoying. Yeah, that's intense. Just leave them in the box, in the and box. we're gonna we're gonna store the boxes right. somewhere, and then eventually, once we have a better bits, this is gonna solution. be my box full of sprues for later. And there's also a little head that's going in there. Okay, but the question then becomes, what do I do with this box? Rich, you show Mace how to glue. I wasn't paying attention at all. Not yet. Oh. Once he gets the two pieces done, we're okay. gonna glue. Oh, did it break? Right. No, this, no, this, this is, no, this this is good. Do I just? I love your first NCD's mace already <laughs> fucked this shit up with his fucking orangutan fingers. Don't mix those. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> my fingers! Oh my god! Oh, thank you for the, our new channel member, Rich Gold. 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 YouTube. 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 Oh, did we get us in this super chat? Yeah. Oh, you were you were busy. Thank you, Nenya, Nenya Bidness, for being a new That's Hong Kong That's Legion. That's very funny. Holy Nag shit. Hong Kong. Holy yeah. shit. Hong Kong. Chukles, <laughs> chukles. Oh, thank you for joining the Hong Kong Legion. Oh. 
Um, shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, wow, that's very fun. Okay, I'm gonna get to some Patreon questions. Ooh, um, I love And you know, we'll Patreon casually, questions. you know, it's a chill night. It's a chill night. We're vibing. We're vibing. I have to decide what I'm gonna do with this monstrosity. Look at this monstrosity. I feel like you want to make some chaos nights. I, I want to see. The I chaos was gonna. Nights. I'm jumping in the night. I feel like the chaos I nights. I used read cool my fucking shit. mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm feeling chaos nights. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, let me refresh my fucking thing here. Chaos Nights is the name of our um, new talk show. Oh, also, I Chaos wanna, Nights. Can I tease a little bit? Yeah. Can I tease a little bit about the Crooked Moon? Sure. I won't say what, but what I'll say is that we, Derek and I, and Richie, had a three hour meeting last night <laughs> with the Blasting <laughs> Company. Oh my god. And ah! I cannot describe how absolutely, unforgettably, legendarily Kino. The Crooked Moon soundtrack is going to be. <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be like painfully oh, good. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's going to be painfully good. Oh, it's going to be so good. So, um, I think that is going to be, uh, man. It's going to be so fucking good. I'm going to save these stands for We Andy. are very much aligned. Yeah. And what I'll say is this goes for all of our partners. They are very impressed with Legends of Avantress. Not just us, but also all the okay. community. <laughs> and how amazing you all are, and everyone That's really loves you guys. That is the truth. So, um, ain't that just the okay, way? Okay, here are the ogroids. Those are high. I'm gonna put these in order. I've already done the uh, nose. Ask uh, how long until you get vinyl. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we make sure we're gonna make sure that all of the albums are fully completed and available on Spotify and wherever else. The MP3s are to everyone who. Uh, who backed and all that business. And then once that's done, we are going to, we have some avenues of how we will get that produced. But that is a an additional wave after the music is done. Yep. Yep. So we're already talking about it, but. Yep. Yep. Yes, we already are, are talking about it because these things take a very long time. It does. And uh, you know, the more that we've learned about kind of making and manufacturing this kind of stuff is that things actually take even longer than they used to. We're gonna have Especially to travel. Especially in the post-COVID world. We're gonna have cool. to travel through space and time to the uh, planet of Vinyl Thron that's to very kill cool, the vin vinylians in order to get uh, the necessary vinyl uh, material awesome. for the record pressing process. It takes forever. They are very dangerous. They have huge vinyl claws, vinyl teeth. And vinylians really far away. I mean, I mean, the triple own. Yeah. Triple alone is going to take a few light, light years at least. People, we've got several comments that I'm going to, to sum up. Uh -huh. What I will say is for the next merch shop, people are asking how much they should save up. Should we, should we, I mean, do we, we don't even know, do we? We, we don't we know, know for sure. We don't know. But what I would say, if you, you can obviously pick and choose what is good for you, but if you want everything, if you want everything that's going to drop, it's going to be a couple hundo. Not like all inbox couple hundo, but it'll be a couple hundo. Several yeah. hundred dollars. Several hundred dollars. For everything. For everything. Because there's going to be a lot of stuff. There's going to be a lot of shit. There's going to be a lot of shit. There's going to be a lot of shit. So, if you want everything, but you don't have to have everything, everything will also be available a la carte. Yes. So, yes. There's, there, there's, there's no, we're not forcing anyone to buy bundles. A la carte like ice cream? Yum. Okay. Yum. How do I know which ones of these are? Just look. Yeah, I just have to look and use my yeah. fucking eyeballs. Use your eyeballs and your own judgment. They're not labeled. That's Chaos Knight. Look at the mains. Well, uh, look at that's Chaos Knight. I don't want to do Look this. at the mains. <sighs> Making me go on a fucking <laughs> treasure hunt. Yes! That's called fucking wargaming, baby! Oh. Just... Here's the standard bear. Oh, God, look at the size of the standard for the fucking knights. Oh. Look at how shit. big that fucking thing is. The entire sprue. Yeah, that's, but that's cool as fuck. This is, this isn't, this is a uh, different. This isn't for my my horses. This is this is uh this is for the Eternal Blade. Oh, he can have a fucking. Apparently. Oh, is your BSB? He can be your BSB. He can be a BSB. Oh, that's cool. As that's fun. really cool. Uh, Lovers Rose, thank you for being a member. Honk, please, no. your proud channel member. Modding for y'all is a pleasure and honor. Love you very much. Uh, looking forward to these amazing painting and Andy coming back. Agreed on all counts. Thank you so much. We love you too. I think it's for my horse boy. That's what I said. It is the standard bear of the horse boy. I. But look. There's two yeah, big flag look, boys. Look, look at the size of this flag compared to that flag. Yeah. That banner. Look at the yeah. top, though. The top is correct. It's correct. It is this banner. And look at these horsies. Yes. 
Yes. Okay, so I He's got a horse dragon horse. horse. This is a regular horse. This one a has a shield horse, yeah. at the top. One has like a ring. Uh, <laughs> you, want to, you want me to pull all your chaos knight guys? Let's get out of here. Okay. These are my spruce. That, Stop that, touching my that, spruce. That's, that's a knight. Okay. If you need help, let me, <laughs> let me know. spruce. Let me know. This is democracy manifest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, cool, cool, cool. Casual monster, monster. I missed my question from Salt Marsh. Talk show was asleep. Was wondering what the other races would have been brought into advantage, like the gift from Spelljammer, that a wait and see kind of thing. Um, I would say most things that aren't giga cringe that Wizards has put out are in advantage. So I would say, you know, if there's a justification for it and it adds something. Uh, even our Hadozi don't have the our, wing flaps, right? Or yeah, do they can have one. Yeah, why not have oh, wing okay. flaps? Okay. Wing flaps. flaps. Maybe some don't. I don't know. We'll create and publish our own simian race if we want to that doesn't have wing flaps. So it sounds like the start of a Dr. Seuss book. Oh, that's very funny. Um, you know, there's a very real reason that we kind of moved away from that for Stardust. Stardust is very much its own setting. But, like, GIF is something I've always wanted. Even before they made put out Spelljammer, I wanted to have GIF in Avantress for many years. Mm. So... And they don't have to be tied to space. Yes. They're just hippo people. That's true. Yes, they're just hippo people. I'm never going to use my firearms um, mastery trait. <laughs> we no, we should replace that. I guess I could. Yeah, maybe, maybe you could. Yeah. Moss Ballin, do you have any advice for someone who's about to turn 18? Um, Enjoy. I'm not going to comment <laughs> on the college <laughs> system, the university system. So what I'll say is don't start drinking. Uh, that's my advice. Stay sober. Stay in school. But then, anyway. There you go. And and be intellectually curious. Mm. Binksy, I'm almost co uh, completely caught up with BDW, and I love it. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, I have a question that keeps popping into my head regarding the first few episodes. Is Torbeck related to Zorbeck? I don't know if they're related, but the origin of Torbeck came from Zorbeck. That is certainly true. Andy was doing a Zorbeck impression when he first made Torbeck. Yes. <laughs> Which is very funny. Um... Damn. Uh, who's your favorite character? Says Laura H. Who's your favorite character that you played in D and D? Thanks for all the joy you bring to people. Uh, it's hard for me to choose, but Sarnax of the Edelwood. <laughs> the answer funny. is oh, they're all my children, but Sarnax. Yeah. Um, and that's because you've 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 taught me a little bit. It's, well, it, because he's had the catharsis. He's had a, he's had a full character, right? Yes. And so it, it, same it, with Clayton. It is know. cheating. It is not fair to say to compare them. Sar to compare them because Sarnax has had a full character arc. I've experienced the catharsis of completing a full character arc and ending a campaign with a character. Nothing else fucking compares to that shit. That fucking high, you're gonna be chasing that shit for the rest of your life until you can have another amazing fucking uh, campaign character ending catharsis. So you're going to be chasing that dragon. I'm chasing that dragon. Hopefully I experience that. I'm going to be day. sad to see uh, Toa go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like that's going to be... Yeah. You know, but it'll be... It'll Especially be when he dies. Yeah. When he <laughs> dies horribly. Um, Toa is allowed to die. He probably will die. Mm -hmm. No. Well, anyone's going to die, it's going to be Toa. <laughs> And that's not because of any adventure Caprice. or battle or anything. I'm just trying to rile up chat. He's just, he's just disease. Seder Sauce, welcome oh, to the Haunt Legion. You. Oh, Seder Sauce! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, Mike Major, 1996, gifted a sub to x Quather. Mike Major, the Lord. Mike Major, Fuck, the first 10,000 bits, then a gifted what sub. What a legend. Mike Major, 1996. Um, 1996 was a great year, let me tell you. It, it was, was a good year. It was a good year. It was a good year. It was a great year. Okay, I've got a Final Fantasy VII. I got a big well, old troll bottle. Was it 96 or 97? 97, I thought. Shit. Yeah. I think it's 97. 96 was Mario the, RPG. Maybe the Japan, Japanese one? Mario yeah. RPG maybe was It probably came out in Japan in 96. Yeah, yeah possibly. That's possibly. fair. Possibly. Um, um, one of my favorite RPGs is Super Mario RPG. It was remastered for the Wii. Haven't picked it up, but it looks really fun. Pretty work nice. Um, just getting this now. I haven't gotten the gluing thing going. Yeah. Yet, well, once once we uh, we're, we're gonna share this glue here. One. Yeah. Let me in this next one. Now. Um. Excellent. 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 Uh. Questions, everybody. Um. Sarnax is the favorite child, says yeah. Daniel. I totally That's agree. That's true. I mean, anytime anybody asks us, like Stradanya, just sort of is naturally the answer. It's ridiculous. Especially for me. Flame cider. Yeah. Uh, no, I know. Well, NPCs don't care. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Sword and Silver Blade asked everyone if you could choose one D and D class and never play throughout your career, which would you choose? Which of the core classes can you simply not see yourself playing? I could see myself playing every single class uh, if I could yeah. choose a class to be banned from and never play again, either Ranger or Rogue. Very easily, yeah, Ranger or Rogue. Never hmm. Rogue. Rogue's fun. I like Rogue. I Dio? like Ranger. Dio, yeah, yeah. You could, you I could honestly play, should play you could like play a salty really Dio. Great salty Dio. I, mean, I know. I mean, Gino is an amazing mastermind rogue. Salty Dio. Um, You've been down too long, you know. Salty you, Dio. And everyone used to, everyone fucking messaged me like, Rye or Re and Aura, Aura, Aura. And I'm like, I'm sorry. No, this isn't a JoJo reference. <laughs> Let me fucking keep fishing for the magical crawfish in peace. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's how it sorry. goes. Sorry, sorry, JoJo fans, you may be the bronies of anime, <laughs> but <laughs> God, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and we also love our bronies in here. I'm sorry, I'm spicy today. Is, I don't know why. You chose violent. That is a hot take. I'm so violent. sorry. That is a hot take. That's, that's, a that's my hot take. take. Oh. No, JoJo fans are the bronies of anime. And he doubles down. And he doubles down. He's fucking objective. It is. It is. It's true. But I love you guys. Oh shit! I love you. I love you. Um. <laughs> Holy shit! Holy fuck! All right. All right. How do I glue? Mace is uh, ready to glue. Uh, I'm ready to glue. Everyone, be cool. Uh, okay. Okay. Everyone, okay. just give me a goddamn second, now, dude. I wasn't killer. kidding. There's an they hated him because it will catch him. fire if you mess up. <laughs> So yeah, if dry fit first, that's that's a good idea. Oh. So you always want to dry fit and see, okay, that's how that goes. Yeah. And then once it fits nicely. Kind of not, this is just like the stomach or something? Yeah, that's like the, the front chest piece. Mm. Like breastplate yeah. and cod piece all together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing you want to do, wow, he's just snapping his sprues in half. What a fucking madman. <laughs> no, you can snap them in half. No, I know, I know. That's how you do it. They're, they're, they're scored. Yeah. They're scored yeah, for they're pleasure. Scored. <laughs> God, you beat me to it. <laughs> Holy shit, how the fuck? God, you're quick. So, um, do you for have her the, pleasure. Do you have the edges That's you want funny. to glue? I think so. Let me trim this just a um, tad. Did, do you yeah. guys answer about what class ah. you would never want to... You, oh, oh, I, I don't think one. that I'll ever have a ranger in me. We'll see, but I... I ranger, I, it would ranger, be tough. It's tough. Ranger for me would be tough. Too. Ranger well, would be tough. It's, yeah. Well, maybe not. I'm sure I could fit. I think I, I could figure play, out every single class. I would play class. every single I know class. I could figure it out. I yeah. would like to play every class, and so it's a difficult question for me. I, I don't know. Monk Monk hasn't been really done anything for me. I'm going to say wizard. I haven't done anything. I'm going to say wizard, just to not say ranger. Okay. Um, but I also, you know, I really like the more melee classes, though. I, I really like melee classes. Yeah. I feel like I have a fighter in me. I just need the right, I need Theme. the right opportunity. Yeah. I want to go Nova like Rodek and like take a boss from full to half health or half health to huh? dead. Do you have 55 for me? Um, is that yeah. the copies? That's the copies. Thank yeah, you so much. I'll show you. Rodek is a good fighter. So this will show you. Oh, here, first one here. Let me let me just kind of clean this up. See, this so Fox has a great there. question. Happy it's Wednesday. Not Sorry, it's not Wednesday. It's, to, it's War, War, if it's Warhammer, it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer. Uh, Warhammer Wednesday. Uh, do you have any advice where when you're creating a character and you feel like they're falling flat in some way? I have two pieces of advice. Go back to the theme and what remind yourself what the core theme is and find all the pieces. The reason why it's falling flat, in my opinion, is in my guess, I don't know why it's falling flat, is probably that the that the decisions that have been being made are not laddering up to the, the core theme of the character, or there's not, there isn't a core theme of the character. And so A, so define now, a core theme. Uh, scrap everything that is not. Kind of the edge, edge kind of like add where, whatever yeah. you need to make sure so you're executing that core it, theme. Yeah. And then yeah. finally, the hardest advice that I can give anybody, but I'm spicy today. Perfect. Ooh, don't yeah. feel so like you need to hang do, on. Take this. Unscrew sometimes it. you gotta get it let has go. Glue in it. And sometimes you scrap just the tap character the edge and start so over. It's not super yep. overloaded. And then run advice. this along Cat basically switch both says, sides. Says, what is your favorite snack to have while in session? Coffee. So I'm running it. I do. I'm not a snacker in general, especially not. I'm gonna help Derek. Derek. Okay. I'm gonna help Derek guide it in. <laughs> so what this is doing, it's actually not glue. It's melting the plastic. What? And so it's gonna connect to that edge. So I'm gonna get this here. <laughs> we, got, we got business in the front, party in the back. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> you can always add a little more. Take off the excess. It's like the fucking mullet from Muppet Chizzer Island. That's right. Jim Hawkins' boy soprano mullet. Get out mullet. of here, Jim. Yeah, what the fuck? Use your Add diaphragm, you bastard. Because all the edges uh, that you're not going to see God. but that are connecting. Um, Maybe we'll do thank those, you, right? Zero Sin, for the sub. 
Thank you, thank you, thank so you. So now the plastic is going to get um, soft in both of these. Oh, and then you shit. Welcome to Warhammer Connected. Wednesday, folks. I love Warhammer Wednesdays. Warhammer Wednesday's good. You know, it's fun. I mean, I, mean, I want to play Feywild. <laughs> I'd rather have Wednesday. But Warhammer Wednesday is a pretty <laughs> close <laughs> second. Oh, Dude, people are watching two oh. shows at the same time uh, right now. Do you have now. a favorite snack besides Mallow Cups? <laughs> I was just watching that Mallow Cup reel. That was so um, funny. What a night. I, uh, old school pizza. Man. Let's fucking go. Like, have just to a, a oh, You know what? So technically, if In that place. counts as a snack... <clears throat> I agree. I guess I, it might not count. It well, I'll count it. I'll count it. I'll count it. I try to hold it and for like, I think because you know it's the nostalgia for me. Our very first yeah, session 20 of the seconds, NBA 15, I ever, ever played. Our very first episode of I Session Prime. Twenty-five. You know, we perhaps. got a big old stack of pizzas. Mm-hmm. And, and pizza and D and D is very almost special like for me. just and I, so I think pizza. Once it's done, once I think it's um, done, pull it apart to see. Good. Helios. You didn't really Hello. like stick. Hope you're all having a lovely day. Any advice you'd give your DM is like you DM was like you pull it apart to see if it's like holding? Sometimes um, I know, right? To see if what really I'll say stays. is that I think for DM, the advice there, that I give everybody that I'm so asking. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll literally is, um, break it. It's still kind of Are you guys soft, able to hear both of us, by the way, when we're yes, talking? I'm like, so they, they have to listen to, to... They can choose. Oh, we have to lose, yeah, they have to listen and But chance. our mics are good enough that it's fine. Right? Uh, presumably. I, I, I'm yeah, able yeah, to, yeah. to, like, focus on yeah. a specific voice if I want. Um, so just, okay, like, cool. don't, don't clear so it off as much. Yeah. The advice and that I give so is be don't, a little more liberal. don't go too crazy with the world building. Don't get too obsessed with, like, coming up with cool, high fantasy shit you want to show your players. this is a beginner's trap. Um, It's a beginner's trap. Focus on the story and the narrative and the principle the more that in my opinion the more that you study the principles of narrative and storytelling the better the DM you are going to be and that is not exclusive no. to D&D that is not exclusive to, to even writing it. movies this TV is shows, a hard plays but this is a hard lesson games. to learn because yes. there is a tension between wanting to have a plot figured out in advance but and 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 requiring yeah, narrative there, but really mm, allowing you your like, sense of narrative to guide like, you as you are playing the session is what's important. You don't want you don't want to plan if you know how a session like, ends. Pinching? Why even yeah, play? Like, kind of you need to pressure. create encounters okay, and then well, learn two, through the narrative. Well, three, you understand my meaning. Uh, I think that having the uh, story beats that you're that you're six, aiming at helps, seven, and having the outline eight, helps. But then if you understand narrative, you're going to be equipped to improvise. And so no matter what your party does, I think we're saying the same. Yes, exactly right. Okay. You'll be okay. able, but what I'll say is, don't be afraid. And you know, this is kind of the thing of where, like, I think yeah, railroading gets a, ba- a bad rap. It's attached like there. throw slabs of meat yeah. and encourage the players team. to really engage. Nice. Fifty three or um, whatever the next piece is to really engage in the narrative where they'd have to be stupid not to follow your your hooks, and that gives you a lot more control too. Of you're able to plan a lot better. But like I said, like Derek wow. and I are saying. The more that you understand narrative, you can improvise and not need to have everything like planned out, and you can have amazing narrative. So that is my that is my. This thing. is bad boy. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Thank no you. No question, just supporting. Happy to be a part of the clown group while causing clown chaos through art for people. Thank you. F- Fifty Alexis. Swedish crones. Thank wow. You. Thank you. Amazing! Thank you for all of the the super chats for the channel members. Channel members, we truly. Uh, I only know that that's Swedish crones because that's the currency that Free League Publishing does their Kickstarters in. Yep, that's right. The Swedish crones because yep. they're in Sweden. That's right. Check out uh, Free League Publishing. They, they are, have some awesome stuff. They have some awesome fucking shit. Let me tell you, uh, Vassen is one of them. Uh, they the also standard. publish Pirate Borg, right? Yeah. Uh, they're a publisher of Pirate Borg. I don't know. They are. I think. I believe they're the publisher of Pirate Board. They're the publisher of Pirate Board. Didn't Luke sell publish or no? Did he always? No, no, no. He didn't publish Pirate Board. Oh, okay. So yes, he right. really published it. He, I think he, he, I don't know the details, yeah. <laughs> obviously. But anyway, Free League publishes Pirate Board, I believe. Now, when I was assembling my Chaos Chosen, you were describing the mechanical benefits of using one variant over another. And so I'm confronted with three variants here, and I'm guessing that choosing a Hammer Bro versus a... Long poke master is going to mean. So mechanical. hammer is it two handed? Uh, no. So th- so basically, you're just you're deciding between lances and hand weapons, basically. Yeah. And so the thing about lances is that they're really good for the first charge, as in a lance. But then as soon as you get knocked in, locked in combat, you can no longer use them. Oh. So what's going to happen is they charge into battle, they slam their lances into the, the into the force. The lances may break. They may drop the lances. Then they pull out the hammer and start smashing. <gasps> 
So it's really about kind of, you know. I wish lances in D&D worked that way. That would be really cool. I think you want to build them with lances, personally. I, if it's a knight. Yeah? I think you should build them with lances. Just personally. go all lance all the time? I, and, I would and, certainly and, 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 you know, start like, with lance. We're yeah. also like not going to be so grognardy or whatever to say, oh, you need a model and like that. Like, we can do counts as. Like, equip them, you know, we can equip them. Count as is fine. I just yeah. wanted to know. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's honestly up to, up to you. So, I the like, idea is I that like there, lance bro. there's no reason to not have the lances because they're going to, in once they do their lance charge, they're going to whip out that hammer anyway. Just the model won't have the hammer, it'll have the lance. Yes. Which will be more. Accurate, all right. I think. So I just put the acid on all the <laughs> yeah. plastic acid. On, on yeah. everywhere where the seams are going to touch. Everywhere. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is everywhere. Yeah, the yeah. seams yeah. are all over this. Yeah. Yeah. Connect them up and then count to 23. There, there you go. Derek said 23. 23. But I'll put it on this piece too, right? <laughs> yeah. And this yes. piece? Yeah, that's how I do it. It makes it, it, makes it sturdier. Yeah. Generally, like, for smaller bits, you can, only, you can do one side and it's fine. Um, how, uh... I feel like people How are going to be more precise do I have to be here? It should be pretty precise for you. Like, when once they feel like they are locked in, yeah. and you can't wiggle them too much, <sighs> you mean then, with the glue, then, then, then you're in. I'm in with the glue. Oh, I I, I, mean, I, like, I, dr get, I drench that shit. I can just get, like, slather it. You can That's what I Oh, and what I will say is, this is something that I learned, is that I I'm apply it. I'm not I, very delicate. I apply mm -hmm. it. Neither am I. And I still do okay. Apply it, for and then give it a second for it to melt the plastic yeah. a little bit. If you go glue and then immediately do this, it'll take longer. But once the plastic is soft and right on the surface, you'll find that it's a lot easier for it to uh, cold seal. So what is the stuff that's out here melting plastic? It's basically a formulation of uh, like nail polish remover, kind of like acetone. I was gonna say it smells kind of like nail polish. Remover. Exactly right. It has all the same active ingredients, which smells like. Um, there you like people will want to yeah, see. What it does you're smell doing. like kind of sweet yummies. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it over. Smells here. like yeah. a banana tree. A banana slam, if you will. Oh yeah, gorilla. Gorilla's treat. We should go gorilla's grab a gorilla's treat from Ocean City. You really should. Next time we're down there, uh, let's get some banana in that. There you thing. go. It's banana peanut butter. There you Sheet. go. That sounds fucking delicious. Um. So yeah, in general, right? Like when it comes to Warhammer, some clubs or some groups want they want it to be Wissywig. Um, where okay. literally what you see is what, what you, you see get. Is what you get. Uh, and so, oh, do like if you buy, if you spend the extra point to get a shield on your on this unit of dwarf warriors, they want to see the fucking shield on that little model, right? We're not going to worry about that too much. No. Not yet. I got some of this in my mouth. Is that an issue? No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's relatively. Not you toxic. will burst into flames soon. Damn it! It's always flames. Yep. Obviously, Very keep it cool. keep it out of your eyes, and it can cause skin irritation, but it's not like. As far as I know, it's not a little poison. Little burns from the super glow, so yeah, the cement is like way better by. Where is forty three? Yeah, cyanoacrylate is not going to fuck around with. That's it's also it's still non toxic. You Does anyone have the Patreon questions? Because I'm hold, I'm holding trug together. I'm well, to why don't we knock off a couple Twitch questions? Yeah. We don't have that many. Uh, Becky Falcon, what's the deciding process when on the timeline campaigns are focused? For example, why is Icebound set so far in the past? That's a good question. We wouldn't really hand with how far in the past it is. I'm glad. I'm there you go. Glad. Derek's glad about it. Um, I think I think that... Uh, Would you say that it's still narratively relevant? Why we're so far in the past? Yeah. Yeah, I so think that, I think that it, it, it cooks a lot of different meats on one fire. And I can't yeah. speak to all of those different meats without having finished the story. At which point, I'd be happy to have a, a spoiler fest to Reno. Um... And I think that after Icebound concludes, it would be great to do what we thought we might do for Stradania, and we should do it for Beneath the Dark Wings, where we have like an all-day mega chill. I think we should do that for every campaign. And for Stradania, we're going to start having uh, TBD, but we're going to basically start uploading weekly the <clears throat> podcast versions oh, of to the YouTube. to YouTube with the actual video. So if you want to see, if you want to watch it and watch us play, but have it be a little more edited in bite-sized chunks. I didn't know that. Um, Good for us. That's coming. So maybe when we finish Redania, we could also do that as well. Um, but it, it is not without meaning. It wasn't selected arbitrarily. Um, we'll straw and, and some, then BBW. Some oh. of the choices that we make, obviously, is to tee up narrative events. Yeah. Um, and we've done that a little bit in Icebound. Just a tiny boot boop 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 But uh, in my mind, I see it as, I, I asked for it. 
uh, for Icebound in particular. I'm not going to speak as to why Beneath Dark Wings is before this, is before that, or after this, after that, or any of the other campaigns, but when it came to the order, um, I felt it was meaningfully important. So it, it definitely well is like Prime has to be the most recent because of like the world implications. Witchlight had to be where it was because of the Guru connection. Prime is present day. Yeah, Prime is sort of like you know quote unquote present Year day. Year zero, and then we work backwards. Yeah, and so backwards is just is the narrative freedom. And you know, Strahd is where it is because of Beneath Dark Wings is where it is, and you know, it's, it's all for a reason. I guess is the point. Stardust yep. is in space. But um, stay tuned. Yeah. It's a great question. It's a very apt, uh, uh, lucid question. Thank you, Bunny, for five gifted channel memberships. Channel members. Thank, Thank you. you. Channel, channel members. Thank you so much, Mark. $20 Canadian. Holy cow. Your oh, shorts wow. have been the first ever d and I've ever consumed. Sorry, with the animation of Chuck Goldstorm on the yeah, day. Great job. I'm oh. now on episode 35, or I'm now 35. The, I don't know if it's episode 35 oh. or 35 years old. And I was behind yeah, a former group cool. to play with. We're 35. Where do I start? Any advice? Um, I would say the Avengers Discord. If you're going to, if you yeah. got to play online that anyway. That's a good place to start. The Avengers Discord. There's a looking for group chat channel. Go ahead and use that. Otherwise, so many folks go to here. your friendly local game store and find out if they have D&D nights, and you could probably jump in. Finally, my favorite option is try to strong arm your friends you already have to try it out and role play in person. Yeah. If they all have a lick of personal personality, a lick of sense, a lick of imagination, they're going to love it. That's true. Those are my three options and pieces of advice. Um, thank you so much. Ooh. Uh, Mark Danielle Lopez. Much appreciated. Uh, Mike Major, 1996, The Legend. Holy A cow. thousand bits. Here's your pizza. Thank you, thank you for the pizza. <laughs> Good God. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. That's thank very you, Mike kind. Major. You're the best. Um, okay. I'm going to get, get a question read and Ooh. then keep us uh, cutting out. Oh! I'll show off my, uh, the two resin miniatures, or the three resin miniatures that I have assembled. Um, oh, that's how I, that's how I do it. Patreon. I'm struggling with these hammers. Let me tell you. Uh oh, I'm doing okay. But... Dylan asks, "Do y'all do you each have a favorite D and D race to play? Y'all put a ton of effort into making each character and race and class have a ton of significance for the characters and how they perceive things. So, I was curious if each player had a race they enjoyed playing more than others, and if so, why? I do not." To me, race, all that matters with the race slash lineage slash whatever is does it does it add to the theme of what I'm trying to achieve with the character. Yeah. yeah. So there is nothing where I'm like, oh, I always play X, I always play Y. Um, or I have a preference. Well, I think that I think that's just correct. You know, like I oh, I would say that <laughs> <laughs> um, like Normally, I would say Genasi, right, is probably like my right. favorite D and D race because I absolutely love the elements. I'm a huge fan of Avatar: The Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I really love the concept of a race of people that are like built in the elements. But mm -hmm. that's not to say that, like for instance, I would have ever wanted Tai Shen to be a Genasi, right? Or I ever would have wanted Yorgrim to be anything but an orc, right? Like those are just the right moves for those characters. Um, but it doesn't mean that I don't love Genasi the most. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of similar to me, right? Like, I, I will play whatever makes oh. the most sense for the character. Obviously, I have two lizard folk and I have two dwarves. And, like, so, and those are races that I like just for the nature of them being the way they are. But, like, Yornir is a Fearbolg. I don't ha have a particular specific interest in Fearbolgs, right? I wouldn't seek out to play another Fearbolg, just like I would never seek out to play a human like Clayton was, right? It all made sense for the story. Um, fuck. Uh, <laughs> sorry, hold on. Uh, but Virginia's answer is dwarves. I, I have an answer. Yeah, Virginia's which is, answer is dwarves. My favorite yeah. race, this is very similar to Mikey's, but uh, my favorite race is the one that I'm playing. Um, I love playing Tabaxi, and then I'll suddenly be, as a uh, DM, I'll be playing a Gith Yankee, or I'll suddenly be um, a halfling uh, in the modified form of Bitsy. Uh, and as I am playing it, I'm like, this is the best. And then I'll come to the next week, and, oh, GIF is the best. Of course I want to play a GIF, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It always changes it because... yeah. It, it, it's it's whomever I'm, I'm inhabiting in that moment, uh, if that colors the, the answer a little bit. 
Um, great question. Uh, uh, my I'm major sure. is that another thousand bits? Woo! Mikey major. and friends, you're out it, of control. It is weird to see my nickname constantly posted. My nickname is Mikey yeah. as well. Hey, excellent, excellent taste. It's a good nickname. It's a good name to have. So well done. I'm going to show off me. A lot of mics in the world, you know. A lot, a lot of, of mics. So I a finished this uh, guy last night. This is a cockatrice. Ooh. I don't know. You can't really see it. Shh. Um, where's the camera? Yeah, Over here. Oh, yeah, have oh, me on me. So are. anyway. No, can't I really tell. You want to put it down? Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. And there's that. So this is obviously, it's a giant bird-like serpentine uh, monster of the Beastmen. It uh, turns uh, creatures to stone, uh, as is the cockatrice's hallmark, and also has acidic vomit if I Damn, upgrade it. Nice. enough points. And it's really fun. And then this was the motherfucker that took me like six, seven hours to, to put together. Be careful with him. While I was doing taxes, <laughs> Mike was putting together. This is the Jabber Slice. The Jabber Walker, the Jabber uh, Slice. So in the original wow, Warhammer. This is really good work, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. In uh, resin miniatures are a nightmare to work with. And so it took me like seven hours or six hours. Uh, the Tsukakashi is a lot easier, but the there is a lot of pieces and bits and bobs. This is the Jabber Slife. Originally in the Warhammer world, they just literally had the Jabber Walk because it's public domain. I can and full instead, this bitch. they uh, retooled it, and basically, it is yeah a hideous creature that's disgusting, part, uh, part dragon, part toad, part insect, part goat, and yet you know, part frog. You know, uh, part like it's got a big old club tail. And it's so ugly that the sight of it makes you start gibbering in nonsensical rhymes. Do you fucking get it? <laughs> That's really funny. Do you see what they're doing? I really like how it looks. That's and awesome. I think it's very fun. And Is cool. that a magical effect? Or like, would I need to roll this just to save against that? Or like, how does that work? You <clears throat> need to roll to save against. I can't really recall. It's got a big old grabby tongue. Thank Wait, what, what are they doing? I missed it. Oh, this do guy? You, do you see what they're doing? With the with the gibbering thing, you said. Do you oh, see what they're doing? It's it's a reference to the Jabberwocky, which is the poem by um, uh, uh, Lewis Carroll. Uh, no, oh, right? C.S. Yeah. Lewis. C.S. Lewis. Sorry. Uh, C.S. Lewis. No, Lewis Carroll. C.S. C.S. Yeah, Lewis. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis saying, God, I mean, God's let. Uh, uh, Lewis Carroll. <laughs> who oh yeah. yeah uh, wow. Alice Adventures in Wonderland wow, and uh, Through the Looking Glass. And in Through the Looking Glass, they reference the Jabberwock, which is the creature of the Jabberwocky, and it's all nonsensical. Words. Yeah. And the so, Jabberwocky is the poem, but the creature's name is the Jabberwock. Oh, and finally, this is all in pieces, but I assembled my first uh, Tusk Gore chariot, which are these cool pig, <laughs> little, very pig, little pigs. Like pig guys that pull this chariot. You can't fucking see shit. Chariot, and they got two guys in it. Oh, so, pig guys? Yeah, they're, they're boars. And so uh, they actually comes with the head that is of the regular boars that are used by the orcs and goblins, mainly the orcs. And, uh, but a special, so it's a plastic body that's for all the Orc and Goblin kits and comes with it with a head, but, uh, it is packaged with the, uh, the special resin head that have, like, actual horns that come out and... I feel like the tusks. Warhammer Orcs are up Mesa's alley. They're Orcs and they ride pigs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, uh... That's true. That's true, very cool, and they're releasing a bunch of new models. Yeah. Phoenix, super chat, five bucks. Thank you so much. I hope everyone is doing well. I have a question. I believe everyone has been thinking lately, what tier? <laughs> um, what tier? The all in tier. The all in the tier. The all in tier. What, what else can we say about it? For project so and so, all in tier is all I gotta say. That's, That's all I gotta funny. say. You know what I mean? That's very project funny. so and so. You know what I mean? I gotta say. We got five dollar. Oh, you know what's funny? We got uh, to the person I can't remember your name. I'm sorry that met us at Gritty Goblin Games when we were picking up this stuff last night. Oh if yeah! You're, if you're watching right now, <laughs> if you're watching. Howdy, howdy. Uh, it was great running into you. It was great running into you. Um, that was fun. Uh, so always go in the all in tier, no matter what it is we do. All in tier is what I recommend. <laughs> all in tier, the biggest bundle, the ultimate bundle. I just can't recommend it strongly enough. Mm -hmm. um, great question. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think... Do you have any more Patreon questions? Yeah, we have plenty of Patreon questions. I'm just scraping a troll fist. I'm scraping Garrett a Stormborn. cauldron. A dwarf uh, cauldron. If Gideon had to choose between going with Kremi or staying in prison with Twigsy, who would he choose? Going with Kremi. <laughs> it's, wow, Damn, not even close. Damn! Close. Oh, yeah, I mean, come on. Let's be serious. Damn! 
Twig is cute. Poor Twig. Now, yeah. He said, we, assuming Twig couldn't leave Prismere, uh, I think that's probably pretty true. I, I don't I know. I think that... What would Kremmy do? And also, can, can do what you're inside. What would Kremmy do? Yeah. If, I guess, if he chose Twig over it. I think Kremmy knows that Gideon no, would never choose Twig. He, he yeah. wouldn't accept, no, he wouldn't not, accept not that, that response. Not a snowball's yeah. chance in hell. <laughs> that decision. Not a snowball's chance in prison, man. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Twig. <laughs> yeah. Not name. even close. The middle yeah. name's coming out real fast if that happens. Yeah. yeah, that is funny as fuck, dude. Well, not every uh, not every friendship survives its first oh, adventure. Shit. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fan fic, yeah. uh, writers. <laughs> If there has to be a decision like that, that's a fun new what if. That's very fun. I love that. What I do you think they probably fun. like in the yeah. end, like if there is opportunity for it, like unless she wanted to stay in Prismere, they I think they're making like a good faith effort to to attempt to like free her from Prismere. Yeah, like, like, like hey, back, come with know? us. Like let's hang. Yeah, I think they would absolutely offer. Like, hey, come like let's let's re reinvigorate the we carnival. We can start a bakery. You can yeah. you can run the concession stand at the carnival. You can find <coughs> we can finally sell something other than ice. That's very funny. Uh, and you know, we'd love to have you along. We all like, know that like Twig isn't isn't making that of the campaign. Jeez. I uh, think that I, she is. Uh, I mean I feel like all of the I, lore I, in drops. fact I am confident that she is. <laughs> Well, it depends on how you look at it. <laughs> From a certain point For, Like, of looking view. at her origins, she's not just like, uh, Oh, I'm a person! I'm yeah. a real person! Yeah. No, she's like, oh, I'm just a person who lives around. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm gonna say. From a certain point of view. We um, shall see. For those of you who don't have a hobby like this, or pick a, pick, pick a hobby. It's been such a long time since I've had like a good laser focus, chatting and making I movies. miss good. this so fucking much. I didn't realize that I hadn't been nourishing myself, my soul, in the way that this nourishes my soul. Yep. And it's extremely satisfying. Yep. Damn. Dude. And what I'll say is like I I played video games for the first time during our little holiday break. Mm -hmm. And it was very fun. I had a great time. It was it, fun. It doesn't come close to the level of nourishment, like you say. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, to me, it does not fit, uh, it's scratch the same itch yeah. that the, the hobby side here I agree. does. I um, totally agree. And so that's my, that's my thought on the matter. This is pretty fun so uh, far. Yeah. It, it, it is, it's very zen. Yeah, I was just It's, say it's zen. creative in its own way. Um, you know, I had a blast. Well, it's social, right? Where like literally, I know people will get together as friends and just do this. Because you can talk, but everyone's doing something, right? We're literally turning into like the quilt making, like yeah, literally, yeah, yeah, literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of we're, we're knitting. About people. We're knitting. Yeah. <laughs> this is our out. knitting, I right? It out. Men knit. Um. And then there's the gaming aspect too, right? So like, there's all these different. Yeah. And there's the narrative aspect of like Can you the war lore. game with a quilt. I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah, all the lore hammer people who only are interested in the lore, like there's something there for them as well. Um, for me, well, I but would... for me, what I love about it is the they call it the your dudes. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like when you make your army, you come up with like the lore and where in the world they are, what colors they are represents like for me my yeah, dwarves what hold they're a part I'm of. I'm thinking about like how I'm going to. I'm going to have a folk horror color scheme that is inspired by Crid the Crooked Moon as my yeah. Beastmen. I love that. Um, and so I'm very excited about that. And what I'll say is, if we never played, I would still be having just as much fun. Like, I know yeah. that that is going to be satisfying, and I kind of can't wait, but at the same time, I could wait for eternity, because as long as we've got more weird shit to put together, it's like, uh, it's like Legos. I loved I loved Legos when I was a kid. It's been a yeah. while since I've put yeah. one of those together. I want to build my guys a giant spaceship that they can call in an artillery strike. That's the Seraphon literally live in 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 giant spaceships. Yeah, <laughs> in, in Age of Sigmar. In Age oh of Sigmar. my god! So in, in Warhammer, they're, they're in Warhammer Fantasy. They're still like technically from from like beyond. They were created by like the first you ones. You and I are not the yeah. same, really. Oh. But uh, the idea that in Age of Sigmar they literally all live in giant temple ships. Outside of like the planes or the planets, and they beam them down in like fucking laser crystal magic. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh oh. We wear our inspirations on our sleeves. Exactly right. Um, I had never played this before. You know, but so you can just, you know, in court, you can blame us. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, I did, however, play that one Star Fox game. 
Uh oh. Yeah, I mean it's it's a classic it's a trope. Classic Nobody trope. owns that shit. Yeah. Oh, it's one of those things that we're like, you know, Games Workshop, please don't come at us. I love you guys, but they're the name of the main dark elf. They had to finally change because his name was Malaketh. Do you know where they got the name? Nope. The what? name Malaketh is from Thor, the leader of the Dark say, Elves, is named the... Malaketh. <laughs> yeah. So don't come at me! That's Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah so they changed Thor. it to Malarian uh, in, the, yeah. in the old They ones. have retconned him fully. They've retconned him fully, Four yeah. Four. it's the very end of Malarian's a cool name. Force. Yeah, I think it's a great name. Um, 44? It makes me think of... Um, oh. Speaking of dinosaur, uh, what's who's Balerion? The, the black Balerion dread. the Black Dread yeah. is the oh God, uh, black dragon <laughs> that Aegon himself, Aegon the Conqueror, used oh, geez, to, conquer, right uh, <laughs> to conquer to uh, conquer Westeros when he and his sister wives uh, ventured from Dragonstone and conquered the Seven Kingdoms. Nymeria so, and the other one. <laughs> Sir, I just yeah. asked if the Squire Arab was free. <laughs> uh, Nymeria, <laughs> Visenya and Rhaenys, his sister wives. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's very funny. Uh, I'll go. And then on. he showed up with I'll his deep, on. with his deep lore. Mm -hmm. And then he was ridden by Magor the Cruel. Because <laughs> <laughs> clearly they outlived. The longest demon. lived <laughs> dragon, finally ridden by Viserys the Second. Man, I'm worried I'm gonna fuck this up. Holy uh, shit! Oh, Viserys from the show rode Balerion. It was Balerion. He rode him once. Oh, he rode Balerion once, and then Balerion's like, "Fuck this, I'm going to die." I, I'm, yeah, I'm and dead. then he died. Fuck this, I'm dead. Uh, Have you ever had to undo a glue? Just pull it apart gently. No, but like after a while. Yeah, yeah, you can, you, you can, you can basically rip them apart. Corey okay. Pollum says, "What is each of your top three favorite video games of all time?" This will be a long thing, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That's, that's devastating. Tough. That's Damn, so man. impossible. Um, you know, because they all come at different like times. Like, do you go by how much you did? You in terms of hours, World of Warcraft, no question. Right. Followed yeah, by League of Legends. I guess yeah. If you if you this time is World of, World of Warcraft followed by League of Legends effortlessly, but like I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Witcher three, Minecraft. So I don't want to go by hours. No, I'm not going by oh, hours. Good. Don't um, go by hours, Derek. The original 1993 Micropose XCOM UFO Defense, Final Fantasy VII, Deus Ex. Oh, I hear that's very good. Wow, really? Chrono Trigger. What? You're supposed to pick three. System Shock 2. <laughs> GoldenEye. Ooh. Super Smash Brothers. Uh, Super Mario yeah. Kart. Uh. It, it, it's impossible. If I can choose you, you franchises, have to, it, it's just crazy. You can't choose franchises. No, you you, you have to choose you genre. Three it, it, the, the only way you can limit it is by genre. Like, what's your favorite? My action? my favorite uh, 3D platformer is Banjo Kazooie. My favorite right. 2D platformer is D Donkey Kong Country 2. My favorite shooter is Halo Combat Evolved. Oh, um, yeah. My favorite. Uh, God. God my favorite War. MMORPG is WoW. My favorite MOBA is League. Um, my never, favorite I've RTS never is a MOBA, really. Warcraft Three. MOBAs are so good. There's a reason why like League is so huge, right? Like Mike and I started in beta when nobody fucking knew what the fuck it was, and we like it was just amazing. Well, right? because you guys were fans of we were, we were huge Dota War, kids. Warcraft yeah. Three. We 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 played Warcraft Three and we played a shit ton of Dota. That makes me want to. Every time I think about Dota, I want to listen to that fucking music video. Yep. Every fucking da, ba, 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 Dota. Da, 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 Dota. I hear you, man. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot they did like they the had like the, voice. the the voice lines. Yeah. yeah that's funny. I'm trying to think if there's any video game that's just not been said already that. Uh, real quick, I want to the first time chatter. Murky Umbrella question for those that play League of Legends: What are your mains if you have them? Ah. I main Volibear Jungle until he was. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he's fine now, but I don't like the rework. Um, I'm a top main pri primarily, um, and Tom Kench and Orn are my uh, You're a lowly top men. And Mundo like to uh, like down here, like it's Tom Kench, Orn, Mundo, Trundle Vi and Sejuani. Jungle, Jungle. Trundle Vi and Sejuani. Counting, I'm counting. <laughs> and I've never played a MOBA. Mains. I'm counting, I'm counting. You have like counting. what? One or two? 
Uh, oh, you're counting. Number one. Oh, oh, number one. Yeah, no, I'm, oh, count, I'm counting. Oh, the sorry, okay. so oh I've never, the I've never played a, a MOBA, but my main is Miss Fortune. <laughs> no, no further, further questions. questions. Oh, then my main is Tristana and, and Poppy. Andy could no make further make questions. It for tonight. Tristana and Poppy. Uh, yeah, Same my main. Miss Fortune, Sam. I, I actually um, did main uh, Tristana for a season. You did. I did pretty well. Yeah, I feel like I remember that. I used to main Redicton. Uh, for many years. I would say I'll go with mains in each lane because I play a lot of different champions I really love. But you do. That's in true. the jungle by by a wide margin, uh Viego. Hundred percent. And then behind that, uh like for, from time wise probably most champ I've Let me played know is uh Udir. Top lane I played a ton no, no, of no, no, Shen, no. a ton of Yorick. Right question. So uh, I'm in the doing mid lane, I played I a lot of yeah. Silas and, 44 can be uh, and a lot of Yone. And then I got uh, that's probably like top, I could do that. top yeah. six or that's so. Um, Mace is like way more well rounded. Than There's than tons of variation. Yeah, I've, 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 I've been around. This looks like awesome. 52 is fucking badass. You know I mean to Relia in season two? How awful is that? I just wanted to get to gold. That's definitely before the rework. Yeah, I just wanted to get to gold. When the E was like true damage and the W was... Or I guess her R was the crazy lifesteal beams. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. All the all the <coughs> knives she threw out. Yeah, it was when she just looked hideous, just awful. Yeah. Like like three polygons. Uh you that's a fun about question. Tomb Raider? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Seder Sauce with 50 more Swedish crones. Betting my tablet wow. pen. This has been asked before, so sorry. Do you ever read fanfics uh, with your characters, etc.? Sorry, once again. I think we're yeah. crossing or have crossed 600. There it is. Um, um, I used to read a ton of fanfiction. Yeah. Um, also, it used to be easy to keep up. <laughs> yeah, uh, to the point where I was keeping up with almost all of them, but then once the Crooked Moon really started in earnest, I have fallen out of like most things, including fan fiction. So it's not just fan fiction that I've fallen out of, but just I've, I'm I'm just too busy to sort of keep up with them all. Yeah. I've thought about asking the community on Discord and being like, "Hey, if I have an hour, what should I sit down and read over coffee in the morning?" Yeah, but I don't but want people the like problem pick favorites, is, is right? exactly we get into a competitive favorite town zone. Yeah, right. Um, I have tried to dip in once a week, even even in the insanity. Uh, I've fallen off since New Year's, so it's been a while. It's sometime at some point in December where I, I read my last fanfic. I'd like to get back into it because oh. it's an extremely cool mirror to look into to see how people are perceiving your characters or right. writing your characters and seeing how they they are interpreting ah. the interrelationships with the the characters. There's some really awesome, awesome creative. Talented writers out there oh, yeah. who are oh blessing God. us with their creative energy writing these stories. It's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, but I'm not going to solicit any favorite stories. I'm just going to continue to occasionally dip into the writer's box and or just jump onto AO3 and see what's maybe getting what's been published recently. And if anything attracts my eye, because I like the characters and I like the title and I want to, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Mm. Great answer. Do I put this on a base now? Um, not no. yet. No, no, no. So basically, okay. because we have we're not There's doing this. In the floor, yeah, right? we're not. We're using square bases. Ah. So uh, nuclear blue. What would you I base everything on? Blue. On a beach day episode. <laughs> Sardax would bask in the sun. Do I'm going to assume day this day. question is is targeted at Stardust oh. Rhapsody, but Which maybe lane? not. Probably. No, nuclear blue is yeah. oh. Stardust Rhapsody. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's, Chuckles that's would 100% oh, have a comically large oh, snorkel, flippers, a uh, a llama yeah. corn I can see uh, I can see inner him. tube yeah. Uh, yeah. thing with a llama oh, corn head and little wings, uh, and floaties. And he would just go, he would, he's one of those, he would probably splash around, and he'd sit in the wave and have, and he'd like roll around in the sand, and yeah, and like make crazy intricate, like, he'd have probably crazy intricate, like, sand castle role play playing. That'd be very fun. I think that'd be a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. I, I knew that immediately. Thank you for asking. I didn't even think about that. I just snapped it off. 
I don't think Labouche would have a good time on the beach at all. <laughs> He's constantly sand it's like in sandy, crevice. but it's 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 in his suit. It makes the suit not operate correctly. It's getting into his body. It's getting into his filters. He's got to everyone. Every once in a while, he's got to like wring himself out and like dump out squand and just like Squam. have a terrible. Like so he's not he's Labouche, not going into the ocean. He's like it's a nightmare. Labouche is one of those people that goes to the beach in like a long sleeve t shirt and shorts. Yeah, and sits under <laughs> and sits under the umbrella. <laughs> and or you know, what a great opportunity to be a grumpy so he, fuck. He'll be folding his arms <sighs> under the umbrella with like his his feet like up away from the sand and like staying away from the sand yeah. and the water. Yeah. Man, this writes itself. Yep. Yeah. This writes itself. I can see it so clearly. Yeah. Uh, Rhett would wear like longboard shorts that are definitely too oh, long. Oh yes, and like a tank top. <laughs> and he'd have uh, a cooler like, of, of beer. Yeah, you've, you've, always, you've beer. always got the device. So why am I seeing you with like one of the rubber ducky like bl- uh, inflatable? Uh, I think that's more of a chuckles and, thing. And, yeah. and, 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 I can see Red doing it. He oh. get really into building like a sandcastle. You know those guys that oh, like yeah. those yeah. middle aged guys that like just spent all day working on a sandcastle. Sand oh stick. my god, I see Rhett building like an all day sandcastle, and it's like really classic. Yeah. And then yeah. the viewers next to him, and it's like a giant. <laughs> yeah, 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 Let's have a beach episode. Yeah, we yeah, love a beach episode. Anymore, oh, man. Not Everybody's dead. We can Everyone have a beach dead. episode. Uh, Shit. You know what they say? A wise man once said, nothing lasts forever. All my worries exist in space. Uh, even cold November rain. Yeah, cold Jesus. November rain. Jesus. I'm not, I'm still bruised, everybody. <laughs> Uh, no spoilers, but <laughs> yeah, no. Chuckle would be in the water, splashing right. around in the waves with all of that full blown. That's I fun. think Danny would be as well, yeah, we or like really excited to play like like Chuckles' version of beach volleyball. I think that she'd be in the waves as a fucking like ichthyosaur. Yeah. Yeah. Jumping out of the yeah. water like a dolphin. Yeah, yeah. She'd, yeah. Be tra- she'd be transformed oh, into like yeah. an ichthyosaur. She really would be yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like, or like a yeah. fucking or a plesiosaur. Mosasaur. Like yeah. 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 Jumping around. Uh, Kavir would have like a giant. Uh, yeah, he would have like a, a giant like empire. It's a. Uh, uh, if you've uh, read Watchmen, the giant uh, castle uh, in Mars that Doctor Manhattan oh, made. Yes, uh, Kavir yeah. would have that. Yes. Sand. Meanwhile, with, like with the rats, like you know, yeah. Yeah. Red, Red's got yeah, a little he's like got a solid. Level. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He definitely has a tank Heart top angles. on. Yeah, he's a white tank top. Yeah, he's a tank top and board shorts. A hundred percent. He knocks over Red's. Sandcastle, yeah. and obviously he would be able to do that in a really cool way. It wouldn't just be yeah. that he uses his hands, like like it would be like the fucking horses on the river in the Lord of the Rings, uh, uh, <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring. It like all of a sudden they show up and just absolutely clobber the castle, <laughs> and he'd be like, "Don't worry about it," and rewind yeah. time and reassemble the entire castle. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Pike would be like to sunbathe. He'd be literally just like have his sunglasses uh, yeah. on and like lay down. He's got the he's and got be the smoking sun, like smoke. next oh, to yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'll turn like, over. Uh, he'd have like, like a, a pina colada. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's like, I side. am not, I am not going in the waves. Yeah. I'm Red, not. pass me enough. Beach episode <laughs> when? I'm not I, getting my hair wet. I actually <laughs> think what Kavir would do would he, like, rather than he might have made a sandcastle, but I think he would go surfing. Oh. I feel like Kavir would be the kind of guy, or like, yeah. he, he like, would love parasailing or whatever, yeah. but I think at the, at the time he like, would love like no, surfing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're very, very so. reminiscent of like when like sand surfing. Yeah, exactly, sand. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We can still go to a beach planet. <laughs> beach planet. Let's go. Gotta go to beach planet. Any beach planet? I'm gonna tell you right now. There better be a work? penguin person who's selling us ice cream. Yeah. That is oh. in my head canon of what is happening. But That's Kavir weird. will be scared. Um, and he'd be like, like, oh, Pike, get in the water. Like, nah, I don't do that. Like, you know, he's absolutely one of those guys. He has a towel, yeah. oh. and he has his sunglasses, and that's it. He yeah. just fucking sucks. No, he'd be, oh, uh, in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, in a minute. And he never yeah. fucking yeah. does. Yeah. Never never comes comes. Yeah. Is that a giant jellyfish? Oh, my God, Labouche. <laughs> <laughs> he's being pulled out into the sea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great question. <laughs> really fun question. Thank oh, you. Oh, um, man. All right, so now I'm on this piece. I just pick one of these. Yeah. So I think um, if you want to go with the club, the Spike Club versus I'll do this the Spirit. Beer. Jeff yeah, Dickey cool. asked an excellent question. We've never been asked this before. I think. What kind oh, of coffee do y'all enjoy in your breaks? This Fancy is the blends or the cheap one, stuff in one, bulk. Right? Yeah. Both. I mean, you could do whatever. I don't like instant but coffee, like, but other than that, cool. I am not a coffee snob. I am not. Um, I I prefer pot coffee over um, French press because mm. I just drink too much coffee. Yeah. A French press mm. is a ton of work for a sip of coffee. 
Well, for my a normal cup of coffee. Uh, yeah, fuck that shit. For normal people. No, and yes. one cup of it's coffee like for me cups, is three yeah. cups on the what you call it. The yeah. three cup line, that's one cup of coffee for me. So I will drink half a pot of coffee. I'll drink like, I'll, I drink about at least one to, to one and a half pots of coffee a day. Yeah, we we played a home game once where the the folks that were hosting us, they only had French press. They didn't have a coffee maker or anything like that. And so they were we would make the French press, and it was like you got to boil the water on the kettle, you got to wait, then you got to pour it, you have to let it steep, and then you do you the thing. You got to bloom it. You got to bloom yeah. it. And then, you oh. and then like Mike and I have our mugs, and it's like half a mug. Yeah. Half, half a mug. Are you guys good? <laughs> oh. oh yeah, thanks. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> I'm an addict in search of a substance. Let me have my coffee. There's a reason why every AA clubhouse and one of the roles of service is the coffee maker. I love that. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's the reason. Let me have my fucking coffee, please. That's very funny. Uh, that's very funny. Uh, but I like both. I like fancy coffee. I like we, you know, uh, we have a discount family party sized tub of Cafe Bastello. I love espresso. Um, you know. It's that Italian. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I can oh, yeah. enjoy fancy coffee. Costello is king. Oh. Um, I love cortados. If you're doing, talking espresso, my favorite espresso drink is a cortado what, what was your or question? a Gibraltar. Just what kind of coffee? What, do you like? Do you like cheap Cortados stuff? Fancy are stuff? Unbelievable. Yeah, they're unbelievable. Oh, uh, so I what used kind to, of coffee do you like? I used to really love. Uh, I enjoy flat whites for uh, flat whites a yeah. different answer. Yeah. yeah. Speaking uh, of uh, how blimey, the fuck do I connect? With? I also local local roastery, but I've always really enjoyed oh. Mayorga's coffee. Mayorga. Yeah. Um, that sounds yeah. wonderful. They used to have one I really, really liked, and they discontinued it. Uh, so I think it was the Roast Masters Blend. Raven. For me, if I can't get it on sale at Safeway, I'm probably not drinking yeah. it. Yeah. Four well, you saw the Costco. Oh, that's nice. the Costco and the and the boatloads. Ravens Inc. Uh, it says I'm working on a one shot inspired by my taste. Local ghost stories. Are there any local ghost stories that you think would make a good one shot? Um, <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about Maryland local ghost stories. There is a. I don't know any of them. In Frederick, Maryland, there is a ghost story where... It's always Frederick. This now gets there's, stolen from Frederick. There's a bridge. This is a lot of... Well, and Frederick's under the yeah. bridge is like this, kind of this tunnel yeah, or yeah. like drainage pipe. And they say that... I think it's the ghost of an old Civil War soldier. Oh, that's cool as fuck, dude. That, that died that's in the cool area, like haunts the bridge. Um, yeah, and I've always been civil war history in Maryland. I guess. Yeah, well, we're not far from like Manassas isn't too far away. There's a lot of like Manassas civil war ghost stuff. <clears throat> um, but none Ant other than Antietam. that. Antietam. Antietam. It's not far either. That's a, yeah. That was a big one. I prefer yeah. the Revolutionary War colonial ghosts. Oh, uh, you know what? I did. Uh, <clears throat> if you want a good date option, ghost tours. Ooh. Excellent date. Option. We did a fun ghost tour for we Halloween did, we did in a, Williamsburg. Uh, Williamsburg. I did uh, a date at the uh, the Alexandria. There's a bunch of ghost stories in Alexandria. I, I don't love, know how I true any of that was. Me too. Basically, like Fuck, there was allegedly uh, a house that George Washington owned because Alexandria was actually a very major. It was one of the biggest ports. Oh yeah. At the time, one of the biggest port towns on the uh, in the in the colonies, <clears throat> and George Washington owned a house there, and there was some woman who died there at some point. And that's I think that's why it was named Alexandria. Was because it was a big port town. That makes sense. Williamsburg is great because they colonial theme everything. You can't even like open yeah. a franchise there. There's like a colonial themed Starbucks and like a colonial themed McDonald's. Oh yeah, yeah. If everything you go right is off ancient. like colon if you get right off of colonial Williamsburg town, there's still like a little town center that's themed that way, and uh, the College of William and Mary's there. Um, and like what the college kind place. of maintains that colonial theme. Very charming. It's yeah, it's super. And cool. then there's the colonial themed sex shop. Yeah, it's yeah. called the Butter Churn. I think there actually is a sex shop. <laughs> I think there <laughs> actually is. Oh my god! I mean, not an actual colonial Williamsburg, but not that I would have looked it up. Never. <laughs> Why would you do that? That's well, I didn't look it up. Who, who I would just do that? Know you about you it fucking there. freak! <laughs> oh, oh, I almost fucking this freak! Over. Uh, the butter churn is very funny. Cocky little freak! Cocky little freak! Cocky little freak! I can't stop it! Hey, boomers. Hey, boomers, remember? Let, you should not know be if screaming. You, understand that reference. you should not be screaming. Uh, I can, well, this mic fucking sucks. I don't know if no, I, I put turn the gain up. Uh oh. 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 
Red Rogue, any advice for kicking off a full-on campaign? My party's been stuck in one-shot hell for a while. We'd love any advice as to how and where to get started. Start outlining a major story yep. and think of the perfect prologue journey that sums up and encapsulates the theme that could be a standalone one-shot and you never have to play it again, or it could be the grand beginning of a an epic adventure and then see how the party feels about it. Yep. I want to get a Twitch question from Purple Dinosaur. Go ahead, I, I might get Patreon question. tomorrow. Thank you. Gonna be a dolphin. Uh, Very serious and important question. If you were a dinosaur, what dinosaur would you be? Oh, so you know what? I've always been, my favorite quote unquote dinosaurs were actually the swimming and flying reptiles. Mm. So they're not Yeah, you were always a big like plesiosaur, I love pterodactyl. Plesiosaur, I love pterosaurs, I love mosasaur, ichthyosaur. I love all of the, the flying and swimming reptiles, but those are not dinosaurs. Do those count? If so, that. I think that counts. Um, my favorite dinosaur growing up was the Stegosaurus. Oh yeah, you were that right was my Stego favorite. Man. I've forgotten all the names. Where's the Stego Man? Describe it, and I'll tell you the name. It's the one that looks like a battle tank with a huge ass mace on its An tail. Ankylosaurus. That's a yeah, yeah that's Ankylosaurus. Yeah. yeah. I think I was just a T Rex guy. Yeah, I can see that. Someone like has dragons to pick the too, right? Yeah. yeah. Nobody yeah. wanted to say it, but everyone was thinking it. Yeah, I think um, it was T Rex guy. I always really enjoyed. I kind of like those uh, those little duckbill guys. What are those called? Something, something. The ones with the duckbills. Oh, and yeah. Then, what are uh, they called? I know what you're talking about. From a dinosaurs. And you know what? I like your brontosaurus, your brachiosaurus, your allosaurus. I like the long necked. Those are know, classic. Those, those are, are classic. classic. And, you know, but I prefer the plesiosaur. That's my favorite. That was my favorite. Which is not actually a dinosaur. It is not a dinosaur. But. They're looking down Raptors from dinosaur heaven cool. right now, being like, Blast "Man, Raptor, those yeah. names are way off." Yeah, that's really. Funny. Uh, I'm trying to think of what dino bots were really cool. Were, di were there dino transformers? There were dino transformers. Oh yeah, there. Beast Wars. All the Beast Wars. There's also were dino bots in them. Oh yeah, there was the, was the Decepticons. In. The dino were bots were fantastic, and they were usually side sided with the Autobots, but they were technically neutral. Uh, the only reason why they sided with the Autobots so frequently in the original animated cartoon series was because when they were awakened, wow. the Decepticons were usually destroying the planet. They were just there to defend the balance of nature. And so oh, often, I often, love that neutral, yeah, like, Druid the, the Autobots style. would show up and be like, hey, we need your help. Is that and me, Grimlock King? Yeah, Grimlock, Gr exactly. Me, and Grimlock King. Exactly. It was, it was one of my favorite things from the original animated series was that they were neutral. And then... Um, I'm going to pour myself some coffee. Uh, but the best, the best uh, Transformers by a oh, wide oh margin gosh. were the Constructicons. Oh, yeah, and you love the Constructicons. You could buy, as because of course they were invented to sell toys, you could buy all five or six of them the torso, the head. I think the torso was the head, so five, including the Where's limbs. Your and it's and you could and you could Thank have you. the actual like super constructicon who had a badass name. It was like the Intimidator or something. Hold on. That is pretty bad. Uh, I was born an Optimus Prime. They all they all can. Well, they that. could turn into their normal Constructobots, or they could turn into a he was super. He's a gorilla. He's a gorilla in uh, not Beast Dinobots, Wars. Beast Wars. Yeah. I, I also love just the, the fucking, Wars. The, the Devastator. Movie, the movie voice of Optimus Prime is so Peter fucking cool. Peter yeah, Cullen. Peter Cullen. The, he, he's been voicing yes. Optimus since the fucking 80s. Oh, yeah. yeah. God, that just gives me... So I, I, had, I had the Devastator when I was a kid, where you could take all yeah. of them and they actually assembled together. So oh. I, Mike and I were oh, animal that's kids. That's really cool, actually. Yeah, they were we never animals. liked trucks or cars or... Yes. Um, like trains. construction vehicles, trains. We were so on board with the animal stuff that when Beast Wars came out, holy fuck, it was like. And perfect. what's funny is I was just a little and the show older. Was great. I was just a little too old for Beast Wars. When right. Yes. yes. It was before your time. Yeah. And it or was after your time. Or yes, it was after, after your time. After it was after my yes. time for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah for yeah. that like age, right? Uh, the duckbill right. dinosaurs were hadrosaurs. Had yes, hadrosaurs. Thank, thank you. Did you create uh, And also thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Really appreciate both favors. Uh, Gargoyles was awesome. I'm just gonna snipe, oh, snipe a comment from yeah. chat. Uh, it's been a while. I haven't watched it since it was like airing on TV. So I need to I totally, really totally really miss Gargoyles. Yeah. Totally, totally missed it. You know what I watched while I was working last night? What? Mask of the Phantasm. 
Babbitt. It's it was like a great normally animated yes. series episode. Yeah. It, it, I I thought it was I thought it was a a, a much bigger production. But the fact the Batman. fact that yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah the fact that it was just and I, when I say just I'm using big big air quotes just a great animated series episode that took an hour and a half and had much more like characterization. It, it dealt with themes that they didn't have really the time fucking for. Awesome. Yeah yeah it was fucking great. Yeah it's it's and it it is and they made it as just a TV movie that was like a long version of. Of the yeah, I pulled, I pulled the, the music for a second. Um, um, and so then happens. the one of the producers saw the intro, and they're like, "Let's get this on the fucking big screen." And then I, that's why they made the the narrow version where they actually had to crop the top and the bottom because they originally animated it in four by three. And so the one in the oh, theaters was actually yeah. crop top and bottom, which is usually the opposite. Yes. Yeah. You can feel the influence of story choices that they made in the flashback Six, origin eight. story that they tell of Batman yep. for Batman Beyond. Absolutely. They they just Absolutely. yoink with yep. some some scenes are just like yoink. Well, it's one legendary to one. and like because it was a kids show and it was only like every episode was 22 minutes, 70 minutes or whatever it is, 65 70 minutes lets you tell so much more story. Yeah. Um, um I'm going to leave I adore it. and then I will be back okay. for I must use the restroom. Yeah, we'll but see I'm going to just drop, as long as we're feeling nostalgic, something that I haven't rewatched in a long time either, and along with Gargoyles and Transformers and all that stuff. But it was a, also a fun, if not manic, insane show. Invader Zim. Fun show. Mm-hmm. Invader Zim was very good. Um, I don't remember much of it, frankly. Terrible fandom, Feel but like great I show. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I remember liking it a lot. It wasn't one of my favorites. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't like really keep up with the lore. It's like, oh, it's on, it's funny, Richard Horvitz is great. Yeah. Wow. That was when he really became known and popular, was that, yeah. even though he was yeah. prolific before then. Yeah. Obviously yeah. with Angry Beavers. That was the lead role, right? Um, uh, I was a big, like, Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Uh, SWAT Cats. Oh, SWAT Cats is a classic. Yeah. SWAT Cats, and their opener that sounds just like uh, Ace of Sai from Iron Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. really yeah. Or like Tail Gunner. Or yeah, one of those Maiden songs. Uh, was it where, was it, is it where Eagles Dare? It's, it's, it's one, one of, of them. Or one Prowler, of, or something like that, yeah. yeah. It's it's one of the, one of the ones many that deals World with, like, War II, yeah, like, like, fighter like, songs of Iron yeah, Maiden. Yeah, fighter plane songs, yeah. yeah. It's crazy that it's like, oh, well, which one of the fucking five songs about World War II fighter jets? It's uh, like, uh, I think I th- so that's that's Where Eagles Dare, but I wasn't sure if that's how this this walk cast. I think it, it's pretty similar. I forget. It's either Where Eagles Dare or like weirdly, I can't get Tail Gunner out of my head. Uh, it, yeah, it, it might actually be closer to, to to Tail Gunner. Tail Gunner. That, that probably came out around the same time. That Tail Gunner. Yeah, um, he's a tail on that. that sky. Bah, 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 bah. Anyway, um, let's pull up more questions. Uh, I'm gonna complete this. Uh, while you do that, I'm gonna read off a Twitch que- uh, yeah. question. Chukles, 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 honk, chukles, chukles, or in English, <laughs> what's everyone's favorite type of takeout? I Chinese takeout. Oh, chi- uh, chi- chi- a succulent Chinese meal. Yeah. I I I, I takeout. Will, I will always pick oh, Chinese oh, takeout. I love Indian. Yeah, uh, I prefer to eat at an Indian restaurant than I love that. Chinese too. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yep. I prefer I to eat it in all you can eat in New York. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. 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 I'm yeah, going to yeah, level yeah. with it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I can't, I can't get one order and have it back. No, I need to. Yeah, exactly. I'm going right. to pay like $17 for lunch and then eat until I, can, I need to be rolled out of there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've actually really been into Thai food recently. Thai I love takeout. Curry. Green curry, curry um, masamon curry. Okay, here we go. Um, pad Thai. I love Thai. Uh, I love it yeah. all. Basically, <laughs> anything like South meat, Asian, meats and rice, Southeast meat Asian, Asian or East Asian takeout, mm-hmm. I'm all fucking about. I I, I just love it all. Um, totally agreed. Will this be legal? Uh, I want to snap this one off. This was an hour ago. Hopefully, Mini Cat, if you're still here. Hey, guys. Going to treat myself to Babby's first minis next month after Woo, finishing nice. my first draft of my MFA thesis. Uh, wow. Grats. Opinions about Sylvaneth. All about the aesthetic. I'm not anticipating I'll play anytime soon, but are they only really an AOS thing? Y- well, yes and no. Yes and no. So, yeah, yeah. you tell uh, the story. I, I have not been following the meta of Age of Sigmar, but uh, I know that when I was, they were quite good. Um, I mean, it's, it's a very well balanced. Right it's a very well balanced game. Um, Sylvaneth is it's 
A lot of it is only Age of Sigmar. It's a lot more high fantasy than anything in Warhammer. But a lot of the units, particularly the Tree Men, the Dryads, that's all in the Wood Elf Army, which is the Wood Elves are part of uh, the Old World. And so basically you could adapt if you kind of want to get into that old school vibe and utilize a lot of those Dryads. A lot of the Wood Elf models, I think, were originally in Sylvaneth until they removed them because they said, like, oh, well, we're going to just, just buy them for Old World. Um, and so... The, I, basically, you could utilize a lot of that theme and aesthetic of the dryads and the tree men and all of that stuff. So, great question, though. Great question. Uh, I'm going to layer onto that, but we can get back to it. Oh. Uh, or no, I'm, I'm, here. Get, I'm here. You're here. You're here. You're here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut out. Uh, sorry, my rule books were downstairs. So, <laughs> the thing about Sylvaneth is that it's, mo it's basically they took all the dryads um, from the wood elves and left all of the elves. Or most of the elves out of it. So I'm just checking. What else will probably be towards the back? That's high. Here we go. What else? There's tree kin. There's tree men. There's so dryads. If you wanted to play old world, your tree guys could be. Uh, you could have like the bug riders as like the glade guard if you want, which are like they they ride deer and shit. You could basically have the the bug riders be that. I think you could do a lot of counts as converted. There are tree men ancients, which are behemoths, and they're wizards. There are branch wraiths. There's definitely branch wraiths still. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, there are... God, there's a lot of elves you can't get anymore. Treekin. It's pretty bad. Um, and dryads. Yeah. Treekin and dryads, I think you can probably figure out. No, I think the dryad models are just basically the same aesthetic entirely. Damn. As, as, uh, as the old world. Um, did you see what I sent in Discord? No. I and they're tree men. So you can probably build, like, you can probably figure out how to one-to-one -one counts as, like, at least half of the Wood Elf units in Old World. Um, Billy Captain, Kaplan, sorry, uh, what's, what D&D race that each of you want to play but have not yet? Uh, Eric Kokro for me. Oh. Mm. I have the idea of... Good answer. And now I want to play a Knoll. <laughs> no promises. Oh, That's a good uh, question. Leonin. Yeah. Leonin. Yeah. I'm For me as well, times. actually. Oh, That's sick. Yeah. You, you, get, you can have this it. Is so um, good. I was saying, I got, a, <clears throat> I got an NPC coming up. Minotaur? Oh, let's fucking go. I think Minotaur for me. It, it, it didn't work for Poros, but I'm wondering if I can find a way to pull it off. I love to play a GIF. I love to play, I guess I have played a Loxodon. I just like sort of those big beefy <laughs> races. Yeah, you know, you're, that's you're just a, such you're a, a good game. That's you're a just, boy, right? That's just my thing. You know um, what I mean? Let's it's take a look. Let's take a look at the races. Um, and you know what? I I would love to play an elf. Yeah. I want to play a, a dark elf corsair character. That would be that's so, so I wanna, fucking cool. I don't cool, want to play a drow because there's so much baggage to drow, mm -hmm. but I would love to play an elf pirate inspired by the Black Art Corsairs of Warhammer. Yeah. Not like being terrible uh, xenophobic slavers or whatever, right. but like basically the general aesthetic of the of the, the Corsairs. I feel like that would be very fun. I think having an elf pirate's awesome as fuck. Yeah. There was yeah. a brief period of time in original Call of the Feywild <clears throat> when I wanted to, uh, when I would talk to Nikki about oh, putting Frost up. on a bus for a little while. I was like, I would like a break. I would like a six to 12 session pause. We can just put him somewhere and then Frost can come back, but can we find a narrative reason to do that so that I could play uh, another character? I just was feeling um, a you little wanted, You wanted to Sam Regal it. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, Tyrion Tarrington. Tyrion Darrington. Darrington, right. right. Yeah. And um, uh, at that point, I was inspired to play an Eladrin. I still have this inspiration of playing an Eladrin. Oh, I didn't know that. At this time, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. His name was going to be Tomic. 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 Oh, I remember the twist of Tomic, and we would <clears> never <throat> do it. We would never be allowed. No, no, no. Yeah, that was that, it. Was a it was a it was early time. days. That was it was a different days. time. Yeah, yeah. He'd be one of our those band character ideas. Um, Heron Gun yeah. would be a lot of fun. Love to hear what that was. <laughs> I'd love to play the Walrus in a more legitimate capacity. Oh, um, I mean, oh, absolutely. Jean-Claude. Jean, Jean Jean yeah. And Jean Yuanti. I would Yuanti love, I would love to cool. play a fucking Yuanti. That would be awesome. Um, Yeah, my idea is, I have an idea for, I've always wanted to play a Voltaire or Kokra. And... Dude, Prime? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was fucking good. I, I, can't, I had the idea, if we ever do a Weird West campaign, and it's probably too similar to Sarnax, but a grave cleric of a vulture or a coker, and I thought about this is probably too much to your grim now and probably too like ag- egregious, but a coffin on his back and like a fire and brimstone preacher style. <laughs> like grave. I mean, it's a classic grave Western digger, trope. Yeah, like uh, a grave cleric. To me, that would be so fucking fun. That's the idea that I've had for fucking years. Yeah, that's brilliant. Not a, yes, not that. like a, not a sidewinder you want to. No, no, no. That, I think someone else could play that character very well, but uh, Rattlesnake Jake, I think, uh, you know, I'll let someone else take that. But for me, the Voltaire or Kokra um, is just so Wasn't there fun. another shoulder? I need, to, I need to work on her Butte, which is an NPC. <laughs> her Butte. But uh, I was always very proud of that for um, a weird Wild West one-shot that I run. Um, that famously we renamed because it was originally called Far Canyon, and of course, our table being what it is, it instantly became Fart Canyon. <laughs> instantly. 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 Uh, it was our, within the first dinos, five minutes. Our dinos got to experience that. Yeah. But uh, her butte was a uh, rattlesnake-haired Medusa. Oh, as that's a sheriff cool. of a town, that's and she really was fucking cool. badass. Wore uh, oh my God. a really fucking sweet red dress, and and was the fastest uh, paralyzer in the West. I'll tell you. I would love to play a sheriff of a of a dust bowl town that was a cow person. Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh. A minotaur. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a minotaur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is the minotor sheriff. That's Time to bring idea. a little justice to the <laughs> Moon Mesa. <laughs> I think there is a Weird West campaign in us in the next five years. Okay, well, if that happens, Mace and I are the Wyatt brothers, but we're just cows. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I holy love shit. It. Holy shit, yes. Uh, Wyatt Earp and Morgan Earp, yeah. Uh, Earp yeah. brothers, not the Wyatt brothers, yeah. Um, Morgan, man. uh... I think Mace, you could be Wyatt, and I'll be Morgan. That is a very cool art piece that you shared in Discord, Derek. Right. I am in love with that shit. Yeah, holy yeah. fuck. That's so good. Uh, that's that's a dream. Ryan Bell. Next time the game does miniature painting, would you be able to paint your characters for one of your newest campaigns? It would need to see some minis for the character start of Scrapsody, or maybe even some lots on it for a silly mighty trunks diorama. I am going to yeah. get a target on my back. Yeah. Uh-oh. I am going to be Jeez. spicy. I Come am on. not particularly excited to paint D and D minis. Same. Same. That's not my to me, a bottle cap with a, a colorful bottle cap with a colorful picture on it Ironically. is just as good, huh? if not better for me in D&D. Um, Cause it has the badass art that we, you know, got yeah. commissioned. Like. And so I'm not super, to me, the minis that I like to enjoy are the villains it's actually and the monsters. Easier, it's actually easier to see. Yeah, um, player, characters, player characters, I'm not super, way. it doesn't excite me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously we should do it first for, you know, production. We should. But yeah. honestly, it's easier for the fans to follow the, to follow along. Well, it's what very it? obvious, even when it's in the bottom left-hand corner, like, oh, that's Poros, that's Kyle, that's Monty. Yeah, so. Because you're looking um, directly at yeah, something. at their yeah, faces, yeah. right? And their faces I'm are also on the overlay. I'm very excited. I'm very inspired to paint Warhammer miniatures. So that is my answer to that. Um... K. Uh, Lano Sox says, I don't have a question, just want to say thank you guys for making me smile every night. Wow. Thank you so much. Well, Pleasure. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Salmonie asks, what's your favorite, your character's favorite Britney Spears song? I really don't know anything about Britney Spears besides Toxic. Toxic. I was just yeah. thinking yeah. Toxic. That's all I know. Yeah. That's all I know. Yeah. Oh, oh, the baby, oh, baby, one more baby, one more baby one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's the, the uh, intro baby, to our uh, oh, yeah. Wish Light Wish abridged. Light. Uh, yeah, that's, that's Connor's choice. Hit me baby one more time, still slaps. Still a great song. Gunnervish asks, if you had the power to impose any minor inconvenience on someone, what would that inconvenience be? It depends on who it is and how much I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, don't know, I don't know how to say this. Caprice already answered this question. Yeah. Every time you get in bed, it's as if somebody ate a dozen <laughs> everything. everything bagels. <laughs> and you can't do anything about that's it. That's the best one. That's, that's my answer. That's yeah. too good. I'm just taking that one, that's too. That's too good. Uh, I mean, that's the, that's the idea, I don't man. think I'd mind that. No. Oh, you just, would. This is just a Tuesday. Every time. <laughs> I have so many like containers. I know from experience spice, I would seasoning. not mind that. I love putting everything seasoning on fucking everything. Yep. That's no funny. Pretended. That's it funny. Have so you gotten the, the everything seasoning shaker? Oh yeah, yeah. I, have, yeah I, have, I have like three of them downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, it's so fucking they, good. They originally th- started selling them, at least to my knowledge, at Trader Joe's. And I think uh, that is definitely a Trader Joe's. And they have like a they have a dip. 
as well. Oh yeah, every big dip. old like dip uh, that you can get. There, yeah, the, yeah there's, there's a hummus shit. that I used to get, where it's basically hummus with what? like garlic butter and everything, or garlic oh. sauce and everything seasoning, and it's so fucking good. Yep. Wow. wow. We have that, I think. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Um. So anyway, pulls up. Vote for minis or tokens. Uh, if go, go on over to Twitch and Nose has made a poll. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things, like, yeah, for me, I, I don't know why. It's weird. I, um, I get very much excited about monster minis and boss minis. But when it comes to PC minis, that's where I'm less uh, enthusiastic. enthusiastic. Yeah, like but, me personally, it's like, again, if, for, from a production standpoint, and especially if we ever want to like up our production quality at some, at some point eventually. Yeah, we probably should. Um, that's more of a priority. But for now, I think tokens work. And our shitty ancient Chessex battle map. Well, and maybe someone very passionate could contribute, right? Well, like we could talk to someone who wants to make the fucking like perfect minis for all of our characters. Yeah. And we could talk to them about our NPCs and villains. And that would well, be really cool to have a fucking shelf about. We'll get to a point where like Matt... My understanding from Matt Mercer in Critical Role, he doesn't really make all, all the boards anymore. He'll work with someone and say, hey, this is coming up. Yeah. I need this, he, this, this, he this. He stopped this. making the um, terrain before or at the um, uh, the Grog Showdown episode. Yeah. Um, eh. In the 30s or 40s. Um, was it the Lightning Fist guy? Uh, yeah, yeah, the Lightning Fist guy. What a great guy. fucking arc. And show. not only was yeah. it a great arc, but they did justice to how exciting that session felt at yeah. the time. That was when they were playing it like a fucking sport. It was sport. epic as fuck. He could have died so many times, and they yep. just scraped by their very fingernails. And of course, that unbelievable drop from the trinket ball natural 20 uh, axe dive moment was, you know, everyone was scraping. That was really cool. I think that's when he stopped actually painting and doing wow. that. But one of the most elegant sets that they ever had was the final fight against Vecna. It, oh, that was awesome. Uh, episodes like 114, 115, something like that. So fucking good. I... It's so simple, and then it sunders, and ugh. Campaign one, man. Just Mo movable terrain, folks. Box, box, if you're ready so to level up your DM game, have the terrain where the fight starts, and then have it start changing every every round. Ugh, that that'll put some hair on. If your If we chest. ever get to that point where we can like commission that, right? They would need to be local because I can't imagine that you can like ship that very easily. No, no, and obviously, like when you're in LA, right? There's all LA. manner of creative people. Yeah, creative, crafty people. Crap all well, over the place, I mean, you but... you land an incredible experience with the roulette, you know. Like, oh no yeah, spoilers, it's very like, much like home stuff like that. You know, like, little mini arts and crafts projects that we do is obviously fine, but uh, how the fuck do you? I uh, oh. I do that. Yeah, okay. for me, like I'm gonna make some iron drakes. Let's fucking as go. As a fan, uh, Vox Machina was just like leaps and bounds and Holy just the best. Uh, like by by. Well, ironically, miles. and I th and we talk about it on this channel, this but fan. I, I this think is, that I think that campaign one is the most successful because they were all the most archetypical, right? They all played their classes and they all had their own like like the bard. Sam Regal's bard is the bardiest bard that ever barded, yeah. right? You've got your yeah. rogiest rogue that ever rogued. He's got a fucking closet full of, of cloaks and he's got a bunch of yeah, the rangeriest ranger, ranger, is ranger, the barbarian is barbarian. Yeah, right, yeah. right, 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 right. The cleric is yeah. cleric. Yeah. The druid is but druid. when you have when you start well, you with the one guy who's like you know haunted by a demon and like shoots guns. Yeah, right? the yeah. gunslingeriest gunslinger. Well, no, I, I think Percy he's, is he's definitely a little. Percy the is the trope in. most close. Well, yeah. but he but he also falls into so many tropes. Um, he's faceted, meaning he plays wealthy, educated guy really right. well. Right? He plays well. Uh, that's haunted fair. and. Uh, I just think he's like, you know, plague doctor mask, like de like hunted demon, like ancient bullets. Like that's not, you know. Well, he had, and, and, he had and he had the taint going arc, on. which Matt Mark Mercer refused to tell them what the name of it was while they were playing because he borrowed it from uh, 3.5 or 3, oh. I think, and it was originally called The Taint, and it had, came with all these corruption names. That's really and they were like, they were like, you didn't let us know about The Taint? How could you? <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Um, Holy hell. Uh, Joy Fetters asks, what's your favorite D&D &D monster to fight? Apparently I become a prime target for every sheep in my campaign. Boar. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't really find... I can't think of anything I want to, that I get excited fighting. I just as long as it's narratively compelling, that's kind of the. I get excited about skeletons 
because I get excited about their vulnerability to bludgeoning damage. That's not in 5e. Yes, it is. You sure about 1,000%. That? What, do oh. you, what do you want to bet? Oh, they are not resistant to piercing and slashing like in 3-5. Right. That's right. Never mind. Right. right. No, no, no. Yeah. It, it, That's it, very but, cool. but the fact that you can do double damage to them because yeah. you're hitting them with true? a stick. Is that yeah. true? I'm gonna look it up. You sure? I'm I I one thousand percent confident. What I was thinking that they got rid of was the was the the thing. I, I'm wrong. I'm gonna look it up. That's what uh, they all say. John Fulmer asks. Okay. Damage vulnerabilities. Yep. Bludgeoning. Bludgeoning. Grand so, Elder Dragon Turtle. Dragon Turtles are amazing. I fucking love Dragon. That's turtles. just like one of my favorite enemies. Yeah. Very cool. I get excited fighting with uh, a dragon. Any dragon. Oh my really. god! Oh great. shit, look at him! Thro- look at that Hell thrusting spear he has. Yeah. yeah. I think that really came together. We should put that one next to the very first mini that I picked. My spear, Saurus. Yeah, Do you know my spear? Oh, he's up there. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab him. Uh, well, I'll ask, uh, the bit of general question, what's everyone's favorite moment of the whole of Vantra's journey? Uh, yeah. What's the, the whole, there's a bunch of examples. But basically positive experiences in like the whole of Vantra's journey. That's oh god. Or like you know, obviously we can never choose just one. But shadows over Gauntsmith. <laughs> yeah, boy. Mace's first session on the channel. Oh, day that's a great one. That's day a great one. Choice. Shadows uh, over Gauntsmith. Um, so the only time Mikey. I've ever played at Mikey's table. <laughs> Versus oh, the same the same uh, unit. The same. Uh, Let's get these on camera. I don't know if we can hear. Let me let me blow this up. Oh boy! So you look at the spearmen versus. Here's from what what year? Two thousand six. I painted. Yeah, why don't we drag this a little closer and we can just like get it more oh, top shit. down? These are. Um. Oh shit! Oh, shit. They're oh, all oh, tumbling. Boy. There are. I would say. I mean, I think that the the best moments for me is hard to choose. Um. The first six hours of the Crooked Moon launch. The final hour of the Crooked Moon final, final campaign. Final hour was pretty hours, the final hour of the, hours, of the, of yeah. the Crooked Moon campaign. Oh, Both of those are just the Gen Con live show. The Gen Con live show. Yep, 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 yep. I will never. Uh, the finale of Curse of Shadanya. Pretty fucking cool. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna choose a really like far throwback. Uh, but... Episode 52 of Prime. <laughs> oh, I've that, seen uh, that. Moonlight Requiem. Moonlight Requiem. Oh, Moonlight Requiem. oh my god, yeah. Uh, Wait, is that bump, 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 yeah. bump, 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 No, but is that the moment? That's the moment. That's the moment. That's the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just throwing it all out there. Hypnotoad. Hypnotoad. Oh, yeah. Hypnotoad was the first time we started having stacking prompts. Which which light prompts, right, are what we would call twists or... or um. Curses today, uh, and it was one of the most tired, uh, wonderful experiences I've ever had. Holy it fuck. changed. Um, Honey Heist. Trajectory. It's lost to the ages, but Honey, Honey Heist, Heist was the first time that we ever like really let our goofy flags fly. Yeah, and um, it was like, oh my god, there's something here. Um, what else? Um, being a guest at a convention. Uh, that was cool. Anime USA. Yeah. Uh, the first time, I think, was pretty wild. The Crooked Moon party at PAX was oh. pretty wild. Mm. That was, like, insane. It's one of those things, though, is that PAX was so unbelievably exhausting that, yeah. like, it's hard. Like, all I can think about is how fucking exhausted and, and like, ill I was. I think we were all just done. We're, I was just, yeah. Uh, it's hard for me to, like... What, what was that first, like, really big fan meetup? Was that Gen, uh, Gen Con? Con? That was the, Gen, the, Con? The Gen, Gen Con, Con fan meetup. That was nice. pretty yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, just Gen Con top to bottom. Gen but Con yeah. top to bottom, except for their shitty pizza this year. <laughs> the one time I'm eating fucking pizza at a Gen Con, <laughs> and they have the worst one. That's I was very funny. I, um, upset. What was it again? It was, it was like barbecue sauce. It was barbecue uh, sauce and, and, and oh, I didn't even touch onions. it. I didn't even yeah, touch it. It was it was not cool. corn or something. I don't it know. It was not good. Uh, one thing that I will say from in like a personal thing was um, I quit my corporate soul crushing oh. job mm. and Mike and I immediately went to Origins, <laughs> Origins. and like yep. it, it was this weird like I would say ascension so. from like oh we're not streamers like we can be publishers too Origins uh, it was unbelievable I remember when you answer. came back and uh, the confidence and faith that you had in your eyes. Like, I didn't even question it. Um, oh, yeah. It was such a wild, <laughs> you know, you know. It was such yeah. a wild juxtaposition. That was like a hero moment, like of, a hero's journey moment. <laughs> holy fuck, it is so that was much. fate touching. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. It was simultaneously, holy fuck, this is so much more work than we thought, thought 
but also, but holy fuck, we can do we this. Can, it's let's doable. Let's fucking go. Yeah, we let's can fucking do this. Go. So yeah. it was such a weird dichotomy. Um, and then... Speaking of faith, I just have to assume that this is all going to come together properly. If, if that 18-year-old person's still asking for advice, uh, don't be afraid of work. Don't be afraid don't of work. Don't be afraid of work. Also, I'm sorry. Mm. I hope you're, you're, you're... Actually, that was all on Patreon, so who knows if they, if they joined in yet. Uh, uh, live for yourself. Yeah. There's no one else more living for. Uh, don't let anyone make you feel like you need to live for anyone else besides yourself. That you need to make decisions about your anything about your anything life. about. Never make it for anybody else. Never make exactly right. That's my that's my that's other good advice. Piece of advice. That's the, how I live my life uh, every single day. Um, great answers, everybody. Thanks. Good shit. Um, Bum, 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 bum. Uh, for me, uh, I'm also just gonna have a honor, playing with honor shout Lillard. out. Uh, it's wild. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's wild. that's pretty. Breaking crazy. the pencil felt pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for me, that cool. was when I felt I had finally. Um, oh, we're catching up. We're catching broken up. through a barrier of, of DM mm. that I hadn't broken through, uh, that I've been trying to break through for years, and that felt really good. That's a personal one. Episode 10 of Stardust Raps. Hell yes. Yeah, that, was, that was nuts. Episode 10, Making Derek Cry. That was your pencil snap. Holy yeah. fuck. Um, I'll also say Cuttlefish Sweepstakes. And I'm going to say it to you after, like, off camera. But, you, you know. had not ever been in my, like, not really been at my table with me not doing something like serious like Icebound, right? Like, not that there aren't like, hard, harder moments, but have you ever been? Mm, you had, like you weren't in Mighty breakers. Trunks. Be, I was in Mighty Trunks. What other one shots have I DM'd for you? You know? I'm trying I to think. think. I got nothing? I, you, because at the end of the first one, you were like, you are a menace. And I was like, well, I'm going to fucking show. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I mean, that was just. That was really good. It was fun. I loved it. That, that was like a. It. That was also like a like a special. That was like lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Special first party. And I believe you know, we're like trying out to get. Of the gate. I believe we're trying to get two, three, and four out uh, at a weekly cadence. Yeah, so that's if, we're, the goal. if we're if we're doing it, then the goal. then we'll yes. try to get that out Sunday, mm. um, which means people can continue to enjoy that magical adventure. Oh, um, that is. Grocery sushi, grocery store sushi, yay or nay? Says oh, yeah. Mickey Falcon. Yeah. I've had amazing grocery store sushi. I have had awful grocery store sushi. Hmm. It depends on the grocery store. It depends on who's making it. It depends, depends on, on the when time. You get it. Depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends exactly on the, right. on the time. Yeah. I've had fucking delicious. Granted, like I probably was like also very hungry and probably wasted in certain situations. <laughs> but uh, from a certain I'd say yeah. I'd but, say I yeah. Mean, yeah. Mm. I, yay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sushi is one of those things for me where like I don't need it to be really fresh. Nope. It's kind of like pizza. Where it's like, it's really hard to fuck up sushi bad enough where I think it's gross and I won't eat it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I also all get like spicy tuna, right? Yeah. I'm not, I'm yeah. not getting California like, roll, I'm not getting right? like the oh. ones where it's like a, not getting a, the a finger and it's like a whole yeah. like, uh, yeah, I'm not Elon getting the whole thing. Roll. That's my jam. A I mean, eel sauce. Now I won't do, mayo. I won't do eel unless I'm at a restaurant. Oh, I'm not going to do oh. eel at a grocery store. Oh, oh I don't know, man. Well, I, I guess I'm just trying to think of whether or not I've seen it. Oh, yeah, actually, you're, that's a good point. I mean, I guess it's it's so often it is like your spicy. I say, yeah, I, I love I love you so much. And the much, worst but... food in existence. I would rather eat anything else that's technically food than this food. Bread and butter pickles. No. Oh. Sea urchin. Sea urchin oh. is the most oh. disgusting. I like sea urchin. Fucking thing. Really? <laughs> I as soon as it, go, it comes even close to me, I will vomit. I, oh. I, I, I can't even now? like watch you watch like eat it. Really? It is so Just bad. Base, Rich? Uh, Fuck the no, no. Charter. So we'll, this is what we'll do. We'll. Um, I like it. Where are we keeping all the finished models? Gotcha. Just put them in here. Um, we had another question that basically about what are we going to do with because there's, there's a lot of like non uh, oh, session God, streams cool. during the Crooked yeah. Moon or elsewise. Are yeah. we going to do? Are, are those going to be added to YouTube or are they on Patreon? That's a good question. How to um, find those? I don't know. Some of them are on Patreon. A lot of them we didn't record and are probably gone to the ether. Oh yeah, they're like um, gone forever. Some we did record, uh, but that to me that feels like Patreon content. Yeah, um, yeah. It's never, it's not something we would ever like upload. Yeah, no. It's uh, not. If we got an editor to like make a Crooked Moon highlight reel of like the first day and then the end, and with like he'd, like really snappily edited, sort of like the story of the Crooked Moon, that could be fun. That's pretty fun actually. Um, but that's super like low priority stuff there. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
Good stuff. Just kind of trying to catch up here. Uh, 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 okay, we actually might be like mostly caught up. Here. Wow. Uh, you know. Thanks for hanging, everybody. Especially thank you to our Let's, channel members. Thank you, channel members. Thank you, channel members. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, everyone who supports us. Um, Sorry, I've got to do a little scrapey scrapey here. I know some people can't tolerate because it. Because so. this, this peg is a little wide. Which player characters would be the best uh, babysitters and the worst? I think Lethica would make a terrific babysitter. I think Gideon would be a really good babysitter. I agree with that. I think that's correct. I think Gricko would be an awesome Tyshen. babysitter. Yep. Your child Tyshen. would be very All spoiled, of Mace's probably. character. Your Grim? <laughs> Just all of Mace's character. Um, <laughs> Honestly, Caprice all Caprice would make a character. terrific babysitter. As goofy oh, as he is. Back to Sarnax would arm them with knives and other weapons. Sorry, we've been so really small. <laughs> Toa. Toa would Toa, be a great Toa babysitter. Great babysitter. Jericho would be terrible. Uh, the thing is, the I don't know if Toa would know what to do in like an emergency. I think he would like, sh I don't know. He'd shit the bed. He doesn't wear well. pants, so he can't shit them. <laughs> you don't know if he wears pants underneath that. Yeah, you don't know what he's got going on. He's you got some drawings. They, 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 go, they don't go down to his ankle, they're not like, pants. If somebody pants. gets sick, like he... He might he, be wearing no, shorts. You're right. Like, do, like, you're right. You just make use of what's on hand. Like, I, f I feel like he'd be like kind of handy. Yeah, no, no, I, I think yeah. you're right. I think you're right. Chuckles would be awful. You, you sold me. <laughs> the kid is choking. I go into a battle trance. <laughs> <laughs> Come uh, back! Ooh. Um. Wind Fury Prox. Oh, that's very funny. Sarnax would be terrible. Go, go, go. Barnabos would be very good. Barnabos would be a great babysitter. Okay, awesome. So um, the kids would become extremely superstitious very quickly. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. We'll make sure he smashes those fucking eggs. Yeah, that's, nice. that's exactly right. Um, Casual Monster, curious if you guys have read any of the Warhammer books. I have not. I hear Black Library, which is the book, like the publishing wing, has some bangers. I've seen some like uh, some YouTube videos that summarizes them. I've seen some like monologues read, and it's pretty fucking Kino. It's pretty fucking cool ass shit. Uh, you know, but I'd love I, to read some of them. Uh, yeah. Lords of the Lance just came out for the old world. I've heard mixed things about Lords of the Lance, but me you know. too, me too. But like right now, I'm so into the old world that I would want to like keep what I read focused on oh, yeah, I agree. that time period I agree. or something older, right? Where it was the old fantasy uh, yeah. time period, before which is- Before the end times, before the- Yeah, so old, old, oh, for those that don't know, a Warhammer Fantasy before it became Old World, the timeline in this game, Old World, is actually like 250 years in the past? Yeah, um, like So that. they have a lot more leeway in terms of creative freedom and flexibility to write new lore, write new stories, invent stuff, and not have to like be so tied to all the lore that's come over the last 40 oh, years. Shit, I may have fucked myself really good. Um, <laughs> you can always fix that. That's a great thing about miniatures and hobbying. I don't know. You can always fix it. Seems kind of not fixable. Um, you're done. You're done, Derek. Time. It's it's over. <laughs> well, I don't know what to, uh, It's always fixable. Um, my fingers are about that. to blow off my hand. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> that's very funny. Um, <laughs> that's very funny. Uh, How do I... Uh, let me let's get read some more Twitch yeah, questions let's get here. Twitch questions here while I fucking glue this shit. Uh, what about initial D fans, Mikey? In terms of your anime brony questions, I don't Asian. know. I don't. That's I, just a film, I isn't don't, it? No, no. Is that a series? Well, there's there. Yeah, there's spinoffs. I don't know, I don't know initial D, so it can't be. Um, I didn't know that it was a. I, I, mean, I know I know film. initial D, but I haven't like seen it shoved in my face. So <laughs> dance and so, the vampire bun fans are true um, true sigmas. Sigma on that Sigma like, grind set. Sigma on that Sigma grind, grind set. set. Like Briggsy. That's very funny. Yeah, Briggsy. It Briggsy. is a show. Huh. Six seasons. Yeah. Wow. Uh, there was the anime film, which I remember. Yeah, I was about to. I was about to date I myself. Yeah. I remember when the initial D movie came out. What is it? What is initial D? What was the premise? It's a racing, yeah, like yeah a street uh, racing show. That's where uh, then in an, or, uh, racing in the nineties or running in the nineties. Very famous kind of anime song. And if uh, you win the from. race, you get to turn to all that, the other drivers that, and be that, like, that, suck that, this that, initial that, D. That, that, that. <laughs> I th so yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> Furby <laughs> Overlord, a thousand bits! I lied. They don't do that. <laughs> so you know it's impossible to hum while holding your nose? That's, a tr that's bait. That's definitely bait. <laughs> that's bait. I believe you, though. That's bait. I'm not going to try. Yep. That's bait. 
Uh, um, that's very funny. Thank you for the bits, though. Thank we you appreciate for the bits. it. We'll appreciate the bits. Furby Deja Lord also gives you five na, 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 uh, subs. Na, na, na. Oh, ten subs. Thank you, Furby. Whoa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Furby the Lord. Uh, what are some examples of themes? I love this question. Uh, I want you guys to expand, but I'm going to tackle it first because there can be themes that are extremely specific as the central idea of your story, and there are themes that overlap with aesthetics and genre. It's like theme and plot theme. And so as an example, a theme can be something like a concept, like revenge, or family, or mortality, right? Those don't imply a oh, style or aesthetic, oh. but those can be themes for a story. Or themes can be folk horror, gothic horror, uh, heroic fantasy, yep. science fantasy, eldritch the, horror, el cosmic, cosmic horror, horror, right? Those are also themes. And uh, the theme of Icebound is survival. That doesn't imply a style or aesthetic necessarily, but at a, as a su sub theme, there's kind of a pulpy action thing going on there. There's sort of a loose sword and sorcery sprinkling, mm -hmm. right? Those are, are more in the genre esque zones, but uh, survival is, a, is an example of a theme. Mm -hmm. I'll stop there. To Listen to everyone else's thoughts because I know that theme is important to everyone. I'm not sure what the context that we were talking about when that was, this was asked, but like you can also have themes in terms of characters, right? Where like mm -hmm. for Kremi, I'm trying to go for sort of a voodoo uh, con man vibe, right? And I think that's a theme, and that informs how I play Kremi, uh, how like the decisions that I make. Oh, um, oh, thank God. And that's more at the character level. <sighs> Good question. Great question. Uh, Echo, uh, do you have certain songs you associate with your characters? Mm. I have playlists and soundtracks. Yeah. Um, it was more for like Jericho. I'm trying to think of. I will say that during Prime, oh. um, before we played Prime, uh, back when I used to like listen to songs, sort of get into character, I would put on yeah. Orn's theme from League of Legends. Oh, that's very cool. And to very me, good. that's always felt like Rodex theme song. Is orange theme. Nice. I love that. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, Caprice has a very specific song that is my uh, Caprice anthem. I obviously have a playlist where I have most of the songs that I have Capriceified, um, but there's a uh, top winner, and I can't think of the fucking name of it. Holy shit. Um, God, I, there was like a time, uh, there's, what's the longest song song? Like, is it just called Ashes or Ash or something? That I feel like is pretty Sarnax and uh, Shepard. Uh, oh yeah, that's fun. I don't have one for Frost. I don't have one for Lethica. For Toa, I would listen to the Moana soundtrack. Uh, for yep. Gricko, just listen to Dad Rock. <laughs> that's basically. That's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever listened to any music that comes to mind for uh, my characters. Oh, uh, I associate "Good and Red" by. Um, the Midnight. By the Midnight uh, with Jericho. Mm. That is an association that I make. Hmm. That's very fun. Um, good good question. question. Jinx. Jinx. Cobalt Blue Waters, uh, do you have any advice for creating character design, what they look like? I have a character in their backstory, but their designs never sit right. Oh, man. Oh, uh, man. This yeah. is a great question. Buckle oh, in. wow, Rich, go for buckle it, man. Up. Go, uh, buckle If you've created the character and their backstory, my guess is you may not have gone through the Avantress character creation process. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, Big mistake. <laughs> Holy shit. What the fuck, up? What the fuck, you guys? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You may have fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen. Don't listen to us. Don't listen to I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What I would do? Leave. I'm kidding. Holy shit! That's funny. What I would do? That's the first thing I would that's do. That's very funny. Oh, that yeah. scratched the hell out of this. The song for Caprice was "Better Son and Daughter" by Rilo Kiley. Thank you, Tuna. Yes, that is the song. Um, thank you, Tuna. Uh, Tuna. 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 Um, if you watch Neon Knights, there's three episodes on the character, at least two. Episodes, I think it's at least three. maybe three, on the Avantress character Two creation four. process. We talked about it in our talk show last night. We talked about it in at least one or two of our Hangout streams in the last week or so. Um, but the most important, important kind of summary of the character creation process, speaking of theme, is to crystallize a theme that will be the core of your character. Uh, I have been famously, my, my, my spicy hot take that I uh, sort of 
uh, famously said during the Nights. She almost got mauled during a uh, Gen Con live show. Like yeah, that no, I and I, I mentioned it at Gen Con, and there was like a, there was an audible gasp from the crowd. That's very funny. Because this was a, a, oh, I was there for that. Yeah, you were there for yeah, that. Yeah, 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 and it was a character funny. creation panel, and I said <laughs> backstory doesn't matter. <gasps> oh, what? Yeah, and it's true. You you when you're making a character, Impossible. even with the art, throw out the backstory, delete. You don't don't like permanently delete it. Just get it out for of your now. head. For now. Set it aside. Put it on a shelf. Don't put the cart before the horse, as they say. Um, mm. And instead, the the especially with your question about art, you need to find what the core theme of the character is. And the example I always give is uh, Clayton, Professor Clayton Nazran was my character in Christmas Shredania, and his core crystallized theme is ambitious Victorian professor. Those three words distilled the character that I am playing as Clayton. And every single decision that I made from what he looks like, what his voice is, the decisions he made, everything about him, even his, his, his class, the spells that I chose, all had to point back and ladder back to that core crystallized theme. In our opinion, as a, as a group of friends and as professional Dungeons and Dragons players. And publishers. We, and publishers. <laughs> we believe that that makes the best uh. D&D character, the most effective D&D character, and we recommend yeah. uh, folks do that as well. Obviously, no wrong fun. Um, I think a lot of folks run into the to the the trouble of. Um, well, I think that what go ahead. Sorry, I'm gonna tell a real, real quick story. Yeah. Um, I back when um, we didn't have as much going on, and I was just doing sort of more mindless editing work for Avantress. I would throw on D and D Twitch streams, and there was one stream. I'm sure they've quit streaming. You know, I'm sure they quit years ago, but um, there was some channel that I saw, uh, and they had art of all of their characters. And it was cycling through, kind of like how ours does, right? And I noticed that every single one had a dagger kind of sheathed somewhere on their art piece. And as, as it was cycling through, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. They all have daggers. Maybe they're part of some sort of like assassin's guild where they all need these daggers or it's a, some sort of relevant piece that, because it's represented in the art for every single character. And I did a little digging. I think they may have had a wiki or something. And... There was nothing about an assassin's guild. And then I realized it hit me. It no, nice. it's just because in their starting equipment, yeah. they all had a dagger. They, For the art, they just drew what was on their character sheet. Don't do that. Whatever you do, do not ignore the character sheet as well. Put it on a shelf. Caprice doesn't have a rapier in his art. Frost doesn't have a huge fucking backpack. Frost doesn't have a giant fucking backpack. <laughs> you know, Rodic doesn't have a fucking crossbow. I'm going to have my priest kit on my art. And you can't stop me. Uh, yeah, my priest's kit. And yeah, ah. I know I've told the story I've a bunch, the face. but it's, the it face. perfectly articulates why, at least my philosophy on character art is that every obviously when you're either if you're the artist or you're trying to create a brief for an artist, you have to make a decision for every single square inch of the character. And how I put together art packets is exactly the same as the character creation process. Every decision that I make. For that art brief. We should probably do a tour. Needs to ladder back to that core thing. I, I would love to take some of our more successful, like, pa packets. And I, I think all of our character art is successful. But I mean, the ones where we feel like it was articulated well up front. And sure. didn't need a lot of iteration. Sure. Uh, I would Happy love to. to make that presentation during, like, one of our Patreon... Um, that's a perfect picture thing. That'd, that'd now, be really I, cool because thing. I think that it, it, it would be extremely healthy yeah. for you to see the packet and be like, oh... This is the level of specificity that goes into what we do. And if you want to pursue that or if you're inspired by that, this is how. Um, and just remember, backstory doesn't matter. The number one um, thing I think I will say yeah. to add on to character art yeah. is that if your character doesn't have a dagger on that character <laughs> art, then you've really lost the plot. You yeah. missed it. It's on your character sheet. Explore pack. You why have wouldn't, to, you, have to why wouldn't you have a dagger yeah. Yeah. if you... If, and I think it's our, just math. It's yeah. just math. And I think, and I, think that, I think one of the things I think that obviously you know when you're actually you want to have the you want to know where your character's from. And so Rich is using hyperbole to make the point where that you don't want to put the cart before the horse. And the I think that, so yes, the backstory absolutely does matter. It does matter, but it I, doesn't I, matter in terms of creating the character. The character yes, comes first, you then can, the backstory. Yeah, and so for mm -hmm. me, a lot of my characters, uh, I'll have that loose backstory, but then then as I'm playing, it kind of helps flesh out where that character comes from. And I think, I, I always kind of akin it to where I think that it's very easy to fall into the trap of a lot of, it's, 
What the hell is that? Do you all hear that? I think it's a scooter. Did you guys hear that? That's an electric scooter. It's an electric scooter outside. I think it's a a bag of coyotes. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) yeah, fucking. It's a guy going, a fucking bag of coyotes outside. (laughs) Holy shit. Uh, I don't know if they can hear that. It's the coyote cop. Did you guys hear that? Run. Did you guys fucking hear that? That was weird. People heard that. They heard it. Oh, wow. They heard it. What the hell? God, these mics are. What? Streams hot. Yeah. Um, I think that, so the way that I kind of see it is that the. The analog, I always tell people as a DM, don't spend 80 years writing out the lore and the history of your kingdom and all of this because your players aren't going to care and then you're going to feel really bad. And I feel like (laughs) the idea of coming with fun, cool concept and story and backstory for your world and focus on that is on the player side of it is writing your 10 page backstory. You have your character, you have your OCs, and all you want to do is kind of write out this big, long Thing and that's that can fine. be a fun exercise. Mm-hmm. Do that. It's a great exercise. Oh well, they had, I, this is their family I, tree. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that it's very important. Like to to think of it as it is less important to understand what your character has done, and than it is to be able to have the filters to understand what your character will do. Yeah, right. Because yeah. that's what you're gonna do at the table. Yep. You're not gonna you're not gonna sit there and recite your ten page backstory. You're gonna sit there time in and time out, and you're gonna make decisions. Your that choices move. will matter more. Y- your than choices than. will matter so yep. much more. Yep. Um, the you're example, gonna just move forward, and you need to understand. You need to know. Yeah. That you need to be applying the correct filters that will allow your characters to make consistently. Character based is a very good important consistent uh, that's a very good character based choice I I like the example because because rich has talked about backstories uh, not mattering and when I heard that take I immediately agreed um it makes perfect sense if you've been playing at our table for as long as we've been playing at our table um but here's an example here's a here's a hard example you don't need to know anything about Han solo when you meet him in the first movie. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, how did Han Solo get his boots, Gary? How did he? How, <laughs> why how did he have it right here? Where oh did the God. ship come from? What planet is he from? Where did he get that handsome why, I, What's his relationship with Chewbacca? How did they meet? Where did he get those dice? I have a hot take. I have a hot take. Okay, Mikey, hot take incoming. Oh God. Woo, woo, woo. Warning, woo, warning. Woo, Mikey, hot take coming. Get down. <laughs> so, so. Oh boy. Um, up. The. The the, the Han down. Solo and the characters in the original Star Wars trilogy, the people who play D and D, the people who play D and D come in with who their characters with are first, what the archetypes are, what the themes are, and starting on that, they you all are the 1970s and 1980s George Lucas. The people who focus on their backstory and their 80 page backstory, you're the Wikipedia. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Brutal. Brutal. I'll finish my story. <laughs> and the EU the of the 8,000 of. Hey, remember that back to that background character who got one half second of screen time? <laughs> and he's got 80 million years of story. We know what planet he came That's from. We know what funny. he did. We know his tragic story. We know how he died. That's, very That's how funny. it is. That's the Mikey hot take. Take that shit to the bank. I and 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 prove me wrong. It's just like I'm sorry, JoJo fans. I'm sorry, all of us. <laughs> JoJo, I got, you're I got a, JoJo. Oh, I'm out for blood. You're burning I don't on know JoJo. Why. I don't know. I'm has so many people are unsubscribing. They're getting rid of Patreon. Okay, that's all. I I interrupted. The, I, the, point, the point about Han Solo is you. What do you know about him after yes. that movie? He's roguish. He's brave. He's uh, uh cocksure. Right. He's yeah. skilled. He's, he's very confident. good at what he does. He's yeah. overly yeah. confident. He is he's skilled, right? There are qualities that you can t- say about Han con, Solo man. without saying what his background story is. You don't have is. to know that he's from Corellia. What is You don't need to know about Corellia. You don't need to know He had a hot girlfriend and they served a worm. Didn't you know? And didn't you know that there was a, a, a an alien in space? You don't even need and to an know what he robot? looks like. Or what his role in the story is to know his character. Film. Or why he owes Jabba the Hutt. You don't need to know the specifics. When you, right. And that is what Holy makes a good shit. character. And that's also true for character art. You need to be able to look at it and see through the silhouette, the posture, and the small choices that, that add up to the make the, so the whole uh, uh, greater than the sum of its parts. Holy fuck. You, when you look at the uh, art of Monty, I don't think that I need to fucking say a thing for you to, to nope. have... All of the information you need. <laughs> My holy and shit! Thank you for summarizing that. Thank, to, to that su- is honestly maybe the sum best articulation up, of that point as the Star Wars comparison. To, su- it, to sum it up, yeah. 
you should be able to look at a D&D character art piece and know just about everything about the character. You guys have always said you can look at a character and hear their voice. Yeah, yeah you know? we do the voice test. Yep. We've yeah. never said this on stream. That's a really good but one. But if, yeah, sure. if I can look at it and be like, I can good hear promise. myself coming out of it, I know my character yeah. art is correct. Yeah, yeah. Right? I can exactly look at Gideon's right. character art and <laughs> she's about to be a little more stretched out. No! <laughs> 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 that's Patreon content! Session <laughs> zero! <laughs> Session zero, Patreon! Oh, 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 oh. Forgot that the cameras were on. <laughs> <laughs> he was still getting his sea legs with oh. that personality. Hey, you can't sit with us. We're waiting on somebody. Yeah. Uh, oh. one of my, my favorite jokes. Yeah, of all time. no, Mace just Holy immediately shit. slid into Gideon. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, Holy it was like going fuck. home. You yeah, know? it really was. It's like you're born to play that character. Um, just Jeez. putting on your favorite. One pair last of pants. point that I'll say is uh, because I've seen it happen yeah. in um, campaigns that I've DM'd and just I've seen it across the board. And in an actual earnest way to kind of talk about what we mean is like obviously there's no wrong way to play D and D. Of course, we're not. just talking this is about our style. Narrative. And I think the danger that you can fall into if the priority is on the backstory, and not about as the first and foremost and the kind of the eighty page backstory and lore, then it. I've seen it, and, and obviously there are people who can separate it. But then you run the risk of becoming bored with the. Campaign and the, the story, plot. Yes. the plot, oh, and it's not addressing your backstory. Because yeah, if like, you don't know who your character is, independent of the backstory of where they came from, then they can't go into the adventure knowing how they would react yeah. to any situation. So, like, well, I'm bored. I don't know how my character would react to this because it's not about me. It's not about my backstory. I don't yeah. know how it would act. The and I feel like you, you could great. get you could get yep. a little bit in your head, you yep. know, like, yep. oh, why why aren't they referencing Ooh. me? Is he hate my story? Like, why is my DM hate me? You know, yeah. like when it's just yeah. like you, you gotta before before a DM even sees any backstories, you know, they have they have some kernel yeah. of a of a plot of a story to tell you. You know what they're gonna do? Put everyone's backstory in like really really intricately immediately. Yeah, I'm like, like, looking for my half sister assassin. It's tough. <laughs> oh, sick! By the way, I have a. My father was a demon and my mother was an angel, but I'm all trash. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's really fucking good. That's, that's an Holy shit. I don't care. I don't care what you do. That's my fire. That's my fire. That's my no, fire. I was going to say that's actually oh. Glove Shitto's origin story. Glove Shitto. And I'm also a secret dragon in disguise. And the reincarnation also, of a goddess. But also, but also, uh, yeah, yeah. And also yeah, the, the high yeah. ranger general of, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you guys have watched the Dota anime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, oh boy, oh, boy. I can't wait to play that character, folks. Um, oh, man, that's funny as fuck. To, and, right. and, and the, the yeah, we're, we're going to let Mace go. He has work well, very early in the morning. Mm, when, yeah. Whenever you whenever you. What do you got? Let's show off. Let's show off your, your show and tell here. Oh, I, get, oh, I, in, I put him oh, in there. Look yeah, at him. Man. You got a one Saurus more, warrior. One more for the road, everybody. I don't know how you're going to rank. That guy's got to be on the front rank. I guess he's a champion, so he has to be. Oh, yeah. God the champion's damn. always in front rank, baby. That is a big ass spear. Uh, wear your 3D goggles and you could be stabbed by this spear at home. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. I got a lance. Oh my gosh. Look, oh, wow. look at the size of that fucker. Fight me honorably. Oh, but I can't use it in close range. I gotta I gotta run up to it. <laughs> Gerald, I'll be summering in the Hamptons with Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak sorry now. Where do you summon? Fuck. Yeah. Where yeah. do you summon? Oh man, that was funny. I have comprehend languages. And I have it too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. I get it. That's very funny. Oh, that's very, very okay, funny. Okay, Mace. All right. Thanks for coming Thank out. Thank you for coming out. I'm going to yeah, pack up slowly, though. So okay. feel yeah, free to yeah, just yeah. keep going. Okay. We're, yeah, we're, we're going to keep going. going yeah. but thanks. We're going to keep going. This thanks. was awesome. I would do this a ton more. No, well, you're always time. welcome. You're always welcome. You you have enough <laughs> lizards uh, for days. And there's actually another pack with actually a whole. I really want to be that frog guy. I mean, I, obviously, like you yeah. know, the baby uh, steps. But I want to get that. Well, no, I don't feel comfortable. But I'll uh, get there eventually. You know, he's a, I mean, it wasn't like he's a slan or slan. Is a slan? Slan. You right? know, I feel like it's not like. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe that was that was like not too bad. And it was. I think total it was like seven pieces or something. But yeah, no, no, no. you got this. If it was like you know, if the toad guy is like really complicated, it's a lot of moving parts. Like. Maybe maybe that's way. No, hard, I don't think so. I don't no, think, no, no, no. I, if I think anything, it's just more. bigger. If yeah. it's bigger, it might even be easier, right? So like, it might even be harder. Yeah. I just wanted you to learn the ropes on just like a, an no, for trade, sure, right? yeah. for sure, yeah. yeah. And that yeah. was, I think that was like, you know, 
It was very cool. It was low pressure. Yeah, 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 exactly right. And it's crazy, even though there was like fat frogs sitting in a chair, like in the lore, they're like the most powerful beings on the on the planet. Yeah. They like literally have mastery of like magic from the stars. And space and, they, and time. They're literally like more created. <laughs> yeah. It's boss Ness. If he was created by the Elder Race to be a weapon to destroy demons. Yeah. Like that's, what, what, oh, that's, that's not cool. boss Ness. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Misa bomba na boom. I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I do it. I don't know how I do it. Ryan Blessed is just a blessed He's a god treasure. You know he voices Grom Brindle in Total War Warhammer? He really does? He voices Grom Brindle. That's why it's so good! Oh my god. the voice actor of um Ramsey Bolton, Reese. I, Ewan, mm -hmm. Ewan mm -hmm. uh, voices um, mm -hmm. Rikarth. Rikarth. Yeah, the the Beastmaster, the big Beastmaster hero mm. of the Dark Elves. So that's very fun. Mm. God, that is, that very is fun. funny as fuck, dude. Man, we really fun. went off. We went off on a tangent. Uh, on a tangent. We went off. That was a, a long answer, but hopefully that was helpful. Yeah. I don't even know. If we were, uh, we were Quote the Raven. All. Are you guys considering doing legacy characters or characters that are descendants of past characters? I mean, uh, I've already done it in terms of NPCs. Yeah, you have. You have. We don't want to get. I don't think we ever want to get too into the. Um, like I'm the descendant. It's like all uber connected. Well, so like, um, and again, I, I am not caught up with campaign three at all. But my understanding is that some people have in for critical role for critical role for critical role. Sorry, campaign three critical role is that allegedly. A lot of the plot is just, oh, it's this character, oh, it's that character, oh, it's this character, oh, it's that character. I think we want to make sure that, like, whatever we do, we'll never sort of lean too hard on past campaigns. Um, we still have tons of crossovers, right? But I don't know if I would want to be, like, unless there's a legitimate story reason for it, I wouldn't want to play the Descendant We'll be anybody. playing uh, Witchlight. Good night, Mace. Good night, Mace. We'll Thanks for getting soon. the succulent Chinese meal. <clears throat> Thank you. Things. We'll be playing Wishlight, and we'll be like, oh my gosh. It's the grave of the great Toa Kamanui. <laughs> oh, oh, he died. Oh, and then my spirit shows up, and he saves the day. Toa, like he gives you're here. Anyway. Stop throwing shade at me, Rich. For Beneath Dark Wings. Yeah, you know, that's how it goes. I, I hope to do I tried to do it tastefully. Hopefully it No, was. I think you did. I hope it was tasteful, but I may have fucked up. Tunar asks, Richie, how did the taxes go after all? Aww. Um. <laughs> oh, boy. They I don't great. know if I can answer, honestly. Uh, what I would say If is, you're the IRS, they went really well. Nothing went wrong. L let me just say I just bought that a new guitar. <laughs> for anyone that has been an entrepreneur That's very funny. and owns a business... Um, I think that there is a, a a viewpoint and a an opinion on our tax code uh, that others will not share. Um, so I probably have a pretty unique opinion on it, and that's all I'll say. Well done, Rich. Well done. You've already Thank said you. too much. You've said so much. <laughs> hey, King Schulmeiser, how close are we? We are so close. Um, <laughs> so what, what I will say is that yeah, we are so close to something. I don't know what it is. But we are so close. We're so close. Chat, where's 47? I need to know where 47 uh, is. That's two. That doesn't work. That's not 47. <laughs> that ain't even close. Um, uh, favorite piece of clothing or accessories? What do you wear for good luck when playing or ritually wear on play day? The only... Well, okay, two things. So I have a hoodie that I always wear for Yornir, if I can find it. Oh, yeah. I now have a shirt that I always wear for Rhett. It's like a workman shirt. Um, and for Toa, I have an outfit, or at least, um, I have, like, a necklace that Mike got me, and a turtle pendant that an anonymous fan, which we still don't know who it was, got me before we even oh, had yeah. an audience. who was that? Who knows? I anonymous found, fan, it. please reveal yourself on the big gift package. Uh, Lufty's mug is tankered is tankered. in the backdrop. They gave, they, they gifted Andy a knife! And they gave Andy a huge knife. It was yeah, awesome! Yeah, yeah, that fucking knife, It was Holy fucking shit. badass as fuck! And usually I'll do my hair in certain ways, depending on care. So like for Briggsy and Rhett, I always put my hair all the way back. For Toa, I do a top knot with hair down. For uh, Yornir, I do the, it's not a top knot, but I pull, I, I do sort of a Ned Stark style thing. It must be nice to have the hair options. Yeah, no, it's great. It's awesome. I can't do shit. I need to get some wigs. For Poros, I keep my hair down. Uh, Kremi, I just sort of mix it up. Um... Um, for me, I used to do that, but now I'm like, 
I'm old and fat enough where I'm like, I just want to be comfortable. <laughs> I just want to be comfortable. I'm kind of... Uh-huh. I'm trying to think of any running theme of anything that I've done besides, you know... I, I did suffer for my art for Sarnax and those fucking nails. That's true. Uh, T- talk about shoelaces for a little while. <laughs> that was... That was very... What about shoelaces? You not you stopped wearing uh, uh stopped wearing contacts. No, you stopped wearing shoes. Oh yeah, I don't wear. I I re, I, I refuse to wear shoes with with laces now. I, I don't. <laughs> I, I I hate that shit. So if you have good recommendations for comfortable and presentable slip on shoes with no. Are, are my slip ons still working for you? Which ones? My recommendations. Oh yeah, they're good. Okay. They're good. They were not good for Magfest because the like my feet started hurting a lot. Oh, but they are okay. not meant for that much walking and standing. That's a lot of walking and standing. Yeah. So uh, I just gotta find a brand like my old boots. They fucking were great. Um, and so I should have brought boots, but I just you know I'm just stupid. Here we are. I'm a stupid Salazar. I'm a stupid, stupid guy. Um. Good question. Um, um, Entropy. I've spent the last month completely absorbed in Witchlight and Stardust. Woo! I'm completely caught up. I just wanted to say I've had so much fun watching it. All my questions. Have oh. you listened to the old Gods of Appalachia podcast? I believe Derek has. Yep. Uh, I've watched to. I've listened to quite Sounds a bit really of it. Cool. Um, it does I, sound cool. What? I I that lost the plot of it. Um, that after sometimes. a dozen. Uh, because I was trying to listen to them in chronological order, and it started getting into a very start and stop place where I was really, really excited about a thread or plot line, and then they'd be like, we'll be back with that plot line later. But for now, here's a new thing, and I might get excited about that, but it happened so frequently, and I never felt like there was a conclusion or a catharsis. I see. So the origin stuff, like the first one, is so fucking good, and you create this huge amount of momentum, and you learn about all these characters and stuff. It really is terrific, and it's so uh, well-produced, performed, and written. I just wanted to get more endings and have more uh, reveals, and perhaps uh, that comes later. But I lost momentum before I got there. I, I love right. how you perfectly described uh, the D and D streaming group Legends of Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. oh, fuck, fuck! Oh, we've been exposed. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, oh, that time campaign. Pro- yeah. Oh, how does that end? Nah, uh, we'll come back to it later. Fuck no! It's real yes. life writes the story sometimes, folks. Uh, uh, devastating. Who has the most watches? Probably Mace. Almost certainly Mace. Mace is a big fashion guy. Oh, yeah, fa- he, uh, he I'm the fashion. opposite of that. I do have a watch that my dad gave me. I don't know where it is. Um. Oh, super chat. Five dollar from Zana. Oh my god. Zanus. Xanthus. Xanthus. Mikey, thank you. check out the shoe brand. Kizix, they have a lot of professional looking styles. You'd never be able to tell their slip-offs. Hell yeah. Kizix, Kizix. 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 Oh no. Oh no. Our kid picks, boomers. That's what I'm saying. Holy shit. That's what I'm saying. Everyone in the 30s. I, because of our lovely mods, um, tuna and (laughs) cheese, I went down the Putt Putt Saves the Zoo rabbit hole. Oh, Oh, that's always fun. And I gotta say, it's pretty fucking charming still. Even though it's, it's very charming. It, you know... It was just a, it was such a good time. It was a good time. I saw your tweet, and someone said that oh. <laughs> you asked, "What did you ask? If you like boy bands?" Oh, so you like boy bands? And who's this? And I put a picture of the topiary creatures from. Pop yeah, and someone responded, like, "Topiary creatures." Uh, Next question. Oh my god! I'm like, well, good just, job. Just Eight, fucking dumpster that question. I don't believe you. Holy shit! Derek what? says men knit, but I've been hand sewing a quilt during these hangout streams. That's awesome. Bum bum. Hell yeah. That's awesome. No, no, no. I, uh, Transflare, from the beginning, from uh, the bringing up of fanfics, is there any that you have read, if there's any favorites? I would never pick a favorite. Uh, same. Yeah, we don't uh, pick. We, we, we but don't. I have read many. I will say that the themes, what I love about fanfictions, are one, and I love all the AUs, and I love people's individual takes, but my favorite uh, style are the ones where when the characters are written and they feel to me like the characters, yep. but it's in scenarios that we didn't live through. Yep. Where it's almost like we can only do so much and tell so many stories gathered around the table. Fan fiction is an opportunity for those same characters to exist in other scenarios that will never happen yep. on stream. Yep. That's what those are my favorite. And that was always my favorite thing of like even like when I was reading fiction fanfics when I was like young. When I was like, you know, a yeah. teenager, right? I'm We're like, a little bit. Um, I always, even back then when it was narrative, I hated the fan fictions. Like, it was really like, 
when they were really off character and off model and it wasn't or you know they weren't they, they weren't believable and it made me feel like I'm like what the heck is this this is weird but when you found a fanfic where like oh my god they got the characterization yeah. perfectly and if you're just a, a starting writer and you don't feel confident enough to kind of build your own character world start with fan fiction yeah. and figure out can you nail the characterization of the characters that have already been written that's a great starting way to get into writing and narrative and characterization oh this so. totally feels like Duo yeah, Maxwell. When it feel, when it yeah. totally feels like these characters, to me, that's really successful. So, you know, but I would never pick a favorite. Uh, do you have any more Patreon ones? Yeah, 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 let's, yeah, yeah. Let's knock some of those out. Yeah, let me just pull them off. Unless we miss any Super Chats, which okay, I don't think we hopefully did. Hopefully not. How the fuck? Oh, real quick, Foul Dragon, six minutes ago, 200 bits. Um, do you guys do podcasts for your campaigns? What platform are you on, uh, and where should I start? <laughs> we so suck. we currently only have Curse of Shadanya and Pat podcast form. The entire yeah. thing is there, though. We suck. It's on all podcast formats. Um, if you like to listen, you can listen in podcast format all of our campaigns. You just have to do it on YouTube Music. Um, so technically, podcasts of all of our campaigns do exist. Oh, that's right. It's on YouTube Music. It's just a lot of folks don't like YouTube Music. Um, we are going to get more official podcast versions um, of our campaigns up in the next, I will say, three months. Oh, wow. Uh, that is my are, aggressive timeline. Because we have a lot going on. You are and I got a fucking business to run. So, yeah, I, you know, yeah, we got to figure that out. We got to figure that out. But anyway, um, it's, it's one of my higher priorities. Uh... Along with everything else we have going on. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of priorities, and so we're trying to, uh, we're really trying to... Oh, first time chatter from Gary Kong! Hey! Gary Kong. Yeah, uh, so go to Gary Kong if you have the means and the ability. Uh, we're going to be at Gary Kong. Gary Kong Live! Uh, is that Garner? I hope it's Garner. Is it's Garner. Garner. Hey, Garner. Excited for uh, Saturday. Excited for Saturday. Yeah, we'll see you. I have a character that I think is going to survive the whole thing. Uh... But, and Chaotic Good Gaming. Check out Chaotic Good hey, Gaming. Hey, what's up? Uh, and it is, uh, we, March is going to be insane because we're going to Gamma Expo. Early March. Early March. And then we have Geary Con. We'll be in Wisconsin for like Mid to late March. Days, yeah. Mid to late March. So March is going to be insane. Crazy, crazy, we're crazy. We're going to try to make sure that our content stays something. But, you know what? It sucks that January got so fucked by COVID. And then in March is going to be like crazy travel and cons, uh, conventions no. or conferences. Yeah. So. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh oh. That's so cool. Uh oh. What? <laughs> Holy shit! You got to cut that thing off. No, no, no. Oh. I don't. It's it's. Oh, because it'll snap in. Look, it actually. Oh. Look, look, push it, push it into that little hole. For right those there, that are new, we're, we're building feel, more feel hammer miniatures. I don't, I don't want to talk. No, 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 no fun. Do it. Do it. Do it. Snap, snap that arm in by um, pushing and it's just, the, it's, the it's chain chill in. content. Oh. Uh, so Garner, I hope you're me, doing it well. Me, it just took me 15 minutes to figure out, and I was like, "There's no." And join us on Saturday over at Gary Con Live. Oh, I'm not gonna do it. No, no, no. I'll watch you do it. Uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. ish. Right here. Yeah. Goes into uh, and it's for charity. Oh, so get your bits right. ready. And so once, once get all you get your bits ready. Hole, I mean, it, it uh, we're in Wisconsin. Bits. Say what you uh, will. Fucking perfect. March. Say what you will about mid to late March. Look, their miniatures. Look, look up the dates for Gary Con. Never think that it would just snap in. Yeah. I'm sorry. But yeah. Look, look, it's so good that I don't even have to. Yep. I can turn it upside down. Yep. It's how good yeah. that is. You should still glue it. But yeah. You should still glue it. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna. But that's so fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Games Workshop miniatures, man. They're incredible. Not sponsored. Uh, not sponsored. No, no, no. We just. Sorry, right, I just products. lost my fucking mind. I've been doing this for like 10 minutes trying to figure out this arm. Um, unbelievable. Amazing. What was the question? Oh, so yeah, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to do the best. Obviously, we are kind of built, spinning up a game publishing uh, studio as mm -hmm. well as our production studio. So we're just trying to do our best to balance all of that. Uh, our, yeah. So our producer of the Crooked Moon, Kalisa Teague, has been amazing in helping us start to balance that, and we got a lot of balls rolling. So. Yeah, we'll be in Lake Geneva from March 16th to March 24th. So that's a yeah. long time. Long time. Yeah, that's, both, we'll be at both Founders and Legends and Gary Con itself. Uh, thank you, Garner, for for putting. I uh, cannot that fucking chat. wait. It's going to be such a fun time. Kevin asks, Kevin Cohen, do you believe the Avengers character uh, creation process only works if everyone else in the game does as well? No, I would say no. No, absolutely not. I would say if everyone does it and everyone follows the same kind of like general style, it'll make the campaign and the interactions yeah. better. Yeah, that's um, the truth. But you can always do it yourself, and you don't, you know, you, you just, you, you inhabit your own character and how you want to do it, so. Scraping coming. Um. Oh. 
Oh my god, Sloth with ADHD. $50 tip. Oh, Good god. Whoa. Woo! 16 minutes ago. Hopefully you're still there, Sloth. Jesse. What a legend. Uh, seeing you guys do these mini streams has rekindled my own mini passions and started back working my 40k army. Let's go! I've yeah, successfully glued all my fingers together. Thankfully, text to speech still works, and I use my nose That's to make this funny. Do you have resin and metal kits? Because super glue, like I love the now, plastic. All the 40k cement. is plastic. It's got to be. I was gonna right? say, unless you're playing, unless you're playing uh, Horus Heresy. Oh, Horse Heresy. Horse Heresy yeah. is still all resin. What what faction are you playing? I saw a, a Gene Stealer cult battle report. I'm like, that's and thank you for the cool. tip. Holy thank you shit. So much. Yeah. Holy course, shit. Oh, did we get this? Do we get all these Furby Overlords? Yeah. Oh, we got this this oh, one. Oh, no. A th another thousand bits. Did you know British military tanks are equipped to make tea? I 100% believe it. That is incredible. That's adorable. That is I love incredible. that. Uh, thank you again. Uh, hold on. Let me just make sure that I can see this correctly. Uh, da, da, da. Seder sauce, 50 Swedish crones yet again. On fanfics again, so sorry. How do you feel, how do you like the ship ones, if any of you read those? Uh, and again, I love all I love all of our fanfictions. I love all the ship fanfictions. My favorite are the ones, again, that feel like the character and yes. feel like, like the ships that would exist. Yes. Some you can definitely tell is a little wish fulfillment from the author, which is totally fine. Crack pairings, I believe, is what they're called. But I'm like, okay, I <laughs> see that this pairing is really more for like the, whether it's the sexual fantasy or the romantic or fantasy. The, yeah, or the... Uh, or these are two my two favorite characters. Yes. I, I want to see them ship together. together. Yes. Or I this would be hot, right? Yeah. And I'll ship them together. I always prefer the ones where the text is there, or the, the, the subtext or the you know the context totally agree. is there, and it's very believable, and you don't have to do mental gymnastics. Mm -hmm. uh, or I like these, or, you know, and obviously you can always ship whomever you want, but at least historically for me, and I guess also probably the same philosophy when it comes to our own characters. I share this I, philosophy. I prefer it when it's like, it's it's believable, it's, 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 it's... It, if, if, we, if we were to actually make the choices in our campaign, it wouldn't come out of left field, right? Yes. Uh, some yes. some of the, uh, uh, the shipping, um, no wrong, no wrong answers in my opinion. Yeah. It's, yeah. All, it's all creative, but yeah, it's 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 my my absolute favorite are the ones where it's like, oh wow, this seems like a natural extension. This is very believable. The and and in the actual context of the story, oh, that makes perfect sense. Um, when we were very early days, first getting fan fiction, uh, just after uh, Witchlight, we had we'd done maybe a dozen episodes. We got uh, a Witchlight shipping fanfic that I read that was. Like illuminating, it was fantastic. Yeah, Out, outstanding. Right, like like the the um, and again, I, I don't have any favorites. I don't want to pick favorites, um, but sort of in the early days of getting fan fiction, um, yeah. when we were first starting to get those fan fictions, uh, some of the first we ever got were by Amazon Jade, and they just nailed the yep. the characterization of all the characters, but there was a lot of kind of crammy Gideon stuff going on, and it's just like, I can, I can picture this in my head, yeah. right? Like these, this is totally, like, if it's not yeah. canon, it could be, right? That's, yes. that's just awesome. Yes, and you know, and there's stuff, there's fan works where it's very out of character, and that's totally fine. It's totally fine, absolutely. But like, even for me, when I was a fucking teenager reading fan fiction, it's like, I am always going to prefer the stuff where it's very in character, and it is done within the context of the original universe. Um, that's believable. So, uh, good shit. Has there been any prime fan fiction? I, I am there's no sure there way. is. I am sure uh, there is Real now. quick, from Twitch, Ghost Seeker asks, uh, my friend wants me to ask this, out of all of your guys' characters, who would crunch the most if something bit them? Crunch? Oh man, Josh, uh, that's Jer Old Jericho sticks. Wait, what? Who would crunch the most if something bit them? Oh, yeah. yeah Jericho. Jericho. 100%. Jericho is very crunchy. Absolutely right. Um, Josh has a great question. Grass Mori for me. So what kind of character do you think you'd play if you went straight over Salt Marsh? Oh, well. Sorry. Oh, I want the answer to that question. Holy uh, shit. Well, we talked about this yesterday. Uh, we had a couple concepts for Mace's character. Um, back when we were going, it was originally going to be a six-person party. Those were phase two concepts. Those were phase two I, concepts. I assume we would pick up where we left off if he was he had gone through the process we went into we over the last few months. Together? Yeah, and so uh, he we were thinking he was going to be our cleric. Pretty cool. 
Oh yeah. Uh, here. Mm. Uh, Mushroom Fay, I've been completely redoing my island on Animal Crossing and it kind of made me think, oh. what would you guys think your representative animal Animal Crossing would be? Mine personally would be a red panda. Damn it. Um, Mine I, would be a llama. In the original, my favorite neighbor was, is it Angus? Who's the cow that has the purple shirt? Whichever cow or bull that has the purple shirt, he was Chuck? my favorite name. Uh, was, was it Chuck? Chuck? It might have been Chuck. It sounds like Chuck. Sounds like a Chuck. It might have been Chuck. I forget his name. Um, um, back you know in the back, you know, we're old enough to have played the OG uh, in the GameCube days, and I loved well, it. Well, technically, the original was, was Animal mm. Forest. Well, and the N64. Yeah. That never came out. That never came out. Yeah. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. Your Nintendo history, Rich. I mean, I, I understand this. As far as the U.S. is concerned, there it was the original. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's, that's how you're supposed to say um, it. Jackass. Nice and pedantically. Yeah, I've sorry, always I'm, felt I'm, akin I'm to Tom answer. Nook. Uh, I've been compared to Tom Nook before. No, but like, if you had an uh, OC, like, <laughs> if you had an OC that was like, um, you know, that isn't one of the neighbors, it's like, uh, you know, if 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 that you be if you could play Animal Crossing not as a human. Um. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Can um, you guys choose for me? I don't know Animal Crossing well, it's just well like, enough. I mean, I, it's, just a, it's just like an animal. Just, just an animal? Just I think cat. Derek would be an ocelot. Fuck you. Okay. Yeah, that's a cat. There that's you a go. Cat. Okay. There you go, with their little hands. Their little hands. Um, That's, I mean, I have a lot of favorite animals. Uh, Oh, beaver. Done. Yeah, Richie would very 100% much be the beaver. 100% a beaver. Yeah, Richie 100% would be the beaver. Easy peasy. Yeah. Chat, who answer. would I be? I don't have an answer. Um, I think uh, Ocelot's a great answer. I think I think I'd probably be a sea lion. No, oh, I thought you were being the sea season. lion. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny too, but it's all it's a cat, and you love cats. I could see Derek. I being do love cats. Some sort of bird, maybe. With their little hands. I could see <laughs> being some kind of bird character. I could see Derek. I mean, I could see a lot of things. <laughs> narwhal for Derek. I'll take narwhal. Nah, well, great. Okay. Now I can stab somebody lance style yeah. with my face. Hey! And then once you use it once, you're pissing me you off. Pull your hammer out. <laughs> uh, fun question. Any Patreon questions that we oh, haven't gotten yeah. to? Yeah, I'm just kind of. I'm just I want to make sure that we. I'm He's vibing. I'm He's vibing. He's vibing. Sprout is about to start painting while I watch y'all. Buy a sprue cutter, you dorks. Yeah, we have five of them here. Five sprue cutters. I have a fucking god hand. Yeah, I have a tummy. Yeah, I have a god hand. It doesn't get more luxurious than this. Oh god, you're like I'm crushing your head. I'm crushing your head. <laughs> I'm crushing your head. Bang the platypus. Platypus is also a, a front runner for Josh me. Josh asks, uh, love to see you guys play a Torin character in Wild West campaign. Yeah, I mean Torin Crane? Torin are very I'll fun. take Crane. Oh, like a Tor oh yeah, I mean by hook or by crook, we're gonna do some Wild West stuff at some point. Yes, uh, that, it's is, a that is coming. Otherwise. It will be, who knows when, but it will come. We, we're big fans of westerns, and I mean, Deadwood's our favorite thing ever. One of our favorite things ever. Us. So, from Rich, like, isn't like, God Hand like $50? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. It is $50. They are $50. And holy shit, they're worth it, but uh, god damn, it they, is $50. They are, they are $50. I have a, um, uh, you I have do not need them. Here. You do not need them. Need, need. No. But it's one of those things where you kind of get what you pay for. It is so... It is just in the old, old clippers that I had. I was cutting in gi giant chunks out of my trolls. Um, like it is so precise. It is so sharp. It is so. You I can get the army painter one, which is a little obviously it's a lot clunkier, right? And is not nearly as be but beautiful. But it still gets the job done. It gets the job done. Uh, I'll take this any day, but this gets the job done. This is like twelve dollars. This is fifty. Yep. Um. Um, Odd Toad asks, favorite Evangelion characters or Ava units? My favorite Andy's is Asuka. Andy's not here to answer this. Uh, favorite Evangelion characters? Evangelion. Oh. My favorite character is whatever um, wh whatever the little bad guys are that spew the fuck of the, of the other. Of the the big giant guy flying horrible angel things? Yeah, yeah that's, those are terrifying. That's I my favorite that. character. I love that. Yeah, that's great. A great answer. Evangelion's a weird show. Uh, and if, if you're a fan of Evangelion, I highly recommend that you go to. I love the theme song. Yeah, um, I know the song more than I know the show. That you go to uh, YouTube after the stream 
and oh. look up Daikon 4. D A I C O N, like the vegetable. Daikon 4 I V, Roman style I V. Uh, and watch one of the strangest things that you're going to watch. There's almost a K in it? your life. Um, yes. Yes. It may be with a K, actually, now that I think about it. But it's Daikon 4. You'll find it. I'm and sure. it's the animation that the studio that would eventually go on to produce. Um, was it Robotech or, or Gundam? I think it was Robotech. And eventually, of course, Evangelion. All, the, all, all of them got their start by making this pitch video, which is a music video set to uh, Twilight by the Beach Boys, uh, which is a terrific song. And they couldn't sell it because they'd used a uh, Beach Boys uh, song. They, they didn't have rights to the song. They didn't have the IP. So they sold a pamphlet about the making of Daikon 4 for like $100. And you also got the DVD for free. <laughs> Uh, and that's really cool. And it was the it's like when Dale uh, opens the bookshop in King of the Hill. <laughs> yeah, King of the Hill. And he sells you a book for like $150 and he gives you a gun. Give you a gun for, for free. free. That's fucking it's it is, burn. It is weird and crazy and full of energy and you can see why some producer saw that and went Here's a bunch of money. Go make yeah, a crazy fucking show. Do it. Yeah, go yeah. go make whatever the fuck you want. Get some voice actors and because it's just bonkers and and it's beautiful, especially at the time that it was made. At the at, when it was made, how difficult it would be to actually produce that animation. It's not gonna blow your mind today, but respect the history and enjoy some sweet sweet carrot four for me. Uh, this has been a, one of those a, things that you need. A Derek to... Hudson disclaimer. Sweet carrot four. That's very fun. Um, that one art kid says, how do they know all this? If you mean us, and how do we know, know things? Uh, when you're as old as we are, when you're when you're 35 to 40 years old and you're intellectually curious, you just learn a lot of shit. That's what we do. Yeah. That's we make, we, we, we assemble minis and we know things. And we know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, literally, that's sort of, that's kind of our thing. Uh, if there was some other meaning. Uh, let's knock off a couple more Twitch ones. Yeah. Uh, Dread Queen Cinnamon Roll, what is your favorite recipe to make? Bonus points if it's nostalgic. My favorite recipe to make is gumbo, chicken and sausage gumbo. It's not nostalgic. Uh, it's in the last three or four years There's I started no making that. that Every year for my birthday, I make the same thing, but not this year because I'll be in Geneva, Wisconsin attending GaryCon. It's birthday con for Derek. So I will not be doing it. I might do it before or after. I haven't decided. That's it, it feels be like banner. after. It feels like after. Birthday Saturday birthday. night is going to be at midnight. Your birthday's birthday is going to be pretty nice. That's going to be fucking. That's, gonna, that's, that's, gonna, that's the time. Yes. It was like when ours was Saturday night at midnight. It was Sunday Pat, night. It was Sunday, Sunday, Sunday night at midnight. Uh, but. All the industry people stayed they were on still Sunday there. night, yeah. and so the entire bar is like hopping. And Snuggy and, led a, uh, yeah. a, a whole Snuggie song led a happy us. birthday. And God, Hoss what a fun too. fucking time. Uh, and to answer everyone's question, the thing that I make for myself is my own birthday cake. Um, and oh. that uh, I think that some people uh, I've told will go, oh, but why? It's cake. Like the, You shouldn't have to make your own cake. No, and kidding? of course I'm going to make my own fucking yeah. cake, because only yeah. I know how to make the cake yeah. of my dreams. That's a very much <laughs> Richie and Derek attitude. I love that. Lemon, <laughs> yeah, fuck lemon that. layer cake. Oh. Yeah, we talked about this Fucking literally like yesterday. Six layers of, or, or the day of before, with a uh, uh, a very very um, very uh, tight, very. elegant crumb. Can I, uh, can I have some of this? Can we like? Can we actually Montgomery like this? element? Crumb. There is more butter and sugar in this Fuck thing yeah, than should be allowed dude. by uh, the, 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 the the gods. Quiver and look away when they see me make this cake, um, and it is so tart. And, and despair, and it's not uh, a. It's a savory icing, uh, meaning there's still a lot of sugar in it, but it is a. Um, uh, it is not like a fondant or anything like that. You can find the recipe for the one that I specifically make oh. by going to America's Test Kitchen. Uh, you can buy the book or you can go to the website. I think it requires a subscription. Find the recipe. That is exactly the cake that I've been making for fifteen years, and. 15. No, I uh, since since I was twenty five, twenty six, uh, I've been yeah. making this cake. Um, Damn, the, and it is the most delicious thing. Well, invite uh, me over for your birthday. Yeah. yeah. Now I have been toying with the idea of changing it up this year. Oh. 
That's uh, tragic. I haven't decided. That's tragic. I haven't decided. Well, the, the, I'm really, really excited about... Let's play Unfathomable. This Dutch... Lemon. Is it Dutch, <laughs> Swedish, uh, Danish? It's it's called the, like, Prince of Pesetta or something. <laughs> it's the Princess, Princess Cake. Dutch and Danish are totally different. Um, It's the... Swedish cake. Oh, <laughs> I was way off. Speaking of Swedish crones, the the princess well, the princess tarta, um, which uh, I'm very attracted to. It's a sponge cake with raspberry jam uh, and a layer of domed whipped cream over it and marzipan. I love marzipan. Uh, so I'm marzipan. I've been looking at cross sections and and I also like a challenge. It's a very difficult cake to make. So I've been kind of thinking I might change it up, but I might just make it. Later this year, yeah, for like a nice summer cake. I don't know. Um, I'm not a huge marzipan guy, but I am a huge sponge cake guy, and I didn't know this until I made Tres Leches cake for the first time. Oh for my Christmas. god, it was so fucking good, and I could not believe it. And through like divine providence, I've been seeing all of these like Japanese bakeries and Korean bakeries, and all of these amazingly fluffy desserts, and it's all sponge cake. Yep. It's a ton of egg white with just yep. normal cake batter, and it's the best fucking thing ever. I, so I, I'm in love. Good, I would love to make, I don't have a rice cooker anymore because I don't have space for a rice cooker and because I can make rice without a rice cooker, but I miss a rice cooker. I'm going to say rice cooker one more time. Rice, rice cooker, cooker, rice cooker, cooker, one, two, three. Rice cooker. But rice cooker, rice cooker, I would love ABC. one because I've always wanted to try the um, waffle batter mega jiggle. Uh, oh, waffles yeah. that you can make yeah, in the rice 100%. cooker that are like five inch thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you just fucking. I like me some jiggly food. I don't know. Yeah. I, I need to bake I some like of my these. Waffles, some like of these like <laughs> Japanese cakes. <laughs> like I like my, yeah, I like my... Uh, League of Legend mains. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's, that's quite funny. funny. Um, I made a trifle for Christmas. Oh, dude. Christmas Day. Oh my god. Did it have it beef was, in it? Joey style. It was. That's very funny. It was spice cake with butterscotch custard and homemade whipped cream. Oh my and god. I would change the recipe, I would double the custard. Yes. Double the custard next time. Keep the cake the same. Keep the cake the same, but double, but double the bigger dish, yeah. yep. double the custard, and more whipped cream. You can never go wrong and with the right custard. Yeah. That's that's the funnest part about the lemon layer cake is creating the custard and lemon. Because you have to hit like, that sweet spot yeah, it sounds like temperature oh, custard, where you're just yeah. like, oh, it's 165, 170, I don't know. Yeah. I fucking like realize that like the person who wrote that was not making that recipe for me. It's like, oh, it's so rich. I don't want to have too much. It's like, no. Yeah. I'm oh like drowning in that fucking butterscotch custard, baby. That's very funny. Um, I'm fucking drowning in it. Seder said, uh, another 20 Swedish crones Woo! making my sweetheart melt. Thank, Thank you. you. Princess, uh, Princess Tarta for the win. Yep. Oh, Princess Tarta. Tarta. Tarta Princess for the Tarta. win. Yeah, it, it looks unbelievable, and it looks like my, my kind of cake. I'm not an overly sweet cake guy, down. so yeah. when I do do cake, I want to have a lot of other flavors, and jam, and sponge oh, cake, yeah. and marzipan. Fuck sounds like it's got yeah. the complexity I'm interested in. Uh, you know, that sounds beautiful to me, Derek. It does. Uh, beautiful and cute, you know what I what's mean? What's everyone's favorite cryptid or spooky creature? Uh, I'll, I'm gonna be a little Maryland biased and just say the Snally Gaster. I mean, you know, don't get much better than that. I'm gonna know? be a little Virginia biased and say the Bunny Man. Is that a cryptid or is that just a murder? Technically it's a cryptid. I think that's that was, a murdering cryptid. It's a murder, cryptid murder and cryptid. Murder. Yeah. I mean all cryptids murder, right? Or is that is No, not am all I being murder. Am I being cryptic against cryptids? Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh. A24, not the company. I, it's turned around this way. It's going. I need down. to find the breastplate for these. I need to dwarves. find where the fuck it is. Uh, for someone new to the tabletop RPG, should I do D and D or Warhammer? I said do today, and he said Warhammer, but TBH, I have no idea what I'm looking for. Something super no, easy to play. No, if you're new, do not play Warhammer. Uh, I love well, Warhammer. Woofrup. If you're talking about Woofrup for tabletop Warhammer RPGs oh, that's versus D and D, that's an investment. D and D five E <laughs> is way easier. The reason it's successful, uh, and the reason why. Things oh. like Critical Role existed is be and exist is because of the accessibility of Fifth Edition. Totally, uh, it 100%. is it is the right mix of complex and uh, My simple. Yes. Um, it, it, even earlier editions of D and D were not as accessible oh. as Fifth Edition. The information design, the uh, uh, amount of uh, things that you have to worry about at any given moment. Um, to DM or to play as a, as a player is far, far easier than almost every other uh, major uh, popular oh. tabletop role-playing game that isn't like 
a one-page RPG or something along those lines. Highly, highly recommend 5th edition as a starting place if you're just getting into role-playing. And the reason why, you know, like, I think Wuffrup is so appealing to us, or at least the, the four workhorses of the apocalypse, is that we <laughs> very funny. have been playing D&D for, you know, approaching nine years, right? And so, like, you know... We can close our eyeballs. Yes. And so a crunchier rule set, I think, is something that we are definitely craving. But if you're brand new, don't start with Warhammer. Uh, it, it'll be a bad time. Yep. For everyone at all. all right, do you have any Patreon stuff? I'm struggling with this fucking piece. I, well, I have no idea how to attach let's it. Let's take turns reading questions here. So I, don't, I, don't have, I need to log in on my phone so I can take over on, yeah. on days yeah, like just, this. Just log in. Super easy. Well, no, it usually requires a someone were to transcribe one or more of your campaigns for the hearing impaired, which one would you want transcribed first? Uh, I think Once Upon a Witchlight. I think that's the kind of how everyone gets started, right? That's true. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm, how do uh, I do this? Oh, I didn't dry fit. I, I didn't the... follow it. You gotta dry fit. I didn't dry fit. You gotta dry fit. Uh, Curse of Strahd is a close second in my book in terms of drama. Basically, if you're going drama, Curse of Strahd. If you want to go humor, uh... Which light? Yeah. Nuclear blue. Extension of my previous question. What would characters from all campaigns do on VH Day? Although I'm flattered you think of me as the Star Wars person. I think it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to answer for everybody. Well, I, I believe I've just read you say somewhere, Discord, whatever, that Stardust was your favorite campaign. So I was just trying to be like, oh, yeah, I, I knew that. Um... God, I mean, we've got a million different freaking characters. Uh, what was the question? Beach Day, but oh, not beach Stardust, day. just other campaigns. Uh, Toa's a beach guy, so obviously just he would just be Toa, and he would go, he would surf, he would, you know, jump on a on a little uh, sailboat and go sailing, he would fish. Oh. Uh, I think he would get Felix to, like, go all in and sort of join him. Um, Felix would get... Let's pick one other campaign to do. Felix would get Let's extremely, extremely sunburned. Like like black spots on skin sunburned, I think. Oh, jeez. Oh, Jesus. That's a nightmare. It, 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 because it would be that? ironic that he would get sunburned after all of his, like, fire jazz. Oh, yeah. Jazz. It's, and it's sort of like, like me yeah. Um, um, if we're doing Witch Light, Kremi, you know, he... Damn. I haven't dealt with this too much, weirdly. Um, oh, my God. But, like... He sort of grew up in the swamp and on the water, and he kind of considers himself really above it now. And he sort of looks back at how he grew up <laughs> and thinks it's like super, like like degrading, degrading, or and like he's so above it now. He sort of made it right in his mind, and so like oh yeah, you know like, I made it, and you all didn't. You fucking hicks, yeah, basically. yeah. Basically, like it's if he were to good. go home, you know, like he knows how to like go out onto a onto a little rowboat in the middle of the night and go frog catching, right? But he would never do it now because he thinks that he, you know, he wears nice suits and he wears a nice hat and he's a showman and, you know, he's come a long way. Mm -hmm. That's fucked up, Kremming. Um, so in that sense, I think that he would like, I don't think he'd be the, the I'm going to wear my suit to the beach. Jesus Christ, are you fucking kidding me? I think he would be more like, maybe he would like let his guard down a little bit and enjoy the water and sort of, in, you know, kind of let some of that kid come out? No, I think that he would base it, he would have like a tropical drink and he would also be on the beach and he's not going to get in the water. Yeah. Kind of like Pike, right? Yeah. Sort of Pike-esque. Um, I think Gideon would be just... Gideon is the volleyballer, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he'd be playing volleyball, then he'd jump into the water. Yeah, and then he'd, and then go, he'd come go out. to the pair of like, you know, chicks walking on yeah. their thongs or whatever. Like, hey, what's up, ladies? And then he'd hey. shotgun a beer. And I think well, Torbeck, yeah, yeah, yeah. Torbeck would be pressured by him to participate. I don't. I, I don't think. Corn hole. I don't think he has enough uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, autonomy to do anything Shit. other than be like, "Well, I guess I'm playing volleyball." Yeah, Torbeck must play volleyball now. I guess Torbeck is playing volleyball. There we go. I just want to have a friend. Um, Gricko would be like digging for uh, um, like clams or oh, uh, yeah. crab, That's sand really crabs. Nice. That's really nice. I think he'd be playing with uh, Hootsie. Playing so with Hootsie. He would have a giant like tro like a uh, trolley filled with toys. Yep, I mean, like a like a wagon. A wagon. Like a he'd have wagon. a wagon yeah. filled with toys, and he would be like basically playing with Hootsie. That's very fun. Uh, he'd be the dad with the shovel. <laughs> he just would dig That's a hole. That's fucking great. Yeah. He would just dig a hole and bury Hootsie up to up to her. Neck. Yeah. So what is it? 
Um, I think Barnabas would just go swim around. He created like a like a beach fire. He would like you know he would do all of the classic stuff. I think he would. Mm -hmm. He go fishing. He do like the beach fishing when it surf, was surf, surf fishing. Surf fishing yeah. after the after you know the lifeguards go back. That's pretty funny. Um, I don't know what Frost would do on a beach. <laughs> Read a book. He'd be he'd, yeah. be he'd be he'd be sitting next to uh, he'd be lounging next to Kremmy, you know. Yeah, next to Kremmy and Pike. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's very funny. I am gonna fucking lose my mind. Uh, if you guys have trouble with resin models sticking together a painting or paint sticking, make sure you wash the models with soap and water. Yep, yep. Normally so that's normally the mold release. Yeah, the the no yes. For me, it's less about that, and it's just more about the. I mean everything. Uh. It's just the, it, and it's, it's not just the resin that I have the problem with. It's it's the um, the old sculpts from Games Workshop uh, before they were designed in CAD, um, just not not really sticking and not not being designed in a way where there's a, actually a tight fit. Yeah, and I'm being spoiled by CAD designed. Um, yeah, classic, I'm classic so spoiled miniatures. now. It is absurd. Yeah, it's it's you know uh, that one art kid. Who was your guys' favorite Spider-Man actor or animated any version? Um, it's I like, like James Toby Bond. McGuire. My Toby, my my <sighs> Spider-Man was Toby McGuire. I never liked Toby. Um, I didn't see the Andrew Garfield stuff until very recently. Yeah, I didn't like that either. And um, I just think that it was all of the rapping and the story. I really, I really felt like he was inhabiting Peter Parker as Spider-Man in the role. Like, I, th I thought yeah. that he did a terrific job. It's just that he was surrounded by nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, that's tough. My Spider-Man is the is the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man from the Spider-Man 2 video game. Um, was that was that was actually going to be my answer. Not not that particular game, but the the one for PS4, the Spider-Man game. That Spider-Man is so fucking Spider-Man. He's the Spider-Maniest yeah. Spider-Man that ever Spider-Man. I think my favorite though is Miles Morales from uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, if I had seen those films, I'd probably say that, that was so because fucking good. I have all, not... all of them, all of them. The Gwen Stacy uh, with the Vi voice actors, I can't remember her name. Uh, Haley uh, Steinfeld. Uh, yeah, uh, and um, the fucking the the Peter Parker um, guy, Peter Parker Spider Man, who's like kind of the washed up deadbeat. Oh, the guy who's in. Um... I don't know. I don't know who like what actor. Uh, actor no, 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 no. The actor he has a very specific name, and he was in a fucking show for like he has ten a years. Specific name. <sighs> Derek. Come on, Derek. This always happens with actors. No, I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm not remembering. I'm not gonna remember the actor's name, but he's in that terrific show. Um, who's that girl? Jake Johnson. It's Jake Johnson. Um, yeah. Jake new Johnson. girl. Yeah, new girl. He's Starring... fucking hilarious on New Girl. Oh, I don't know who that is. Um, like Jake Johnson. Crying, allegedly. crying, laughing. Yeah, you broke me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> how would you guys um, go? I... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I loved the alternate version of, uh, I think, from Jake Johnson's universe, where the Green Goblin is like a giant gargoyle monster. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's, it's in the only beginning of the movie, and he dies, and it's like this giant fucking gargoyle monster. It's so fucking cool. Anyway. Uh, how do you do go you about believe... doing a Warhammer-themed D&D or Pathfinder campaign, like inspired by type thing without being obnoxious? Depends on how you want to theme it of that, right? I think for it to be Warhammer, it's got to be in the Warhammer world. And I mean, you could be inspired by Warhammer, though. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, but you could totally play a D and D campaign in the world of war in in the old world or in the the world of legend or whatever they're calling it now. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to be nearly as like quote unquote grounded as Wolfrip is as a Warhammer fantasy role play. Yeah, where yeah. you're like literally a fucking rat catcher and a tax collector and like a fucking riverboat operator as yeah. your classes. You you can play you can heroic play heroes right? a lot more heroic, more intense. And so we actually were talking about the dungeon dudes at Game Hole about how there really isn't like a Warhammer role play to live the fantasy of the armies that you collect and all of these like, crazy heroes yeah. in an actual game. There isn't a system for that. Um, because of Warhammer roleplay is so much about being a fucking peasant in the Empire. I'm gonna have to use these tongs to get this to finally grip to the level that I need it to Maybe grip. Maybe peasant's not the right word, oh, wow. because that's a Bretonian thing, but you get the idea. A commoner. 
Those pliers are textured, so just make sure it's not digging in too bad. It may be digging a little bit. I'd rather smooth that out with the stick than oh, have yeah, the yeah, huge obviously. gap that was starting to emerge on the side of my guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's kind of the thing about the cast. If there's any kind of, like, it kind of snowballs as far as, like, if it's something isn't entirely precise. Yeah, then it's minor obvious. imperfection then, will have huge repercussions yeah, or, on step 50. Exactly. Where if you, and it's not it's technically perfect in the CAD, but then you didn't quite squeeze it well enough, you know, if you know what I mean, like, fucking <laughs> ten steps ago. Uh, and then, oh shit, it doesn't perfectly fit, so then you really gotta vice grip that shit. Uh, let's do another Patreon question. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, oh no. yeah! Oh no! Oh yeah! Um, boop, boop, boop. Uh, I'm playing a fairy in our current says Sprout. I'm playing a fairy in our oh. current campaign whose unrealistic goal is to take over the Fae. Wild, I presume. Any fun ideas or ways to put her, to try to put that in action in the campaign? I would say that's up to your DM. I would say that, yeah, like, I would say yeah. once again, it kind of goes into, I wouldn't try to shove in your, uh, or, you know, kind of have your character's ultimate goal into the overall campaign. Um, what I would do is rather just maybe kind of, because, you know, Feywild's all kooky bananas shit, cuckoo banana shit, like, basically kind of say, come up with, like, mental gymnastics reasons why whatever the main story is that your DM is setting out is actually helping your long goal and how you're playing, like, you know, 10D chess. That's how I would do it. Oh, Good answer. I how about another up. piece of Oh, thanks, Paladin Mags, for the raid. Oh, thank Whoa! you. Whoa! I'm building up some big old troll boys. Speaking of the Whoa! wall. Speaking of the wall, I'm building, Welcome. I'm building uh, Trub. Oh, we haven't, we haven't updated this for fucking ever. I'm oh, going to yeah, bring yeah. this guy yeah, over it. here. Oh, yeah, take it. I'm, I'm building this... This chaos boy, Knight. Is this he your champion? Chaos Knight right is here. He, is he, no, no, no. I'm not doing the champion. I'm, gonna, I'm saving him for last. But We're he's, building he's doing real, real good. He's got this long ass fucking lance. And uh, he doesn't have a head yet. And I just realized that I did it out of order. I uh, yeah. fucked up. What? Look, the, the head has these two little feet. And I was like, the feet are ne never going to pop into the neck hole. And it's because I should have glued the, the chin yep, yep, to yep. the front of I the chest I made that plate, mistake. I and had then I should have open. glued them to the back. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to cut off the legs. And I'm going to have to glue them right down. into that fucking shit. Yeah. But yeah. He, now he gets to look in a different direction than he normally would have otherwise there for eternity. Go. So that's very exciting. That's, that's very what's, exciting. What's new and exciting? Uh, the fact that he doesn't have to look the way that he was prescribed by the workshop of games. The workshop of games of all games. Mm, the workshop of games. Uh, not sponsored by Games Workshop. We just love their miniatures. That's true. Um, I've loved their miniatures for 25 years. It's very, kind of very literally. <laughs> it's so funny that like all of the stuff that I wanted to get into when I was a teenager but basically didn't have like the means or like the understanding to do, I've basically done. Cosplay D&D. Cosplay D&D LARP. Yep. And, and Warhammer. And Warhammer. Now that's something that it's I'm not It's so doing. fucking, like, it's, you know, Warp's it's crazy. Awesome. Just, I achieved in my mid-30s instead. Never give up, folks. Never give no, up. Never I, give it up. It depends on how you, you define LARP. Um, I would say that I have kind of sort of done that. Um, but, uh, not in a, a fantasy way. Um, I have done, I LARP I've not done day. cosplay. I've never cosplayed. Cosplay is so fun. Cosplay is, it's... If it wasn't so time consuming and exhausting, I would I would still do it. Right. I think one day we'll get back to it. I would love to. I would love to if we can kind of get our enterprise in a place where, you know. Yeah. For me, I'm just gonna take I'm gonna be happy that I get to fucking play get to build Warhammer minis. Yep. And I'm not leave it I'm at gonna that. Not, I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah. I'm gonna not take that for granted. Yeah. And I'm just gonna be grateful. Any other hobbies that I can eventually find time for? I'll be grateful that. I think that's very reasonable. Wonderful. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm um, gluing together a piece real quick. Yep. I could look at... Uh, a, I don't know if there's any... How would you go about... Great question. Udaya, Udaima Akuma asks, How would you go about doing a Warhammer-themed D&D? Oh, we already have answered that. Sorry. Fucking market is complete. Well, we got, we got Patreon questions. Fuck. What are some of your favorite themes? Anti Samanita would like to know. I don't have any favorites. I think it's whatever whatever works for the story. Yeah, to there, me, there's no such. No, there there is such a thing as themes done poorly. I do not think there is such a thing as a bad theme, <coughs> but I am drawn to. Um, oh shit! There's a whole stories about maturity, growing up, 
the hero's journey, for uh, to put it another way, uh, the yeah, the Luke yeah, Sky that. Luke Skywalker uh, yeah, yeah. at the very beginning, looking watching two setting suns, and Luke Skywalker at the very end, looking uh, not 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 counting the sequel, uh, looking at the we don't count the sequel. Return of the Jedi ending. He's his sister's there. Uh, the Han Solo's there. The, the Ewoks are just going fucking crazy. They're all they're all on so much X, and he looks over and he sees his space p- parents. That's all. That's all good jazz, you know. That it's that transformation. Story. I love that. That's so um, true. Harry Potter does it. Uh, uh, there are so many hero journey like stories that do that same like growing up. You gotta grow up. You gotta be transformed, kind of story. I think that that's very. I love powerful. stories that aren't afraid to actually have actually have heroes, and not need some twists where they're actually you know they have some dark side or they're bitter and old and you know they're. It's you know anyway. Um, excellent question. I think that's very important. From yes. uh, so I'm uh, from Kian, I mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm playing a Drakenheim campaign as Mi- uh, Minotaurus, a Minotaur. Uh, level four monk fighter. Nice. Just wanted to introduce him. Other than that, I found you in September or so. I have binged almost all of your content and adored all of it. Thank you. And live to see how all of you DM differently, but in such a fun way, or keeping on and having fun. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. Um, every single one of our members has now DM'd or GM'd something. Yeah. Uh, not even all me. on stream, but basically, even Richie, he has officially uh, popped that uh, cherry, pop. cherry <laughs> with and in the best uh, a possible up, way. In the best possible way. That was with a good time. A, up, uh, a little intro. We're like, you, you read the rule book and none of us want to do it. Yeah. You do it. Yeah. You were like, ah, no, how far no, no, is no, it? No, yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. And uh, I, Kelsey DM'd for her um, co-workers I forgot uh, years that. Years ago. Yes, many years I ago. I forgot years that. Years ago. like a retreat. On a retreat, yeah. And so I, all I of rem- us have DM'd. I remember it went well. When it comes to the channel, like it's so nice that we have DM'd. And Andy has DM'd at conventions, and he also DM'd the Spoilers for Witchlight, the Torbeck fight. Um, he DM'd, which is really awesome. That's right. That's right. Uh, and so I just love that all of us, I think in a lot of like different friend groups or, you know, groups on online, they have the DM and everyone else is a player and all the players really don't have any interest in DMing. And I'm so glad that we can have all these different voices and styles. And to me, all of it's fucking excellent. Yep. And we yep. may have very different styles and no one's better. No, everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses and all, and they all have their own, we all have our own voices and to me, it's just a ton of fun. Boy, howdy. Um, well said. And also, enjoy your Dungeons & Brackenheim campaign. I've read most of it. It's excellent. And it is fucking excellent. If, you're, if you want urban disaster horror slash cosmic horror, I would say urban disaster horror is basically what I would say. There is a lot of cosmic element, but I think the core of it is disaster horror. It's been ages since I've sat it's down and read a so module. elegant. And went... Oh shit! Yep, this is pretty good. And and, and <laughs> Monty, uh, Monty the and dudes, Kelly right? are yeah, they're, non- they're the dungeon dudes. Monty and Kelly are just such the consummate gamers, and it is truly made by dungeon masters for dungeon masters and people who understand the game and love the game, and it's made with such love and appreciation for the system, uh, and it's it's as elegant as fuck. And so, if you are looking for you know. Urban disaster horror. I, I, there's no better um, from what I've read. I never played it. Full disclosure. But, they, they were um, kind enough to offer some wise words, some guidance, uh, as we were just striking out into publishing and talking oh, yeah. about uh, approaching the crooked moon and how you even start. And um, they were so knowledgeable. What oh I came, what I came away with was there isn't a word in in that tome. Uh, and everything that they've written that isn't still right up here. They they be, they they just live and breathe it, and that is um, inspiring. Yeah, it's inspiring. Totally. Uh, so yeah, enjoy that shit. Let us know how you like it. Um, Look at this motherfucker. And Monty and Kelly also love Warhammer. Oh, that's, that's fucking amazing. Wow. Um, I think Monty has like a, like thousands of points of a Skaven army. <laughs> uh, um, that one kid. Uh, any tips for first time DMing? Uh, I think you can check out our FAQ. Um, we have some good tips yeah. there in our Discord. Um, and focus on the story focus first. Focus on narrative first. Focus on narrative and be f- and and be fine making mistakes. Don't get psyched out, and you'll do great. It's extremely easy 
to kick yourself about a rule slip up, but give yourself the grace to. Yeah, grace is a good word. Grace. Grace under pressure. The Great the album. grace to say, you know what? This is the judgment I'm going to make. Now we're going to look it up, and when we know what better, we'll do better. We're just going to move forward for the sake of the session. Is totally valid. Yep. Um, I that. made uh, I made some terrific mistakes when it came to the rules, and none of them mattered. None of the mistakes mattered because ultimately people remember yep. the highlights and the exciting moments yep. more than whether or not Thorn Whip is something that you can cast from yourself or from any point within range. Yeah. I thought <laughs> I got Thorn Whip us- wrong, wrong. You know, it, I, I remember that because I had to learn it, but it didn't matter to my players. They didn't care. And what I'll say is that all of us on this channel make mistakes, especially Derek. <laughs> especially, especially ocelots with especially their little tiny ocelots hands. With their grippy hands. hands. Yeah, little tiny hands. Um, Holy shit. The reason why you got thrown it wrong is because is you were thinking of grasping vine, which worked how you thought it worked. How you had ruled it, I believe, is how I, I think I remember you telling the story. And grasping vine does work how you thought. Oh, I and so no, I thought that thorn whip you could pick the point of order. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Grasping yeah, vine yeah, does that. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I think you had just gotten mixed up, and which is very easy to do. And you like, you make the ruling, and it's with D and D, Warhammer, whatever it is. You make the ruling that leads to like you know you can agree on and then move on, right? I don't believe you, miniature. You're, um, t- you're too good looking. You're too sexy. You're too sexy. You're too fucking good you take looking. That glue. Take that glue, motherfucker. Um, I have. Oh. oh, Mun Queen asked on Twitch, "Did you expect Bosun Haga immediately to become a fan favorite?" I didn't expect Bosun Haga to exist. <laughs> so, That's no. very funny. Yeah, there's no notes so, anywhere no. where he wrote down yeah. Bosun Haga. Yeah, no, there was not at all. Um, I'm missing a piece, and, so and I didn't even see it disappear. Entirely improvised. Oh, you're fucked. Yeah, you're fucked. Rich is fucked, everybody. Um, I'm fucked. I love the, you know. I love the trope of, uh, of uh, the very real trope of, of a, um, as a totally improvised PC just completely getting away from you. I felt the same way about Daisy. Yeah. I did, I did not know that she would become the monolith that she has become. <laughs> That's very funny. It is funny. I'm about to really tidy up here, Jesus. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to paint any of this shit. I cut out a piece and it just fucking vanished. Is that on my arm? Is it like stuck in my arm? No. Hmm. Um, Great see. question. We're Thank out you. Of, yeah. Um, let's. Can you can you hit uh, com- Marcus complete? Oh. Uh, question for y'all. What is your favorite flavor of cake? Do we, oh, we already did that. We already did. Let me answer that. Yep. Marcus is complete. Thank you. Why does Mikey not lace shoes? Because at the time it was annoying you to check out a thing called boa laces. Ooh, got much from what are boa laces? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, hmm, let's see. Well, I think let us know. Thank you to all of your uh thank you to all of our channel members. Advanced question about mini painting. Should I avoid applying glue as much as possible to things that don't need glue because it'll ruin the fidelity? I'm assuming that the answer is yes. Say that again? If I am applying glue to something, it's going to melt the plastic. So I'm going to hurt its appearance because I have applied plastic to something or glue, right? Like I'm going to, I'm going to ruin the fidelity. I think Right, I my personal take is there's some people like, oh yeah, don't be very careful with it. I'm very much of the opinion of like, it's you don't need to be like super paranoid about it. Um, if it gets a little elsewhere, that's fine. You know, you might be able to see it if you're looking up close, but like, at least for me, I'm not trying to make a golden demon yeah. entry. Like, well, I, 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 I mean, I'm not either, I, but like the 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 chain mail here, right? Like if I accidentally glued on there, I probably would lose a little bit of a little, piece. maybe a little bit. Hmm. But like at the end of the day, it, when it, when you're just trying to make something look table ready, um, I think that like you know, it's it's going to be hardly noticeable, as far as I'm concerned. So technically, yes, but in in practice. Eh, 
I'm excited about Not Witchlight. Really. I can't wait get, to get back. This I can't is wait extremely to get fun, uh, but yeah. I have been dying. I have been dying. I have been dying to get back to Witchlight. I am so fed up with illnesses. Just it's just been winter, you know. It's just been a tough fucking winter. Yeah, this is winter. It was last fall too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's because we were pushing ourselves. Yeah. yeah if we, we hadn't did, launched we the Kickstarter, to, yeah, we would have been of, fine. It's <laughs> unfortunately one of those things is where like it's it's like oh man like are we gonna have to revisit live content because no, it we're not it gonna the, revisit that but we it's one have of those things it's it. we're like oh I'm sick oh I'm stuck at work well, oh no, I'm sick here's a, here's a no, question I'm here's sick. a question here's a question could we have pre-recorded things for when we can't live stream but then we could but then you're still missing you're still missing the story that you're coming back for people right expect now. which light to be on Wednesdays. And we have not been consistently played Witchlight since September of last year. I know. Yeah, yep. I know. Yep. Also, yep. there's something we were very consistent for a while. We were consistent all year long. And then 100 percent all year yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My eye is slowly uh, deteriorating, so I'm gonna go uh, find out what's going on in the mirror. I'll be right back. We'll see you soon. Uh, could you mark as complete? Oh yeah. Are we good with our cop and Patreon? Uh, yeah, from what I could say. Uh, Tasmatics is in your tunes. It's 10 minutes. It's gonna see the midnight live in a month. Any tips for surviving a big gig for, big gig for the first time? Ooh. Um. Well. My guess is that the venue they'll be in will be mostly standing room and not seats. So if I, if you know, if it's your first time and you don't like crowds, get a seat and just or, or stand in the back, stand, stand in the, the side, stand in the back and stand in the side. A not crowded section. It's one of those things is where like you know if you can be super happy just kind of vibing and you don't need to be like right up front, stand in the back where and give yourself plenty of room and just enjoy it. Um, that's what I would recommend. Um, don't be afraid to do that, um, you know, in the back of the pit. Well, the good thing is that the, the Midnight, they have a great crowd, but it's not fucking like moshing asshole violent mo uh, crowds or pits. So you will be hopefully like, you won't have to worry about any, um, any kind of craziness like that. What I will say is if you don't mind crowds, and you don't mind being in a throng. Um, I would highly, highly recommend getting there early before the opener, being um, there when the doors open or shortly know. after, shortly after the doors open and get your spot and don't move. So yep. go to the bathroom, do whatever you need to do to sort of claim your spot. Yep. I love being close. I love being way up there. Me too. And, Me too. um, the min, I don't know if Fling, the, Fleming uh, Ghost is opening for them still. I, but like, I didn't really care for the opener at all for when we saw the midnight last. I got um, the hat because the branding was cool, but the yeah. branding's cool. I, I, I'm just not a big DJ guy. Yes. Yeah, um, and I still same, same, same. got there early, planted my feet, uh, for the opener because I wanted to be up close and personal for, uh, for the midnight. But you know, it's one of those things is acknowledge that this is your first time, and if you're not into like. You know, if you're not experienced with big gigs, it might be just a little a much. So just make sure you're considering totally. all of that. A29 goes right there. A29, if I were A29's hookup point, oh, I know where I'd be. You know where you'd be? Oh, yeah, if you know what I'm... Oh, yeah, that is sexy. Oh, yeah. That is fucking sexy. Um, we're going to... Let's do some Twitch questions We're going to answer some Twitch Why questions Why don't you read here? it while I, I, I glue... My little, my little. Uh, Mikey, have you spent any time around llamas? If not, do you want to? Um, I have not. I would love to. I really love like camels and llamas and alpacas and like you know. Um, I was always a llama kid. I've more recent, or I was always a camel kid. I love yeah. camels. I've more recently gotten into llamas and it's alpacas. Only like the last year or so. Last right? yeah, last year or so. Um, thanks to the squishable llama. But, uh, I mean, I've always thought they were cute, right? Um, but, you know, uh, I've never been around them. I'd love to be. Exactly right. Um, they all spit. They're all the same family, right? Yeah. Llamas and camels and alpacas, they're all the same. Faustine Queen has a great question. What do you guys mean by crunchy rules? When we say crunch, or when anyone's talking about crunch when it comes to role-playing games, what they mean is how many rules there are. Basically, a crunchy rule set has a lot of rules, and a lot of complicated rules, and it's 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 very depthful. Yes, it has. It's called crunch because it, it gives you something to kind of stick to your bite teeth into, into, to bite into. Where with D and D, it's so basic. Where if any fighter generally on their turn, they roll an attack roll 
and then they do the damage. For that's it. Five E, the number of rules you need to know to play is extremely light. Yep. For some, I mean, PBTA, it's extremely crunchy compared to PBTA. So it depends on your context and your perspective. It's, it's uh, very rules light, and it, there's not much crunch. And that's great from a narrative perspective, but if you really want to game and you want to treat your battles almost like a war game, then D&D is not the system for you. Yeah, that was people's problems with 4A. Yeah. It kind of became a video gamey war game. Yeah. Um, uh, hit mark is complete, and I'll read the next one. Yeah. Uh, probably a quick, uh, quick one. Uh, Murky Umbrella says these are all back a bit, but I wanted to say it. Man with uh, the Hex. Man with the Hex by Atomic Fireballs is a great crummy song. Merrill's is a solid slip on brand. Oh, I need I need to try some Merrill's. Oh, Merrill's they make, are barefoot too. They, uh, they're barefoot. Don't they have wide wide feet? They have wide toe boxes. So I, I was looking into Merrill's. I, I have. I don't have huge feet, but I have colossally wide feet. Yeah. I have like wider than the standard width of than any shoe manufacturer. Yeah. Basically, it is horribly obnoxious because basically, if I want to have non-specifically wide shoes, I need to basically have it be loose in the front because my toes will get smashed. It's awful. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to your younger selves slash other uh, young adult nerds that need some advice? I will say this again is uh, no one else matters besides you, is what I would say. And I don't mean that in a nihilistic way. They do matter, but basically, if you don't put yourself as your highest value, uh, you will, there only misery lies. There will be that. a disservice. There'll be a disservice. You can only appreciate other people if you appreciate yourself. You can only truly love other people if you truly love yourself. You can only live, that be happy. You can yeah. only be happy and have a life where you can can enjoy other people, as far as I'm concerned, if you live with a sense of yourself as your highest value. That's and I, I and I and will also add to that that I think that loving yourself is possible for all people. Of course. Um, I think that is uh, a meaningful asterisk to the yeah. you can only uh, find the love for yourself. Um, if you're not in love, uh, keep the pursuit. There is always hope. Um, to, yeah, to uh, never give up. Yeah, I, I think it's something that I yes. learned to be very yes. true. Never give up. Uh, literally, never give up. And uh, we, I we, before, we wouldn't be doing this right now the way we're doing this right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what I would say is like, don't. The biggest thing I would say, especially for the young, is like if you talk. I don't have regrets because you know I'm I'm in AA and the whole thing is not having regrets or whatever and and living one day at a time. But what I would say is. If you have issues or you're not happy, don't seek escape. Seek solutions. Yep. I think the biggest trap solve for, your problems. I solve very, your problems. Very well put. Don't don't run away from your problems. Don't observe. Uh, uh, ignore your problems. Don't stick your head in the sand. Solve your problems. Get the, uh, the get the help that you need. Help yourself. Build a better life for yourself. It's your responsibility to yourself to build a life that you're happy with, and that 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 makes you happy and fulfilled. No one's coming to save you. No one's coming yep. to help you out. No one's going to save you. That next job, that's not going to do it. That next relationship, that's not going to do it. Yep. That next trip, it's not going to make you happy. Until you are happy where you are at on your own, if you cannot be happy, and, not, and I mean happy, not ignoring it with uh, uh, video games or Netflix or substances or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's, it, whatever it is that you use to escape, uh, if you cannot be happy where you are, that next thing is never going to make me happy. That's what I would tell myself. Everything Mike just said. Everything Mike just said. Couldn't couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's a it is a shit ton of work. Oh yeah. I, mean, I was it can I was blow. I was just talking. I just had therapy today, and we were talking. I was talking to my therapist. Where I cannot believe where it's in March or Fe or next month. It will have been three years, and I wish I had started way 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 earlier. Right. And I. And anyway, yes. Drop, uh, drop the stigma of therapy. Oh yeah, real it is quick. So fucking healthy. Uh, yeah. Try me now says, hey, can they see our text or is it just Twitch? We do have both chats up, but there's a lot of chats across both platforms. So Twitch is a nice kind of ask a question um, format that you can come over and ask there. Um, but if you super chat on YouTube, that's an, see, that's an easy way it. for it that's to kind of pull it up. For us for us. To pull it, up. it highlights it in a way that's more okay. visible. I, I need to figure um, out and just to sort of layer on with uh, you know earlier in the stream, I said um, don't be afraid of work. 
Uh, I don't mean that in kind of like a shitty toxic way. No, I think that of like, oh yeah, go in and put th- in your hours. There's Fuck a lot shit. of um, s- not stigma, show. but I think there's sort of people are kind of rebelling lately against sort of the grind culture, right? And the concept of grinding. Um, and I agree that sort of in the sense that all these Instagram influencers are talking about grind. Uh, there's something toxic the to, to a five. like unending hustle kind of or hustle uh, culture thank you culture. Yes. grind culture yes right um but what i would say is that um you sim- similar to yeah. mike's point about no one's coming to save you um if you have dreams oh, yeah. no one's going to build it for you yes no one's going to hand deliver it for you if you do the right thing or you impress the right person and so i would say don't grind and hustle for the sake of money or don't grind and hustle for the sake of validation. But if you have a dream and you have a passion and you have a love that you want to do as not just a career, yeah. but as a vocation, yeah. you have to build it yourself. That's the I think you that's the thing where the hustle culture is toxic. Oh, get figure out you should be spending every moment of your life trying to figure out how to make money. That's yeah, get your shit. bag. It's, you know, no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. You should it, what you you can't take that shit with you. No, what you no. what you should be focusing on is hustling on self actualization. Right. That to me is where you should be feel good to hustle your fucking ass off is for self actualization and true flourishing happiness. Not living, yep. not not surviving, especially not surviving, but flourishing. That's where you should not be afraid to fucking work and hustle and put in the time and effort. And I mean it and like I say, like it's something where like when it comes to mental health mm. and physical health, right? But like, I think about mental health and I think about how long it took me of a grueling, ins- insanely intense self work and self improvement to get to where I am now. It was years, yeah, years, not year, mo- not months, not weeks, years to get to that point. And it was all. It's not something. Oh well, eventually one day I'll heal. One day I'll get better. One day I'll get to the point. It's like no. It's it's, it's it was it was extremely intense, and it was deep, constant work. Um, and to me, that's far more worthwhile than hustling than like, oh, I'll impress my boss and get a fucking 5% raise with 10% inflation, right? You know? <laughs> I think that's when I became the most like, I had the most existential dread living my corporate gig, like doing all of the quote unquote right things of I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna get a degree yeah. and then I'm gonna get a corporate job and then I'm gonna get a promotion and then I'm gonna get another promotion and then I'm gonna get another promotion and I started to realize, wait, my entire life is all about trying to get other people that are above me to think better of me, to have some sort of opinion on me. It and can that's be very my life. approval seeking. It and right. uh, like obviously no wrong fun. Yeah. A lot of people love corporation, corporate life, and a lot of people love that, and they and they relish it. But for me, you need to make sure that it's for you. It's a it's How the it was like a wish. living fucking hell. It, it, it was a living hell, and so I, I focused my efforts I and energy totally on my passion, my dream, my love, my vision, and you know, decided to build something of my own. Um, and I would encourage, I'll never tell anyone not to go to college, but um, unless college didn't do anything for me personally, uh, besides allowing me to eat and pay rent. I had a very opposite college experience. Yeah. Um, because I went to school for oh. what I was in, uh, passionate about. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I went to school and for me, yeah. and when I got out of college, the existential crisis that I had was that I realized that I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do any of my artistic talents yes. for other people. Yeah. And so my car- job. my entire yeah. career story of the nine to five job was. Uh, finding twisted ways to take the artistic stuff and sort of not do that so that I could be creative on the side. And can I, can I make videos for someone or do marketing for someone or maybe a little graphic design but, but so not care so about it? Good. And the farther and farther away that my career got from my art, my capital A art, right. I was happier because yeah. I was just going to you know make a salary and do that whole thing. And of course... Uh, then we spent six years building this, and now I get to pursue my artistic talents in their most full-throated way, and I'm realizing how connected I am to, like, it, it, destiny, it connected I am to that, that the things that I idealistically wanted to pursue sure. in, co- yeah. in college, yeah. but it took me fucking 
that entire journey to learn how to do it and that it was what I wanted and all of that growth had to come with it. Life um, experience is like really, you know, it's kind of one of those things where like sometimes it's, it's, and for me at least, you know, I had to learn the hard way and I think a lot of people do and don't feel bad if you have to. That's just, it is what it is. Sometimes you got to fucking take the blows. You got to take the punches. Yep. And then when you're on the ground, oh, I've learned and you can pick yourself back up. And it sucks. Some people don't have to learn that way. But speaking personally, I had to. And I think a lot of people do. So, um... Quick mini question. Yeah. Since we're changing our bases up, should I I should just remove this peg that would normally be... Uh, Correct. Yeah. You will not okay. need that peg. Thank Unless that peg goes into something else. No, no, it goes into the base. Okay, then no. You do not need that peg. Um... I don't remember how we got on this topic, but it's a great one. Yeah, it was a great question. Uh, you know, these are the chill streams where we, we will wax philosophical, so yeah. uh, happy to talk about... Oh, uh, is this a new question? Oh. Oh, uh, Ivy asks, Mikey, back in December, you guys talked about how it feels to have fans heavily theorizing and pulling back the veil on your campaign with the new larger audience. Now that you're a few sessions in and experiencing for yourself, what are your thoughts and feelings, presumably about Saltmarsh? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm super humbled. I, I don't think I'll ever get used to the fact that, like, people give a shit about our stories, much less my stories, right? Um, and so it's really surreal. For uh, me, I get to just look over at Mikey and be like, welcome, welcome to the fucking party. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's very, very, very fulfilling. I love to see it. And I just like to see that people care. And I think that, like, I am very deliberate with my stories. And so there are things... Uh, what I love to see the most... I love people talking about it, theorizing. But when I do something that I think is subtle that I'll never say, but it was the intentionality behind it and the intention. Yeah. And when someone picks out the intention and the theme and the rhyming and the foreshadowing and, like, the morality discussion... And, like I've seen a lot of it at Beneath Dark Wings. And there are some people who talk about Beneath Dark Wings. They completely miss the point. And that's totally fine. They're having a great time, even if they miss the point. Then the people who analyze it, and, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's exactly what I was fucking thinking. That shit is cool. That shit is really, 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 really fucking cool. You know where I have a similar experience? Mm -hmm. And obviously it's not to the same level of um, of uh, as, as DMing. But I will occasionally see comments in the Curse of Shredania channel sort of analyzing Clayton oh, yeah. and how I played Clayton. And a lot of folks and a lot of YouTube comments are like, what the fuck is Clayton doing? He's, you know, what a, what an idiot. Or, you know, why does anyone listen to this guy? Or, man, this guy fucking sucks. Or, God, get a load of this guy. Or what is it? What's the SpongeBob thing? Oh, oh, oh brother, brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, so but then there man. are people will write these very nice comments that are very gracious and generous that sort of like analyze Clayton and they're picking up on all of the stuff that I'm trying to do with Clayton. Yeah. And I'm just like, thank you. Right? Like Clayton's not for everybody, no. but the people that get it and can kind of appreciate it, it's, it's very cool. Well, I, I, I also think the thing is, right, is that we all approach our D and D characters as fictional care, real people. Uh, characters of fiction in, in a story that we're telling. And we all play flaw, uh, flawed characters. And right. I think a lot of people, when they're watching it, they're thinking, oh, well, in D&D, it's a game, so you need to be good and perfect. Or you need to be You playing, need to win the game. You need to win the game. Mm -hmm. And the idea of playing a flawed character is insane to them in a game where you are competing against the DM or trying to win the game. Every fucking character should have flaws, right? Like, yeah, but and yeah. so I think that that's something, and especially when you go hard, and like Sarnak, you know, people hate Sar you know, Sarnax and, 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 and Clayton, especially because they're very deeply flawed characters that'll have their arc. Um, and like, you know, I think, you know, there are people who like, I don't like, and it's usually the grognardy kind of type, of, I really don't like Sarnax. And there's some people who start out and say, oh, I, I hated Sarnax in the beginning, and now I really like him. I'm like, great. Yeah. That, you that's know, always fun. That's you, you picked up what I was laying down. And so, yeah, I mean, I, that's very fun to me. Um, I always appreciate people who enjoy, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, like, enjoy as, the layers. as a creative and someone who likes to play, it's kind of an interesting thing where... I sometimes catch myself feeling like, oh man, I don't 
want to make the decisions I normally would for the characterization and role play because I know people don't want to look at the nuance of a, a super three dimensional character. If that makes sense, right? That's, yeah. Where, yeah. And, and, yeah. And even and you know I even pull my punches as a DM of like of how heinous villains can be because I understand that there's a general perception and a general expectation that people have where being that's just something that people don't want to you know see or think about or whatever right? right and so that's to the that's something where you're always thinking about how people are going to be percepting you know perceiving it but i yeah. hope that we never stop having characters that people fundamentally grapple and disagree with well hell no i mean I'll, I'll say one of my favorite fucking comments we've ever gotten on YouTube of like, Barnabas is so horrifically morally repugnant. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, let's go, baby. Well, I love that because it's yeah. like, oh, you must be coming from a very specific worldview. Yeah. yeah. If you believe that Barnabas's morality is repugnant. Yeah. And I love to think about that. I'm like, okay, what would make them feel maybe, that way? Maybe and then I Maybe it'll make you think a And I more. sort of definitely kind of understand where their worldview might be to think that he's evil, right? And other people probably feel the same way about any of our characters. Yeah. Um, it just, it keeps it interesting. I think I Fun said this question. literally today, is like, if you watch Beneath Dark Wings and don't kind of reconsider or question your morality and general philosophy, then I haven't done my job. Yeah, well, 100%. Um, I'm not going to get that hard in... Uh, Salt Marsh. In Salt Marsh. But I might... No, I mean, the, I the, yeah. the level of philosophy... I'm not, but and I probably am gonna. The, of philosophy and, like, worldview, like, questions that Beneath Dark Wings asks is really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think that, like... Uh, that's deliberate. And I, I'm a big fan of philosophy. Really? Uh, I'm, I'm really into that shit. And so uh, I will say that I, I was very self-indulgent. <laughs> yeah. when when writing Beneath Dark Wings and I'm like, well, if I'm going to have my political intrigue campaign, let's go fucking all in here yeah. and make people fucking... Oh, what, a, what a fun time. Know. But I mean, I did the same thing in Prime. I feel like, you know, all my campaigns, yeah. right? Uh, I feel like they're... I want people to be thinking about the morality Self and justice. Self-indulgent versus, like, inspiration, right? Like, where do you draw the line between self-indulgent and being the DM and wanting to enjoy and be excited about your own story. There's 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 so much importance to being excited about your own story, yeah. in my opinion, that you you should indulge um as long as you are respecting the as long as you are uh, sacrificing at the altar of theme, uh that you'll be able to Yep. because your excitement will get the players excited. And that's for the the DM uh, who the DMs who are just getting started. If you're scared, your players will be scared. If you're excited, they'll be excited. Uh, they, they they will look to you because you are you are their eyes and ears and senses and touch and all of these things. They are you are how they interact with the world in this shared fantasy imagination game. And if you are uh, telling them about the spooky door and you're scared, that door's gonna be an order of magnitude spookier than if you just know that the door is spooky but you're, you're not actually afraid. What I will say is that I cannot believe that I have to hold back my artistic vision and I had to cut the fat-assed goblin sex cult. <laughs> <laughs> no! What? No! From, when did this happen? <laughs> How? Can we go back? <laughs> well, I can't believe I'm being censored. Holy shit. Oh, that's very funny. Um, I can't believe I had to cut the fat ass. Wow, well, my sex cult. I know. That's, it's fucking, it's, I'm disappointed. I know. I know. Um, I got to think about the kids at home. I'm disappointed. I got to think about the kids at home. You know what I mean? Fuck. Oh, boy. This boy's done. I, this to me, I'm a little su surprised that it's not, is this right? Yeah, that's right. He's done. I'm, I'm gonna need a place for my own minis. I don't know where that's gonna live, but. 
I've completed Shit. one mini. I completed one mini tonight. One night? One night. I mean, yeah, yeah but look at this motherfucker. Uh, what's your favorite tiny bit of lore from Stardust? Oh. Um. I would say uh, the chuckles, the very subtle chuckles deep lore hinting that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I love the lore of Stardust because we had to do like all over the world building because this is like a brand new setting that doesn't exist in D and D. Yeah. So, like, and I was involved in in the world building process. So like, there's stuff this, that I know. Stardust was the most that you've been involved in yeah, that process. Hundred percent. Um. And I think for me, right, like, I'm excited to see more of it come oh, to light. It does fit. And there's still plenty that I don't know. And I'm sure Mike knows things that maybe, you know, that I don't. I know things that he doesn't. And so, like, everybody has sort of varying levels of knowledge oh, about the yeah. setting oh, yeah. of Stardust. That oh, is the yeah. Stardust Rhapsody. Um, oh, shit. But, you know, in terms of lore, specifically... Um, I'm excited to kind of dive into the Ether Dwarf stuff. I know that's a little selfish, but like that was going to be my answer. That was going to be my answer, actually. Yeah. I, and more specifically, or perhaps adjacently, because I don't know all the lore. Um, I want to learn more about the corporation and get heavier right. into the um cassette tape. Stuff because yeah. you know I love that aesthetic very much. Oh yeah, um, cassette futurism is yeah. sort of the aesthetic that I'm going for for Rhett and the. Uh, and I'm presuming and I'm, I'm making a general. guess that the um, corporation would be aligned in that way. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's just sort of the Thank ether you. dwarf aesthetic, okay. right? So okay. like, you know that that Game Boy gray, right? Um, and that sort of green. Game Boy screen mm -hmm. and the sort Game of Game Boy Gray is a very specific visceral color. <laughs> it is, hundred percent. It really is. And if you know it's you're older than thirty, you shit. fucking know Holy what I'm talking fuck about. Is that good ass shit, man? Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like really fun stuff, like you know, and I kind of, and that's kind of the thing. Also, when I was working on. Uh, Oh, there's all this detail. I guess I have to call I it. We, we people know what Project Redacted is, so I'll have to just call it Redacted, right? Um, it's redacted until we unredact. It's redacted until we reveal we, until the we, unveil we, project we, name. We un uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. It's been, been, it's been a productive week. When I was working well, on that and kind of like thinking about in terms of like it's so good to kind of like doing that kind of full setting, like similar to, to the Dresk involved and stuff of like where it's separated. And you're able to like do that kind of work and start from scratch, and that allows you to go all in on the theme. That's the joy of Stardust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you're not no, bogged down about where does it fit in the world and how does it do it. It's like, oh no, the whole it's fucking so who cares? Such a satisfying theme. Yeah. It Look at this so, little fucking salacious so crumb guy. Um, Fuck, that's so good. And I don't know if there's anything quite like it. I mean, that's yeah. I I love. Stardust is an absolute fucking joy to play. Um, I can picture it so clearly, yeah. and I've never read it in a book. That's a very cool thing. It's a fun challenge, for sure. To... Uh, why don't you read this one art kid question here? One art kid! i just like to share an idea that I have beside my shark folk warlock that I've already shared. Inspired by Frost, I'm thinking of a white tiger snow leopard clock work soul sorcerer. I have cool concepts Ooh. for him, including gears as bracelets and sounds of ticking constantly around him. Just fun Great. characteristics. Cool. Great. Very fun. Very cool. Yeah, no, I like the dressing. Um, uh, gears as, as bracelets, tick, 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 tick. Are they, um, I, my question is, do they interlock their tooths if you were to put your wrists together? Something to think about. If you combine two of your campaign universes, which would you choose? I mean, they're all in the same universe. Uh, I guess sort of outside of Stardust Rhapsody. Yeah, that's the vacuum. That's uh, so I'm going to say Stardust and Witchlight, I think it'd be really fun. Oh, yeah. I could very easily see the Witchlight crew fitting in with the Stardust crew. Um, I'm going to say Crooked Moon and Stradania. Oh, there you go. I think that's, that's a very that's fun... another universe, sort of. A fun type adventure, if you know what I mean. A very fun to is that it really has these fucking pegs? It in the model has the pegs? What the 
fuck? <laughs> 19 and 20. I don't get it. I don't get it. I feel like I'm not crazy. What in the hell? Uh, waking up to gems of Wake wisdom being dropped. Up. I love it. Is there a quote <laughs> that really resonates deeply with you? Wait, what? From Milo. A quote. I mean, um, the lyric uh, from the Rush song Grand Designs. I mean, the entire song. <laughs> But we would uh, like shut down so hard if we played that. Basically, okay. all the lyrics, but there's one in particular uh, that was my Discord status for the long, t long time. I think Mike stole it and is now his Discord status. Oh, maybe. Um, but it's we break the surface tension with our wild kinetic dreams. Is that my Discord? Now? I think it might be. Maybe. I don't know. Um, and th that is basically, you could sum up my worldview and philosophy in life. It's that basically the song Grand Designs by Rush. Um, and it's a song about uh, the society and life being the stream that's hard to swim against. Um, you know, living in two dimensions is sort of the standard, it's the expectation. And this, you know, breaking the surface tension of that pressure to do, to live a certain way, to go down a certain life path, to, as we sort of mentioned it earlier, right? Where you go to high school, then you go to college, then you get the corporate job, then you get the promotion, then you get the, another promotion, then you blah, 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 blah. And you have to do all of these things. Then you things. get married, then you have the yeah. kid, then or you have else, to buy the house, then you have the kids. And you if know. you don't do those things, there's something wrong with you. You're weird if you don't do that, right? And there's this sort of society of people that have never stopped once to think, what do I want, right? Because their life was all laid out in front of them. They were, they're going down the stream. Um, but the single phrase of we break the surface tension with our wild kinetic dreams is so evocative <laughs> to me. Um, the lyricist of Rush, Neil Peart, uh, rest in peace, who's there also their, their, their drummer. Um, it's such a beautiful... It's such a beautiful lyric because it's, you know, basically breaking out of that mold. It's not just wild dreams, right? Yeah. Everyone can dream. Everyone has dreams. Everybody wants to do all this stuff. And I think everyone should have crazy wild dreams that seem wild, right? They, they, a, a dream that you are striving for should sound fucking crazy to people. But the kinetic, the word kinetic is so fucking important because kinet, what he means when he says kinetic dreams is that there's action behind the dream. That you can't just, it's not just about having wild dreams, that you have to act against your dream and strive and build and work and do. Um, my Discord status now is always beezing and doozing. That's uh, which really is a, another one, which is a home service. That's, also. Good, that's another good it's philosophy. Another one of my philosophies. But basically, you, your your wild dreams have to have kineticism behind them uh, for you to actually attain them. And I fucking love it. Who's this Rush you speak of? I've never heard of them. Uh, I'm guessing that's a joke. But for those that actually haven't heard of Rush, big time Rush. Uh, it no, it's not big time Rush. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> They are a uh, a power trio rock band from Toronto, Canada, and uh, they are one of the greatest uh, musical groups to ever exist, ever take breath. Uh, their songs are beautiful and amazing, and their song topics and <coughs> lyrics are extremely insightful and intellectual and thought-provoking, and uh, the likes of which we'll probably never see again. My quote is going to be from jo Joseph Campbell. This is an equivalently live my life by quote. Uh, he was a mythologist. He wrote The Man with a Thousand Faces, yep. which influenced cinema for half Absolutely. a century. Um, and it's still a terrific book, but uh, his other actual deeper stuff into mythology is unbelievable. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you want a tour of world history through the lens of the stories that people told themselves, go read about mythology. And Joseph Campbell was a master. He, he really did do a lot of the broader work of trying to find the patterns that were true about cultures all over the world that uh, led to the conclusions that you can find in that book. And he has a companion book where he also puts some wisdom down of his thoughts about mythology in the modern world. Um, he doesn't think about it modernally, but he, it is a, a modern product, uh, just sort of looking back. And it's almost written, written as like poetic uh, uh, stanzas or poetry. It's, it's written in an interesting way. Where you stumble, there lies your treasure. 
Um, it's tropey. Oh. It's tropey. He's actually referring to in mythology that there's almost this zeitgeist or uh, common idea that happened all over the world in many myths uh, that uh, the hero or the um, adventurer would stumble over something. And, of course, they look back and go, oh, that's the entrance to the, the, the dungeon, or that's the, that's the top of the pyramid, uh, that's the, 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 the artifact I was looking for, where you fall over. And of course, in myth, that's a metaphor. The metaphor is where you are hurting, where you are failing, where you are stumbling, that is actually where the treasure in your life can be found. Um, look for those pain points in your life, and look at them with, uh, through a new lens because there might actually be, by focusing your attention on that thing, by smoothing that out or by working through finding solutions, you might actually be looking right at your treasure, not at something that's evil or uh, hurting. Um, that's, that's how I interpret that quote and that's how I uh, uh, like to think about um, life in general, philosophically. Where you, tr where you stumble, there lies your treasure. Um, I'm going to, I mean, I could go talk about song lyrics and stuff, but Richie already covered that. Uh, for me, as someone who is in the 12-step program uh, of Alcoholics Anonymous, and uh, just in general in recovery and sobriety, um, I really, as trite as it is, the, the, the phrase one day at a time, yeah, and also the good. serenity prayer, you don't need to say God in that. Like I'm not, I'm not religious, but to me, it's the idea of like literally. The it was it was the mindset of living one day at a time, and focusing on what I could control and not giving a fucking flying fuck about anything that I couldn't control. Completely changed my life and completely changed everything about how I thought about the world. Made me in, like not instantly happy. There's, there's a ton of work, and, uh, but internalizing and realizing, you know. Where, you know, you see a lot of people, whether it's on social media or in the world, who are just raging about all this stuff that they have no control over. And their entire identity is based upon, around being upset about things in their life, things that they see on the news, things that they see in their friends, things that they see in, in their job, yeah. things that they see in, in the culture that they have no control over. And all they can do is stew and be miserable and be wrathful and be... And the second I realized that, like, no matter what it was, in my life, focusing on only the things that I could control and only focusing on myself, instant. I, I can, I can instant re-synthesize that in another uh, Joseph Campbell quote. One moment. Who knew Joseph Campbell was so full of wisdom? I know I didn't. Yeah. He, he pursued myth because... He was on a journey of wisdom. That's why he turned to myth, yeah. was that he wanted to, to do it, see sure. through the world. It was a spiritual journey for him to pursue history and look at it through the way that cultures told themselves stories of morality and stories of self-actualization, and that was how he pursued wisdom. And there's a phenomenal, oh, I think it's called the history of myth. It's a two- or three-parter um, interview with him. And uh, George Lucas quotes that interview all the fucking time when, wow. when talking about the original trilogy and what he was, oh, up, yeah. what, what he was up to yeah. trying to yeah. create a modern myth. And of course, it had this industrial science fantasy aesthetic and that we all came to know and love. And it um, had la laser swords and it had all this stuff. But he was trying to, he was trying to write a modern myth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, That's why the original trilogy is so good. Let me see if I can find it. Is this right? Ah, here it is. The world is perfect. It's a mess. It has always been a mess. We are not going to change it. <laughs> yep. The world is perfect. <laughs> and if... That's really good way If to you it. can live by that, <laughs> it can be hard sometimes, especially with your... Maybe the, the circles you run with or, or, or people's different, you know... Oh, yeah. Experiences. Um, it is such a freeing thing. Yeah. And your life will have so much joy if you and can meaning. and meaning if you can find a way to not care about the shit that you have no control over or effect over, and you just live your life. 
And, uh, and, and that's another uh, from uh, from another Rush song. Live for yourself. There's no one else more worth living for. That's from Anthem. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I... I'm gonna quote my mom. Oh, Dude, let's I'm gonna go. For, I'm gonna Forrest Gump this shit. Yeah. Uh, she always told me from when I was very young that when you're upset or sad or angry or you're feeling one of the negative emotions, find identify the thing that's out of your control. Yep. Yep. That's usually the thing that you need to not give a fuck about or let go or find a solution about or something. But it's easy in the fog of emotion, especially negative emotion, to just be like lashing out at things that feel real that aren't. What you really need to do is go, oh, this is the thing that's that's out of my control or the thing that's out of my control right now that I need to get a grip. And I, that always recentered me to think about things yep. through that lens. A really good way to put that. Great, uh, God, there's something I was going to say. She makes great candy, and she's got a lot of wisdom. I'll tell and you. And Scott has a good point. In Hamilton, there's the lyric, you are the one thing in life you can control. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, it's so true. Yep. And um, it, it's not what society would tell you. And so, again, I know it can be difficult, but uh, it makes all the difference. Iron Deficiency Maiden, uh, speaking of another wonderful band, I was not here for a lot of the stream. How was your Muppet Treasure Island viewing? Did Mace absolutely love it? Mace, unfortunately, was not there no. for it. Um, it was just me, Richie, Nikki, and Derek. We yeah. wouldn't have been able to watch the movie with Mace. It would have just been his laughter for yeah, we would not an hour and a half. I do yeah. wish he was here. Um, yeah, I don't no, know if obviously. we'll be able to get Mace for Patreon stuff, uh, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. You uh, never know. You never know. Uh, it was a, I love the film. It's my, I mean, I saw it a gazillion times as a kid, but more recently I've seen it at least three times in the three last five times. years. Yeah, three times or four times. I didn't know it was a rewatch for you that way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That I, way. I, I mean, I, I, I love it. We, I we recently it. watched it at Andy and Kelsey's house that they moved into. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... Uh, wow. Okay, so that recently. Yeah, uh, I, I enjoyed it for the first time, and I felt that it was a really cool thing to watch with the folks watching the stream at the same time. Yes, that was very cool. I really enjoyed that. That was really fun. And seeing the, their comments jump up and us all watching the movie together was great. So I gotta get this here. And this. Um. Oh, the final scene. Great math was uh, Wizard Derek. If I'm almost on episode 19 of Beneath Dark Wings, can I still catch up by April? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it only is. 30 only. <laughs> Um, it's, it's 36 50. episodes. How many episodes is it? 30. 36. Oh, okay. So not as many. Um, they're eight, hour, eight hours each. Uh, I mean, if you hit start right now on all Legends of Avantress content, content, if you just hit play at the beginning of our YouTube channel and watch everything in published chronological order, I think it's only like 50 or 60 days of your life. No problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's very funny. Uh, but in reality, uh, there's more than enough time, even at a reasonable cadence where you're enjoying sleep uh, and maybe even working to pay your bills. Yeah, please do that. <laughs> this is wonderful. So what I a finished, monstrosity. I finished Trug. Let me, let me, yeah, let me do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is technically an age. He's an age of Sigmar mini. He ju he just came out. He's new. He is the basically the the ma the mega troll hero that they added. He's, um, he's so the size of a fucking. If baseball. you recall, the the minis that I was painting back last April um, was for the Gloom Spike Gets a troll army, and so basically they really went. They're still going all in on being able to have a troll list, and so he's the main hero of the troll faction that they finally added. Uh, I no longer play Age of Sigmar, but I'm going to use him as my, um, Chaos Giant. Because he works perfectly, because there are Chaos Trolls in the old world, and he has giant fucking horns. And just, just back him out for a second. Oh, yeah. Because I just finished... Yeah, see what cre Derek... ...creating this... Look, think about what a, a Death Knight... On a horse, a nightmare monster, a man. nightmare monster man. See him. Look, look how fucking huge and epic he is. I need to get him in here so that it'll focus, and then I need to bring him back. No, no, really close. Re there we go. Yeah, there, there. Look how look how fucking epic this guy is. I'm really proud of him, and he's got a huge ass lance, right? Now let's. <laughs> what is he gonna fucking do <laughs> next to this big ass boy? Put, what is he gonna do? Put this guy next to it too. And then here's a fucking dwarf. <laughs> Hey, everybody! <laughs> imagine! Can imagine you, you're imagine? one dwarf, and this yeah. guy starts fucking trundling towards you. Yeah, His horn is as long as my lance. <laughs> Fuck! 
Oh man. What a nightmare. Warhammer world. is so fun. It's so <laughs> it's fun. crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, he will be my chaos giant. I'm gonna have to find a way. And so here, what I'm gonna try to do is if you see, the base for the chaos giant is effectively two by three. So I if this fucker, I guess if I do that, and hopefully no one's gonna fucking Piss their pants. I, I, why not just pick a big, bigger base? No, it's, it's hold on, hold on. The I, bases matter. Oh, do you have, do you have a... I have bases. I don't know if I have that one. Do you have one. a 50 by 75? I'm going to look. I'm if you have a 50 look. by 75 base, we can oh, see. Oh, I have a 50 by 75. Hold on. Oh my god, 50 by 75. Yeah, Let's go! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have one up here. I could have given that to you fucking 50 by 75. We're going to oh, see. Oh We're going to see. I don't okay. know, dude. That's going to be tough. I don't think so. You're uh, fucked. Can you undo his arm and move it o over? Like reposition it? What do you mean? So right. like, here, here. It's the diagonal. You need to hit the diagonal. You know what I'm saying? Get, get his front foot into a corner. You, you I'm, I'm, I'm spatially challenged. <laughs> <sighs> so hold on. If I do... That's tough. If I do... So like, yeah, you, you would base... God, that is... Are you sure it's 50 by 75? Yep. Yeah, because you got to think the chaos giant has just two feet that are. Yeah, you are going to have to basically cut his leg. I don't actually. You can probably keep his legs. I gotta cut his leg. If off. you just keep move like remove his arm and angle it so it's down this way where he's like this. I don't. I think that'll work. Really? Yeah. How did these bags get painted? Where did they come from? I painted those when I was sixteen. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So they are the old model of the of the. If you look at the spear guy, this is the yeah, updated. Yeah, yeah, These came yeah. out last year. So, two thousand. I don't know. Wow, when the, you can really see the fucking difference. Yeah. Holy shit. Yep. Yeah. So I painted that when I was sixteen. Um. Oh, yeah. interesting. Pretty crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no other way. And this is, well, well, no, but then he's facing the wrong way. Because they can't hang over the base, can they? I mean, you can a little bit, right? But, like, people are going to flip the, flip the fuck out if they can't get in base contact. I think. Cool. You're going to have to narrow his stance a little bit, for sure. Oh. And then you're going to have to bring his arm over tighter. It's going to be rough. I don't know. I don't know. So, we gotta chop him up. Chop right. him up. Look at his butt cheeks. Look yeah, at his little butt right. cheeks. He's got, got little butt oh, cheeks. Yeah. He's got an ass. Look, look at his little butt cheeks. Troll butt. <laughs> Jesus, here, take this. <laughs> Give me the base. Give me the base. Yeah, put I'm, it, I'm switch, still gonna play with it. Switch over to the bigger view. Yeah. Okay, it's midnight. Everybody, Shall we it, wrap it's, up? It's, Shall we chi call it? it's Chinese food time. That's what we're closing on. Oh, well, I, oh yeah. I guess I still. Oh, what was that? I mean, you can still keep making it after we turn off the cameras. So yeah, I mean, oh god, very sturdy. Oh, very sturdy. That hurt. Oh, it hurt me. That's how sturdy they are. Um, we gotta chop them up anyway. One more question. One more question. I think this is what I do. Mark, yeah, we got that one. Mark, that's complete. Ah, I know what to do. Uh. Will there be an ARG adjacent thing for Project Redacted like there was for Earthshine? Huh. I cool wonder. That seems like it would be pretty cool, I think. If Stardust um, Chuckles and Witchlight Chuckles meet, would it tear the universe apart? Who knows? Tune in to find out. Ba, 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 Speaking ba, of music, ba, what is your favorite ba, song? Ba. I don't have a favorite song. I, you know, I, can't, I don't have a favorite genre. Right? Yeah. It's impossible. You'd have to you'd have to go genre specific. Name fifty different genres and and fifty different songs pop out. Um, a favorite song? Gosh, that's devastating. That's tough. That's really tough. Um, this is fucking crazy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to. There's too much music. There are too many emotions. There are too many wonderful yeah. creators. You know. Um, if you, let me, I'll, I'll answer it this way. If you ask one and a half year old Derek. One and a half. That's awfully specific. Was it one and a half? 
Might have been a little Fuck. older. It's when, as language is progressing, and I'm starting to become a language person. Um, I start to hear a Beatles song on the radio. My parents don't know this. They 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 leave me alone for five minutes, and they come back, and I keep repeating this word, keep repeating this word over and over, and they're like, "What the fuck are you trying to say? It doesn't sound like anything we taught you. What is this word?" And in the reality of the moment, I had heard a Beatles song, and I was trying to repeat the chorus. Wow! But that's powerful. They didn't know, and so they were holding up toys, and I was crying and saying the word, and they were trying to give me food, and I was crying and saying the word, and they were just dying trying to figure out what this fucking word was, and they couldn't figure it out until the radio came on months later, and I said it in my baby spot to speak. Lovely Rita. Lovely, Lovely Rita. Rita, meet a maid. Ba, 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 ba. I fell in love with that song as a baby, and uh, my folks would never have figured it out uh, except for the, the coincidence that it came back on the radio. And so uh, we wow, we, uh, yeah, I was a I was a Beatle maniac from the age of two or whatever it was. That's awesome. Um, man. That. What a fun time. This is awesome. I'm sorry that we keep canceling Witchlight. If we can go a string without anyone catching COVID. Then we can just keep playing. Or anyone getting sick. We promise. Well, at this point, at this point, we all have some massive immunities, so it's going to be at least two months. (laughs) Garrett's super immune. Annie's going to be super immune. As long as Mike and I can avoid it. We're good. Nikki had it relatively recently. Oh, yeah. How did she get it? Uh, Gen Con. Oh, Gen Con. Yeah. Mason, yeah, Mason, Nikki got it from Gen Con. I forgot Great. about that. And as long as we Jesus avoid that Christ. gas outside that turns you inside out, I think that we're going to be just fine. Yeah, let's let's avoid that gas from outside. <laughs> That's a Simpsons reference oh. to a Halloween special. Oh! I dropped my dwarf. Well, why don't we... Should we raid somebody? Oh, we can raid. On to Red Jewel Street. We still got our uh, foot. Oh, thank you for the super chat. The two dollars yeah. chat for fuck's sake. We're gonna find someone to raid. Uh, yeah, keep keep. There's keep. gonna be. We're gonna raid someone. Hammer of the War. We're not raiding D. Oh yeah, let's. Uh, let's I, yes, I think that's gonna be our tradition. Let let's us look. Raid a Warhammer channel. If let us look. Uh, thank you, Treehouse of Horrors. That is correct. One of my favorite Treehouse of Horror episodes ever. Gosh, those were so fucking good. Um, yeah, those of you old enough ones. to remember when Treehouse of Horror, really Horrors memories. actually mattered because it was an October like event yeah. that they were going to play Treehouse of Horrors and all of them are banger at least for the first 10 years. Holy shit. Um, I think we're going to raid this person that's painting uh, Middle Earth Strategy Battle miniatures. They're Angmar orcs. So orcs, uh, I guess, from Angmar. The Witch King of Angmar, uh, of note. It looks pretty cool. And they have some kind of uh, VTuber thing going on. It looks animated. So, uh, Halbernacht. Halbernacht. So let me... let me. This is only for the Twitch viewers, YouTube. Yeah. Things well, are going to close. We'll see you next time. Um, slash raid Halbernacht. Friday, uh, we're gonna be here. We're gonna be streaming something. It could be an adventure. It could. It be will not be chill. Icebound. It will not be Icebound. Yes, because Andy. Uh, because will still we be... want Andy to recover, and because I feel, uh, you know what? I don't think we've missed a single Icebound. So just a week's delay. One perhaps, week delay or a month. It's not that if, crazy. If, if, if we if we can't if we get have everyone. to. But uh, I'm finally, finally, finally pulling the Mulligan ripcord and saying, you know what? We need the full party here to really kick things off as we finally yeah. reach Argentholm. Well, and we started the first arc without Andy too, and just to like have another first session of the arc <laughs> without Scram. I forgot that. Remember that? Holy he shit. He was gone for the first episode. Man, I have weird luck. I yeah. Have very weird And luck. so it's like, we just went the whole gang there. Scrim so. is dead. Thank you all for being very, very, very gracious with these past few months of, um, what's the opposite of consistent? Inconsistency. Inconsistency. Since since October, it's been shaky, and I would like to get back to a place of normalcy, um, but, uh... Which light will be normal? Y'all keep showing up. Salt Marsh is gonna be normal. Thank you. Icebound, and then we have Beneath Dark Wings. Good night, everybody. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Good night.